It was one of the sunniest days in the Empire of Orange. In the Lannister Empire, it was a separate town. The school was a brick building. The topic of today's lesson was about wizards. A young girl was the teacher. Standing at the blackboard on which various formulas were written down, she was telling the children about meditation. This was a primary school class, where the youngest residents of the town studied. An older, dark-haired boy was sitting at a cake-shaped table, carefully writing down everything the teacher said. A small boy approached the young man. He held out his hands to the boy, which were wet with snot and drool. That boy was Lynn Lannister. He'd been in prep school for a long eight years now. Some of Lynn Lannister's peers had already become independent mages. Most of these youngsters didn't pay attention to him or invite him to play battles with them. Lynn Lannister looked at his hands and bitterly thought about the fact that he hadn't even managed to master meditation during this time. Lynn Lannister raised his palm to the sky and looked up at the sun through his fingers and leaves. While Lynn was deep in his thoughts, water flew into his face. A company of teenagers rushed towards the young master. The tallest of them tried to apologize. After all, he was so much into practicing the magical arts that he had been carried away. But it seems this toothless boy wasn't sincere. He started hurting the young master. One of the boys tried to stop those hurtful words. After all, the young lord hadn't finished primary school yet. The brigand didn't understand how the lord couldn't use magic. After all, they should have it the most powerful. But Lynn Lannister was an orphan. He was picked up off the streets by the lord of this town. Therefore, the young master was considered an outcast. No one understood why he was to be the lord's heir. The little lord could hear perfectly well what the boys were saying. They knew exactly how to hurt Lannister's feelings. Suddenly, a menacing adult voice was heard calling the boy a brat. The toothless bully turned round at the call. Behind the lad's back stood a knight. He was in shining armor. His sword was held to the throat of the one who had insulted the young lord. Lynn Lannister was smiling. He looked at how frightened the boy who had recently boldly bullied him was. Lynn motioned for the knight to lower his sword. Carl turned around and lowered his sword. At this moment of his procrastination, the city boys all started to flee in unison. Knight Carl didn't understand why he had to let this evil boy go. He felt he should have been taught a lesson. The boy spoke of how it was unlikely that the king trusted a knight with a sword to punish commoners. Such words with deep meaning made the knight Charles dumbfounded. They meant too much to the man. When knight Charles realized his mistake, he turned to the young lord with a deep bow of respect. He apologized and promised that such a thing would not happen again. The knight suddenly realized. He brought news he had almost forgotten. The Lord had received a letter from Mr. Oliver, and the little Lord needed to go to the house to see him. Mr. Oliver was the name of his Savior, so every message from him made the little Lord's heart skip a beat. He was an elderly magician. Mr. Oliver had once helped the little Lord hide, the year that trouble happened to the boy's father. Mr. Oliver hid him in Lord Lanster's vast estate. The high walls of the castle had never seen such luxury. There was a living fountain in the courtyard in his own carriage. This was the boy's home now. Mr. Oliver had always known that the boy was not given to magic. The man had always tried to help him as best he could. The little lord was encouraged by this message and hoped with all his soul that this time Mr. Oliver had found a way to help him. Lynn Lannister entered the gate to the manor grounds. He saw the man waiting for him not far away. Lynn greeted him politely and called him father. It was Lord Lannister. He was the older brother of the boy's birth mother. The man was pleased to see Lynn and with a broad gesture of his hand called him into the study. The Lord's name was Blaine Lannister. He suggested that the little Lord listen to the message from Mr. Oliver together. They should have called each other uncle and nephew, but to hide the boy's origins they should play the part of father and son. There was a bird on the table, and in appearance it resembled origami paper. But as soon as Lord Blaine put his hand over it and asked it to read a message, it glowed. Magic light sprinkled from the man's palm. With the magic light, the bird became like a crystal bird. The eyes glowed with a blue light. The bird opened a message from Mr. Oliver. The messenger lifted her head up, and a high-pitched voice came out of it. 
It was Mr. Oliver's voice. He was telling her that Mr. Oliver in his travels had come across an interesting book counting on it to help Lynn awaken his magical abilities. The messenger bird spread its wings wide and opened its beak. From the beak, a streak of light advanced into the air, from which the magic book that had just been announced appeared. The light in which the book appeared went straight into the hands of Lynn Lannister. But the delight of the book did not last long like a sharp knife memories entered the boy's head. From his earliest childhood, Lynn Lannister had spent a lot of time learning magic, and even after years of trying and trying, he had not progressed one step in acquiring magical skills. The boy scrutinized the cover of the magic book and wondered if he would succeed this time. Thin fingers held the cover tightly as his only salvation. Blaine could see how painful and difficult it was for his nephew to realize he had no magic. Wanting to cheer his nephew up, the man walked over and placed a hand on his shoulder. Duke Blaine spoke of how, if a boy was tired, he didn't have to force himself. After all, not everyone is destined to become a mage, and reaching the level of a sage is not possible for everyone. The boy could stay and live under the name of Lynn Lannister for as long as he wanted. It wasn't little Lynn's fault that Zoe had abandoned him. The man in the black long cloak left without looking back at who and what he had left behind. Duke Blaine talked about how he didn't have to carry that heavy burden and force himself to become a mage. The child had done nothing to make his fate so heavy. Clutching the magic book in his hands tighter, Lynn Lannister thanked his uncle for such warm words of encouragement but they both knew that there was more to the story of his father's betrayal. The boy smiled at the memory and tried to hide it by putting his fingers to his lips. Now his father was all alone in dragon territory. Lynn Lannister looked at his uncle with a wide smile. The boy covered his eyes, holding back his tears with his eyelids. He couldn't just forget his father. The moon burned brightly in the starry sky above the manor. The people in the house itself were still awake lights burning from the windows. Young Lynn Lannister was awake, too. He was lying in his bed looking at a book. Lynn's mood was serious. If he had a single chance to find and save his father, there was no way he would miss it. In his memories, the boy's father was rarely home, but in those rare moments when he finally returned and whatever Lynn was busy with, Dad was the most important, and each time his father brought him new toys. The boy would blush with delight at the magic his father had created. Each time the toys were better and better and the magic in the hands of the man more and more. Lynn Lannister's father did his best to keep the boy and his mom happy, but every happy moment in the woman's eyes was overshadowed. Moving closer to her men, she asked each time if Zoe would leave this time like the previous ones. Zoe clutching her son tightly in her arms couldn't help but leave. The boy who looked just like his father, sat happily in his arms, not thinking that he would soon be abandoned. Zoe, coming closer to his wife, asked her not to worry. The man was telling his favorite woman that everything should go according to plan, and this would be his last expedition. Lynn's mother, a blonde-haired woman, looked at her husband with great hope and faith. The family hugged each other tightly. Zoe promised that soon they would all live together, happy and in need of nothing. But after that, Lynn's father never came back. He went on that expedition and disappeared, and the boy's mother disappeared with him. So if the little lord wants a family reunion, finding magic and becoming a sage is his only option. The boy had his doubts. Would this strange book help him awaken the magic? On the cover of the book was drawn a majestic dragon. Lynn Lannister, reading the method of study in this book, saw that it was different from orthodox magic. Taking a more comfortable posture on the bed, Lynn tried to cheer himself up. It was time for him to act, and another failure would not scare him. In any case, the boy decided to try. He started with meditation, and the world around him began to change slightly. There was a glow of blue in the air, but Lynn didn't see it. His eyes were closed. He needed to form a magical energy, increase its power and draw it closer to him. But suddenly, when almost everything succeeded, the magic ball split. Lin got angry from his failure and slammed his fist hard into the wall. But something succeeded. Clots of magical energy flew in the air around the young lord. 
It seemed like Lin was starting to notice this blue glow. It was definitely magical power. There was no limit to the little lord's joy. The clots of magical energy around the child were getting bigger and bigger, but with great power comes great loss. Lin began to feel sick. The strength of the magical energy was so great that the boy's body could not withstand this power, and blood spurted out of Lin's mouth. Everything around him was strangely vibrating and spinning. His head was ready to explode. Fear of impending doom enveloped the boy's mind. Lin resisted as best he could. He clenched his hands tightly into a fist and pressed his lips together. He couldn't die right now. The boy tried to concentrate and resist the energy that gripped him. Everything inside him was bursting with this power of blue light, but he didn't unclench his hands. Suddenly, everything around him was plunged into darkness. There was only darkness around the boy, and his head was filled with various questions. Having calmed down a little, Lin decided to get out of bed and look around, needing to get out of the room and check out what was going on around him. As soon as the boy put his palm down, it came across a strange orange object that glowed from within. He picked up the strange object and began to examine it. What was it? A ball? Or maybe it was an egg? The light inside the object burned like fire, but it didn't burn his hands. Suddenly, a strange voice came out of the object. It called the boy Mr. Lin and greeted him. This sharp sound startled the boy greatly and made him shriek again. Letting the object out of his hands, the little lord began to cautiously move away from the object. He was scared, and the object kept talking. It introduced itself as his butler. It turned out that the object had been waiting for Lin for over ten years. The world around Lin began to change. The object was happy to see him here and said that this was sacred land that belonged to Lin. Suddenly, Lin found himself sitting on a small sandy island and all around him was crystal clear water. There was an object next to him. He and said that this land was the Dragon Ranch. Lin Lannister felt as if he had been electrocuted by the name. Could it really be the home of dragons? The item said that dragons would only appear on this land after one of them hatched from an orange egg. So this object was a dragon egg. It was Lin's first dragon. The item said that the boy would only be able to return to his world after raising it and finishing all the tasks. The little lord was very scared. He felt like he was being bullied. So he angrily poked his hand at the blue screen that appeared with the item. The boy thought that the dragon would eat him as soon as it hatched from that egg. Everything was happening too fast. Here came cracks along the egg and a hole appeared at the very top. It was punctured by a small orange foot that appeared next. The shell cracked. All Lin could think about was how the little orange pieces of shell were flying off the egg and there was something alive and scary inside. The blue screen turned red. He was trying to be friendly, so he made a reminder. It was necessary to drop blood on the dragon egg before the baby fully hatched. If this was not done, the dragon would indeed eat the human after emerging from the egg. The dragon egg lying on the clean sand glowed like fire under the sun. Young Lannister had to think very quickly. The egg had already cracked, which meant there was less and less time left. Lynn Lannister bit his finger so hard that it bled. He would really have to do that to form a bond. The more the shell cracked, the brighter it burned. From a small hole on it, a foot with huge claws appeared. And Lin moved towards the egg with unprecedented speed to coat the shell with blood and form a bond with the monster that was capable of destroying the entire world. As soon as Lin touched the dragon egg shell with his bloody finger, a light appeared. A huge pillar of light struck straight into the sky and shone brighter than fire. An imprinting had taken place. It was so bright that it blinded young Lanster for a few moments. He had to cover himself with his hands from the powerful energy, for in addition to the bright light, this action caused wind. As soon as the boy felt that everything had quieted down, he, without removing his hands from his face, began to open his eyes. He was still afraid, for there was a dragon in the egg next to him. Taking his hands away from his face, he looked at the little creature that was spinning on the sand. The baby dragon was bright orange in color and was lying on its back. He didn't expect to see such a small dragon. 
Was this cute little creature really the one that was scaring the entire universe with its appearance? Meanwhile, the dragon got to its feet and stretched out its little paws towards the man. While Lin was studying the little dragon, the dragon was learning to walk. The dragon did not stop screaming with every failed step. It sneezed small, fiery sparks from the dust around it. To him, the dragon was a small and harmless puppy. The dragon noticed movement above his head. It was a man carefully removing part of the shell from its head. The dragon's eyes sparkled like the sun. They were scrutinizing the one next to him. But suddenly the little dragon started waving its legs and shouting loudly. The dragon was shouting for the pitiful human not to dare touch him. This little creature was very angry. The dragon jumped up high and struck the boy's face with all his might with his hind paw. The boy almost lost consciousness from such a strong blow. And Lin seemed to understand the dragon's language. Notifications were popping up all around Lin that he had completed the first task and received his rookie bonus. Now there was the next task. Lin needed to build a nest for the dragon. Raising the small dragon in his hands, the boy looked at it and speculated on what kind of nest would be suitable for a fire dragon. The dragon, despite its size, was very angry. In its attempts to free itself, it was letting out fire and swearing. The creature was shouting about how no one would like a house that a pathetic human would build. But the boy seemed oblivious to this behavior, and finding a solution simply nodded his head. On the blue screen was an image of a first-level dragon's nest. The cost of it was 100 coins. It wasn't expensive, and it looked like a volcano. Lynn Lannister made the decision to buy it. With the choice, mountains began to appear behind the small sandy island. A notice appeared to expand the territory. The dragon continued to swear but hovered half a word. The animal saw the appearance of his home. A nest with the level Fire Dragon Paradise appeared. The stone mountains were small in size, and inside was hot lava capable of melting everything around it. Lin's quest was completed, and he once again received five experience points and fifty gold. When the Fire Dragon nest was fully formed, the dragon was placed on the ground. Such a happy-looking animal had never seen the light of day before. The baby's eyes were huge and shone like the sun. With delight, the dragon pressed its paws to its cheeks. Lynn Lannister looked at the animal that bathed in the lava as if in water, and marveled at how little it needed to be happy. Looking at the acquired dragon, which Lynn now had to take care of, the boy decided to give it a name. Now the dragon's name was Fury. There was a dragon sleeping in a volcano. Right next to the boiling lava, Fury slept peacefully, drooling in the shape of a huge ball. I think he was starting to like him. After the little dragon fell asleep, the young lord continued on with his tasks. The little lord planted plants called dragon scale fruit. It was one of the dragon race's favorite fruits and gave plus ten points to the dragon's growth. A message appeared on the blue screen saying that the exit command could now be used to leave the ranch. The little lord snapped his fingers to exit the virtual reality. Moving into the real world took some time. The world around him began to change and become covered in pixels to move into the real world. The boy could feel his body slowly taking on its original appearance. It was as if the boy was floating on air, slowly falling onto the bed. It was very difficult for Lin to open his eyes. It felt as if the entire weight of the world was piled on top of him. Suddenly, the little lord felt someone staring at him intently. Apart from him, there were several other people in this room. Standing around the bed were Duke Blaine, Mr. Carl, and the boy's young servant. All of them looked at him in surprise. Their eyes were wide open from the surprise of what had happened, as were their mouths. They still stood silently scrutinizing the young man. A humble servant walked over to the bed and stammered about being a young master. The little lord looked at the people gathered in his room in surprise. He didn't understand why he was called a novice master. Lin froze in mute question looking at his servant. His servant and the knight carefully pointed upwards at the ceiling. There was clearly something worth looking at. The little lord lifted his head up and saw a huge hole in the ceiling through which the sky and the sun shone through. Knight and the boy's servant were hugging each other. 
The lads were crying. They cheered and shouted at the fact that the young master had taken out the ceiling. He could not understand whether the ruined castle walls were cause for such joy. But his servant was of a different opinion. It was a great occasion because his young master had done it. The little servant was overjoyed. After all, his master had released something into the ceiling, and that huge hole had appeared there. As soon as the little servant was silent, Duke Blaine walked up to his nephew and smilingly told everything. The little lord released a powerful stream of magical energy, his own magical energy. Lin listened attentively and looked at his uncle trying to realize what had happened. From the words he heard, Lin Lannister's eyes opened wide. He couldn't believe that he was the one who had created the flow of magical energy that was able to blow off such a thick roof. The little lord lowered his gaze to his palms. His hands were glowing with a blue light. He realized that he could and did now concentrate the magical power in his hands. This power was like small living flames spreading across his palms. Streams of magical energy like small current discharges passed between his fingers. So far, everyone close to him had noticed the young lord's magical energy. Lin thought about why he had to move to this strange place with the dragon to awaken his magic. In his musings, the little lord came to the realization that it was necessary to show this book to other people. So he asked the knight Charles to look at the book, thanks to which he was able to create magic. The knight having a drink with the little servant turned back to his master. Lynn Lannister handed the book to Knight Charles and said to try to follow the instructions in this book. The knight accepted the book from his master as if he had received the most responsible task of his life. The little lord was serious holding the book with the dragon on the cover. He asked his servant to tell him the results after reading the instructions and completing the tasks. Lynn sat in a comfortable meditation position. Around him, magical blobs of energy sparkled and sparkled. After Mr. Carl and Lynn's uncle read the book, they couldn't sense anything strange unlike the young man himself. His eyes were closed, his eyebrows were concentratedly drawn together. He was carefully concentrating his magic power, and he already had some thoughts about these oddities. It seems that Lynn is the only one who is able to transfer and stay in this strange place. And of course, no one had told him anything about a dragon. The young man wants to tell the others about the ranch. But whenever the young gentleman tries to tell anyone about the dragon ranch, an unknown force pulls at his cheeks and prevents him from uttering any intelligible words. It's times like this that those around him are very concerned about his condition. That wasn't all of his problems. Since the day he blew the roof off in his room after every meditation, he had a severe coughing fit accompanied by bloody sputum. Afterwards, his whole face and hands were smeared with his own blood. After one of these meditations, a window of information appeared in front of Lin. It said that the young man's magic power would be limited and equated to his dragon level. The young body could not withstand such strenuous exertion. He was advised to raise his dragon's level to the first to start using magic fully. Only after this information window appeared did the young lord realize the reason why he was unable to use magic. It was a very unpleasant but useful discovery. Being at the table together with his uncle, Link calmly ate his meal. He had no desire to return to the dragon ranch again, but the creature that called itself the butler constantly interfered in the young man's life and prevented him from spending his time in peace. The Lord chopped some exquisite meat on his fork, as at that moment that very butler appeared before him with a notice. He informed his Lord that the ranch's food supply was exhausted. Dragon Fury had lost ten units of his health because of this. Lin patiently ignored these messages. Then the information window appeared on the other side. The butler was clearly displeased. He began to make a sarcastic remark towards the young master regarding the fact that while his dragon was starving, the young man himself was enjoying his steak. Lin was pierced with guilt after saying that. Even a piece of meat fell from his fork back into his plate. Also, Lin was the only one who saw those notices and heard his butler's voice. The uncle wondered why his nephew wasn't eating anything. 
But the young man couldn't answer the truth, so he said he had lost his appetite. A maid appeared at Lin's right hand and placed another plate of food beside him. The uncle strongly disagreed with his nephew's actions. The young man looked at the plate placed beside him without enthusiasm. Duke Blaine looked at his nephew kindly. He wasn't angry with him, he was only worried about his well-being. The Duke said that Lin needed to eat well because the boy was now practicing magic arts, which in turn took a lot of energy and strength. The young boy smiled gratefully at his guardian. He was grateful for his care and appreciated it. And while his uncle was out of sight, an information window popped up in front of Lin in which the butler was clearly voicing his displeasure. The Duke brought a napkin to his lips to wipe them after the meal and decided to break the important news. It turned out that he had already managed to inform Mr. Oliver about Lin's power awakening. He also dared to suggest that Mr. Oliver would soon visit them to discuss the young lord's future training at the St. Iris Academy of Magic. This news clearly surprised the Duke's nephew. Previously, he could not even think of simply mastering magic, and now there was a question of his training at the Iris Magical Academy. It was incredible. The Holy Iris Academy was a majestic building with columns and huge windows. It was recognized as the best academy in the entire Oran Empire. The aforementioned Mr. Oliver was the dean of this academy. And as far as Lin knew, his own father was his student. And if we were to believe Sir Oliver's words, he was one of the most talented students. After the conversation with his uncle, the little lord lay in his bed. His eyes shone with happiness at what he had heard. Now he would be able to study on his own at the academy he had always dreamed of. But suddenly, all his joyful thoughts were interrupted by the notices. They forced his attention to them. A huge number of red screens appeared around him. A text message came from one of the screens. It stated that his fire dragon's health had dropped below 10. If it wasn't fed now, it would cause the animal to die, and everything that had been created would return to its starting point. The dragon will return to the egg. This notice made the boy net on the bed. Lynn Lannister was out of his mind at this message. He thought he was a sick bastard who came up with such cruel rules. Return to zero point. The little dragon had eaten its favorite food and was happy. The animal was completely covered in the juice of the berries it was eating. After that, the little lord came every day to feed the dragon who had a huge appetite. And the little lord always thought that after I all the food he had prepared for the dragon was finished, he would not want the animal to start eating people. And so lying on the sand after a hearty lunch of a huge amount of fruit, the dragon's level increased. If given a chance to eat well and rest, the animal would quickly grow to the second level. The little lord was going to surround his pet with proper care. Each time he looked at it with a studying gaze and tried to create tactile contact, the dragon still didn't like it, but he was already snapping less. Of course, Fury grinned when he realized he was being tried to be tamed. He was going to seem like an evil animal to the last so that he would be respected and cared for even more. The dragon's behavior amused the little lord. So every time he tried to pet or just touch this animal, the dragon would swear and threaten him more and more. The little lord seemed to get bored when he saw the blue screen. That window kept trying to talk to him and cheer him up. The last message was that the boy was becoming more and more skilled. Little Lord called the information window a wolf in sheep's clothing. Despite all attempts to insult the information window, it warned him that they were the reason why this boy could use magic power. Hearing about the magic power, the Little Lord shifted his attention to the blue screen. So it was true, after all. It was because of this book and movement that Little Lord could use magic power, and the blue screen confirmed the information. Since the information window was constantly moving, the little lord had to raise his head and look at it carefully, after hearing the words that they could give more. The question of what was being talked about came up. Since Wrath Dragon Fury had reached the first level, the training mode was opened and the first lesson had to begin. Around the little lord, the environment began to change. 
The first of the skills that mages must possess was meditation. In training mode, the first level was meditative board balance, which was where he found himself. It was very difficult to balance on this particular board. The boy was constantly wobbling. He could not maintain full concentration and was constantly falling. How could he keep his balance and meditate at the same time? The information window was counting numbers from five to one. Five seconds had already passed. Meditation failed. He launched the hammer. The retaliation began. A 40-ton hammer flew straight at the boy, which had to be dodged. The little lord was terrified, for the huge thing was already flying to kill him. Now the boy's concentration was broken. He did not have time to dodge the hammer, and it hit him right in the face with such force that he bled and fell down. It would have been nothing, but the magical threads drew the little lord back to the meditative balance. The bort had turned out to be real. Only now did he realize that he wasn't going anywhere. The magical threads held him firmly on the balance board so he couldn't escape anywhere. The blue screen said that until the boy finished his meditation, he would not be able to leave the balance board. Retribution would be triggered if his meditation failed. The little lord is all sweaty from the exertion. He proceeds to meditate. It wasn't a training session. It was more like they were trying to kill him. But here the mission was failed again and the little lord couldn't keep his balance, so his strength was 80 tons. Each time, the level of meditation increased more and more. There were so many attempts to keep his balance and meditate at the same time before the little lord was able to reach a level of difficulty that he didn't even realize. But finally, the blue screen congratulated little lord for completing the training. His level of magic had been upgraded, even though his face was covered in abrasions and his clothes were covered in dust, the little lord was very pleased. After all, his level was now no less than that of a dragon. Seven days later, the little lord stood in the middle of a huge field in the real world training on this sunny day. After all, he had trained so much in the virtual world, he was ready to try the power of his magic here as well. Raising his hand up, the little lord was completely calm. He snapped his fingers and activated the magical perception around him, and the magic stirred like the wind. With his arm stretched upwards, the little lord was able to display a fire sigil to use fire magic. A strong wind rose up around him, marking the beginning of the concentration of magic. However, the moment the fireball needed to be released, only a small light appeared from the little boy's palm, which immediately disappeared. Looking at the small blob of fire of his palm, the little lord was upset. He didn't understand why it was so small. He quickly brushed the small fire off his palm. Little lord pretended it didn't happen. He was very embarrassed and he was glad that no one was around him. But then little lord noticed a servant standing ahead of him, who was catching butterflies and watching his master closely. He ran towards the manors and shouted that the young master could use fire magic. The little lord stood on a rock and tried to stop Jack from telling anyone anything. In his great emotion, little lord thrust his hand forward and created a fire that was aimed straight at Jack. He was screaming about how he needed to shut up and not tell anyone anything. The fireball that the little lord released almost hit Jack's servant legs. The man barely had time to lift his foot in time to avoid being engulfed by the fire. He was a little scared. Holding the small flame in his palm, the little lord was very much surprised to see that his fireball had become stronger, and a blue screen appeared in front of him, which said that the power of magic was directly related to the rancher's experience level. Deciding to check what the information window said, the little lord smiled evilly and looked at his servant Jack. He decided to check, but Jack didn't want to. He was crying, for he was scared. Little Lord ran after his servant with fireballs. The servant's peaceful days near the small estate were over. He was running from his master, screaming that he was hot. But it was some time after Mr. Oliver received a letter from Uncle Alan. The joyous cries of little Jack came to an end, too. Duke Blaine, standing on his balcony, looked at the letter the bird had brought him. It was a letter of admission to the Holy Academy. The little Lord was insanely happy to hear this news. From his tumultuous emotions, he ran up to his uncle and embraced him. 
Duke Blaine also fondly embraced his nephew, but his gaze was sad. On the day of the little lord's departure, all the inhabitants gathered outside the manor. They warmly bade him farewell, shouting and waving at him. The knight stood and ordered the young master to take care of himself, and the boys who had recently bullied him were terribly upset that the little lord had been accepted into the academy, and they were not. And so, at last, he set off in a small cart driven by little Jack. He waved happily to all those who saw him off. Sitting inside the wagon, he thought about the fact that he was going to the academy to become a mage. He tried using fire magic and summoning it faster by processing the speed level. The journey from the estate to the academy takes about a month. During the day, Little Jack drove a wagon with two horses harnessed to it. Lannister rested and was in his thoughts. At night, the Little Lord would go to the ranch to train the dragon. He continued to meditate this time increasing his level with the help of bees. The information window said that if the boy concentrated well, the bees would not bite him, but he already had a few stings on his face. Time flew by unnoticed. Because of him, Fury's dragon was getting bigger and bigger. The dragon was already on the third level, and the dwelling that the little lord had built was not big enough for him so the red line on the information window kept lighting up that the area was overpopulated. Every time the Little Lord and the Fury Dragons met, that last one metal fire at the man screaming that he needed a new home and the little one jokingly calling him annoying. From the fire magic, the Little Lord decided to agree to the dragon's terms. To begin with, he wanted to summon him to the outside world with him. The dragon didn't know what that was, so it watched its master carefully, looking at him with a questioning look. The information window received the ranch master's instructions and transported him and the dragon to the designated location. The little lord watched carefully as the dragon moved and kept joking about being scared. But the dragon did not agree with his master and kept shouting to him that dragons could not be afraid of anything. Meanwhile, in a completely different place, the eyes of one of the men indicated rage, they were dark and bottomless and soulless. The man with horns on his head, completely surrounded by fire and metal, was thinking about why the dragon had appeared outside the Rift Valley. A black dragon was flying above the throne where the man was seated. Little Lord and Dragon Fury moved to a huge tall rock, scrutinizing everything around him. The dragon asked about where they were. He really liked this place. It was much more spacious than his cramped world. The little lord looked at his pet and asked him afterwards if he liked it here. But it was clear from the dragon's expression that he was thrilled with the new place. It was much more spacious than before. The dragon spread its wings and looked around. The little lord offered the dragon a flight, but their flight didn't last long. While they were traveling, they were almost hit by a flying arrow. Little lord was frightened and looked in the direction it came from. Could it have been dragon hunters? But behind them a fire was blazing in the thicket of the forest. There were people screaming from there begging for help, but there were more than just those asking for help. There were male voices demanding that everything of value be given to them. The little lord and his dragon looked down carefully, watching what was happening, and they had an inkling that this was a robbery. The expression on their faces changed from serene to serious. Suddenly, the young lord heard the voice of Little Jack. He was calling for his young master and asking for help. There were thin green snakes hanging from one of the trees. They were magical creatures covered in shiny, hard scales. Their huge fangs were filled with venom and were ready to pierce their prey. Hanging below them were two knights and Little Jack. They were already defeated and begging for mercy. Little Jack was bound and crying, but even in this situation, he was thinking of the young lord. The boy was so close to death, but regretted that he would no longer be able to take care of his master. Jack watched the young master all the time. He was always working so hard, and never missed a day even on their journey to the academy. At night, under the light of the fire, the little lord would meditate. So little Jack decided to go in search of food for his lord. Even though it was already deep into the night, Jack was encouraged by Lynn Lannister's endeavors and wanted to please him. In his walk, 
the boy came across a caravanner's camping ground. The young men greeted the traveler in a friendly manner and invited him to their campfire. But no sooner had the boy got acquainted with the people than a bunch of burly men jumped out from behind the bushes. They were several times bigger than the boy and threatened him with weapons. In the darkness, only their evil eyes glowed. The bandits quickly massacred all the caravanners, and mountains of corpses were already lying on the ground. He spared no one and simply walked over the defeated bodies looking for those who remained alive. One of the men, a tall brigand with a horned helmet on his head, held a dark-haired man by the shoulders. The dark-haired man was the head of the Mizan Chamber of Commerce, Lucas, and the bandit wanted to know from him where they hid the goods they were smuggling here. The bandit threatened the men who were accompanying the trade caravan. The men were terrified. They were tied up and there were snakes crawling all around them, who appeared to be obeying the bandits. And to confirm their threats, one of the snakes bit the soldier escorting the caravan. The man's face contorted and in an instant aged several decades. All life was gone from the man in one second. Little Jack hung on a rope under a tree and tried not to look at what had happened to the young man. All that was left beneath the armor were bones covered in dry skin. This was not a man, but a centuries-old mummy. The head of the Chamber of Commerce tried to break free from the older brigand's grip. His face expressed fear and despair, but the man's strong arm held him in one place. As much as Lucas wanted to help his men, he could not give the goods to these brigands. The buyer of these goods was a very powerful man, and if the caravan didn't deliver these goods to them, the buyer would simply put them out of business. Lucas lowered his head sadly, but such an answer did not suit the bandit leader. His face stretched out and his huge chin protruded like a bird's balls. He looked meaningfully at his hostage, trying to decide what to do with him next. The brigand knew that the usual conversations would not help, so he continued his abuse of the others. The man snapped his fingers and tried to turn the head of the Chamber of Commerce around to look at what was happening. Little Jack was looking straight ahead. He didn't cry or scream as the snake approached him with a loud hiss. The only thing on the boy's mind was that he couldn't ask for forgiveness personally from the young lord, but he was willing to die for him. The boy gathered all his strength and did not look at the approaching snake. He was very scared. He knew that now his life would be cut short, and he only regretted that he would not be able to serve his master. And the snake was already very close to the victim's body. It opened its mouth wide and stuck out its long tongue. The animal wanted to eat the child's soul. While Little Jack's head was filled with a loud cry of regret, a huge ball of fire began to fall from the sky. It fell directly on the ravenous snakes, and their scales were covered in fire. They wriggled and screamed in pain. Their bodies were burning centimeter by centimeter. While the bandit leader looked up into the sky and searched for an answer to what was going on here, the ropes that were entangling Jack burned and he broke free from his trap. While the man was looking up at the sky, a boot was stepped on his face. A boot went straight for his nose, crushing it and causing severe pain from broken bones. It was the little lord. He made the brigand's face his jumping point, and while the man could not resist, moved on. The man's head arched backwards from such an attack. And Lynn Lannister, satisfied with his descent, spoke aloud of the man's flexibility. After all, thanks to this trick, his descent was softer. In speed, the rest of the brigands ran up to the gang leader. They watched their fellow rising and trying to regain consciousness, but were afraid to approach him and touch him. The man they had stepped on looked so bad. Little Jack was watching. When he saw what his master had done, he stood still. His eyes were filled with admiration. Lynn Lannister stood in front of his servant and asked him to move away from the battlefield. The young lord was brave and was going to protect his man from any brigands. Looking at the huge squad of bad guys, the guy didn't look worried. The situation was a bit tense, for he was alone among the crowd of opponents. But it was obvious from his face that there was a plan that would let him win. Behind the chief brigand stood the others. They were trembling with fear. 
They were talking about how the guy who shot fire magic at them was clearly a mage of at least the third rank. But the ringleader wasn't intimidated by this. His fellows, on the other hand, were clearly shitting their trousers. But apparently, they had forgotten that their boss was a knight of the third rank. Which meant that, unlike magicians, he didn't need to read spells. The head of the brigands displayed excellent skills in wielding various weapons. His huge sword came down right in front of the young lord and almost hit him. It was all about the fact that thanks to his knightly skills, he had huge advantages over mages in close combat. While Lynn Lannister was dodging the brigand's sword attack, he was thinking about how much he was right. Mages aren't that strong in close combat, and firing a fireball helped him make fury. He sent the dragon back to the ranch to hide the fact of its existence. The strange man seemed to be displeased that the guy wasn't attacking. He began to taunt him, saying that the poor fellow could only dodge. Meanwhile, the boy was watching every movement of his opponent so as not to get hit. In the tiniest fraction of a second, the sword flew right next to the little lord's face. Had it not been for the instant reaction skills honed in training, this blow would have been fatal. The brigand was very fast. Another blow from the man with his huge sword caused Lin to lose his balance. The boy fell to the ground with a clatter, unable to do a good job of deflecting the attack. Lin Lannister got to his feet and kept his hand on his chest. His white shirt was already stained with blood from his wound. He looked at his opponent with a menacing gaze and realized that he could no longer just dodge. Therefore, one must look for a way out of this situation. The little lord knew that his stamina and mental strength trained in the room should help him survive. Lin raised his hand up to concentrate on summoning fire magic. Fire energy swirled around his palm. But a sudden kick to his chest prevented him from finishing the task. With lightning speed, the brigand ran up to the boy and jumped up, hitting the sword wound with all his might so that he lost his control over magic. From such a strong blow, the boy's body was thrown back several meters. His back hit the trunk of the nearest tree with a loud thud. A cracking sound went up. It seemed that the guy's spine was broken. A terrible pain was reflected on his face. From this pain, Lynn Lannister lost consciousness. His body fell to the ground, and in front of his face were the feet of a brigand ready to kill his opponent. The man roughly grabbed the boy by the hair and lifted his head up. There was blood and abrasions on the little lord's face, and his eyes were troubled. The brigand thought it was cute to see such naivety in his opponent. The thug lifted the lad upright by his hair and stretched his arm out in front of him. He believed that being in front of a knight of the same level as the mage, the latter had no chance of winning. The boy's body dangled helplessly from fatigue and pain. The brigand decided that he had already won. He had great strength, so he could easily twirl a fairly old boy with one hand and swing him like a toy. With a good swing, the bandit threw the body into a huge rock. Lynn Lannister no longer had the strength to resist and just let him do whatever he could. The little lord could no longer speak, and casting spells in this situation was quite problematic. He leaned on the rock he had just been hit against and tried to think. But suddenly, an information window appeared. It said that the rancher had entered his first battle and that he was about to be paired with the dragon. The boy looked up in surprise. The information window listed the available skills. The rancher now had a level one dragon with three types of basic magic and one quick skill. It was the fast skill, instant fireball, that interested Lynn Lannister. The information window requested to continue pairing with the pet. This was exactly the skill that the dragon pup had acquired after eating the dragon scale fruit. And every use of this skill was against a human. Lin was constantly running away from the fireballs. But the mere fact that the little lord could use dragon magic brought about a kind of shock. The realization of this was expressed in his huge eyes and the boy's face was no longer frightened or tired. The information window told him that the Lord could use magic. The dragon's magic level was higher than a human's by two points, and the bigger and rancher the dragon lord was, 
the more types of magic he would be able to use. And Lin reached for the information window with great gratitude to continue pairing with the dragon. But the little lord had no sooner pressed the selection key than he received a heavy blow to his face. It was a brigand who left no room for weakness or delay. Standing over his nearly defeated opponent, the man smirked. Lynn Lannister, gathering his remaining strength, lifted himself from the ground. And the brigand, slowly coming closer, said that his magical power was useless and all this is a fiction about strong mages. The bandit stepped on the boy with his foot, not allowing him to even try to get to his feet. The huge boot pinned the boy to the ground once more, holding Lynn Lannister's foot in a horizontal position. The brigand straightened up and swung his huge sword to end this game, but the little lord didn't want to give up. The brigand prevented the dragon power import from continuing, but Lynn was determined from his last strength reached for the import confirmation window. The heavy male's pumped leg was pressing painfully on the young man's back. The brigand held on to the hilt of his sword with both hands and raised it above his head. He suddenly wondered if Lin's lean body could withstand his attack directly. The sword swiftly swung down to chop the young master in half. The boy was terrified of his imminent death, and his eyes were filled with terror. To die now would be a foolish end to his life. But the importation of dragon power, which was completed in time, helped the young master to use an instant fireball. A concentration of fire stream swirled around his exposed arm and headed towards the brigand. A powerful tongue of flame burst out, towering above the tops of the forest trees and resembling an enraged dragon that opened its mouth in a mute roar. The frightened cries of the remaining bandits were heard all around, who were very startled by the sudden fiery attack. The blow was so powerful that it melted the sword of the leader attacking Lin. He collapsed to the ground, stunned by what he saw. The entire gang of bandits exclaimed with one voice, unable to believe their eyes that they had just witnessed instant magic. The young master finally managed to get up from the ground and wipe the blood from his lips. The man was perplexed and asked the young man if he could use instant magic. Such a talent at such a young age was astonishing. A devilish grin touched Lin's lips. He was able to wipe some of the blood off his face, but it was still visible on his skin in dirty streaks. Quietly and ominously, he said that he should be addressed as Mr. Lin's confidence seemed to tower over the bandits. Right now, he looked more like a devil than a young magician. Did the brigand still think that without a sword, he would be able to defend himself against a mage with instant magic? Suddenly, all the men who had recently looked intimidating began to act disgustingly cute. The leader of the gang seemed to be coddling Lin, calling him brother and offering to go to lunch with him. The young master was amazed and disgusted by such a drastic change of character. Of course the young man did not tolerate such an attitude and quickly chased the villains away. The grateful merchant respectfully presented Lin with a healing potion. He also thoughtfully inquired about his well-being, to which the young man thanked him and said that he was healed early. Accompanied by the remaining guards, they headed somewhere further down the road. Rubbing his hands together impatiently, the merchant said that it was they who should thank the young master. After all, it was only because of him that they were able to protect their valuable goods. The young man tried to keep his face and smile sweetly, although he was clearly annoyed by the man's behavior. Lin found it strange that they were not thanking him for saving their own lives, but for being able to protect their precious goods. What so valuable could merchants transport that could be more precious than their own lives? At last they arrived at their destination. In front of them on a wagon, something tall was covered with a dark cloth. The merchant states that this catch was unexpected and in no way compares to the price of their goods, but the thing was truly beautiful. The merchant intended to present this unexpected catch to them as a thank you for protecting their goods, but his ingratiating tone spoke of a certain secrecy. In the light of the moon and stars, he gestured with a sweeping gesture to tear away the cloth that concealed something beautiful. 
Beneath the cloth was indeed something striking and unusual, a girl with long blonde hair. Her hands were bound with rope and suspended from above. The merchant stated that it was a maid from the elven forest. Lin was amazed at what he saw. He in no way expected to see such beauty ever in his life. As he studied the captive girl with his gaze, he wondered if she was really from where the merchant said she was from. After all, their race should have been extinct during the time when dragons wreaked havoc across the world. The life form he was looking at now was similar to the human race, and that race was called elves. Innocent, glowing, sky-blue eyes looked pleadingly at the lad. The young elf girl was clearly frightened and with her gaze begged for salvation. Lin continued to look at the girl in astonishment. The merchant, on the other hand, was clearly satisfied with this reaction of the young master and continued to chatter haughtily. He rather boldly and brazenly declared that not a single man would be able to resist and refuse such a thing. The merchant kindly asked to accept this gift. Lin was infuriated by this man's behavior and overall attitude towards the elven woman. He glared angrily in the direction of the merchant. The man, in turn, completely relaxed and put his arm around the young man's shoulder. The expression on his face clearly gave away his vulgar thoughts. He said that there was nothing to be ashamed of because there were only men here. Such insolence was astonishing. After that, the man moved closer to Lin's ear. His voice became quieter and more mysterious, and there was also a grin on his lips. He decided to tell the young man some details about this girl. They found her alone and unharmed in the middle of a mountain of corpses. She looked very frightened, but her body was intact, and the bodies of the mercenaries lying around suggested that it was she who had done this to them. In fact, the merchant was overjoyed to find such a find. Such a beautiful elf could sell for at least a million gold coins. Such a chance could bring him great wealth. The merchant continued to suck up to Lin. He said that this elven girl wasn't the only gift he wanted to offer him. Along with that, he was also inviting him to join the Mycen Chamber of Commerce. The young man was perplexed as to why he wanted to join. As he continued to rub his hands together, the merchant smirked unkindly. His invitation was clearly not out of pure gratitude, but most likely carried some sort of gain behind it. He honestly admitted that their chamber had recently gone through a major crisis. In his mind, some sort of plan was already clearly maturing. If there were literally a few geniuses in the chamber who possessed instant magic, it would lead them to unimaginable success. With such thoughts, his face lit up with a malicious grin. Lin had been standing quietly listening to the man talk the entire time. From behind him, a light wind blew the fallen leaves. From this light gust, the young man's hair and his cloak gave in to the flow and developed in the wind. A quiet sigh escaped his lips. Taking a few steps, he approached the cage in which the captive Elfes sat. Grasping the iron structure with one hand, he turned to the merchant. In a calm, measured tone, he thanked him for his kindness. Suddenly, flames erupted from his hand. It engulfed the entire cage without touching the elf. All the remaining people present were surprised and frightened by what had happened. The ropes restraining the girl were also neatly burnt by the fire. Her wrists were finally free from the tight shackles and she was free. Her expression showed a slight bewilderment. What was happening was as surprising to her as it was to the others. The merchant's voice cut through at once. He shouted furiously at the young man and sincerely did not understand what he was doing. Lin stood with his back to him, flames raging around him, and in his left hand he held a melted, torn-out bar of the cage. The boy was really grateful to him for such a generous reward, but the merchant's treatment of life as a commodity clearly did not suit him. His face glowed with determination. The flames raged around him but did not burn the young mage. Still, there was no way he could accept such an attitude toward any form of life. The merchant's voice was less resolute and betrayed trepidation and perhaps fear. He stepped back a few steps closer to his guards. 
just in case he decided to remind the young master how much this girl would be worth. Lin reacted to this by instantly launching a small volley of fire directly at the merchant's feet. The merchant shrieked in fright and bounced further away. Still, a small spark managed to reach the man and his clothes caught fire. Panicking, he started to run towards the forest, shouting for the young man to do what he wanted. He then only shouted out what was burning. The mercenary knights looked perplexed at their commander and asked him to wait for them. Lynn Lannister looked at the fleeing caravan leader with his guards. Their clothes were burning, making them run faster. And behind him, the metal bars of the cage that was the prison were burning. Fire burned in the little lord's eyes. Every time he used fire magic, his face became serious, just like now. He conjured while concentrating the magical energy in his palm. Due to the perfect concentration of fire magic, only the rods were burning. They did not touch or burn the body of the young Elfest sitting inside. The little blonde creature sat meekly and looked at her savior with all her eyes. She was scared, but the outstretched palm and quiet voice was soothing. Lynn asked her not to be afraid and to come out, and the girl hesitated. But she wanted to trust. In front of her stood a young boy. His huge red eyes glittered even more from the fire that burned around him, but his face attracted and beckoned. One felt an axis of trust from him. The pixie's blue eyes had never seen such kindness from a human before. She looked not at the palm held out to her, but at the young man, and could not tear her gaze away. The elf girl accepted the young man's help, and holding on to his hand stepped out of the wagon. Her cage was still burning brightly, and Lynn decided to find out how the young lady was feeling. The girl was embarrassed. Her cheeks were burning with a bright blush. The Elfess lowered her gaze and embarrassedly thanked her savior. Lynn Lannister was generous and kind. Saving the girl was not something self-serving to him. Therefore, the young man smiled softly as he looked at the lovely creature. He did not expect gratitude. The elf girl raised her face to the young lord and heard his name. The young lord introduced himself and asked the name of such a fragile creature. The elven girl couldn't stand the direct gaze of Lynn Lannister and covered her face burning with embarrassment. She turned away from the lad and confused him. This behavior also embarrassed the young man. He turned away and thought about how cute the girl in front of him was. He compared her to a frightened rabbit. To remove the awkwardness, Lynn said that there was no need to introduce himself. He wasn't going to force her since they wouldn't see each other again. The girl's face was still burning. The young lord turned around and walked towards his carriage. As he left, he shouted to the elf that she should hurry up and leave before other evil people came here. The girl was confused. She didn't want to leave. She gathered all her courage. Her body tensed up and she shouted her name loudly. The girl's name was Nick. With fear, she clutched her dress with her small hands. Her scream made Lynn turn around and look at her. The girl's next words were quiet. She lowered her head again. The delicate flower in her hair gave her a great innocence. The fact that she had said her name had a very big meaning to her. Nick cautiously approached her savior and gently wrapped her palms around Lynn Lannister's hand. The man did not resist. Her innocent eyes looked directly at the boy. The delicate pointed ears sticking out from under her thick hair did not move. What she uttered was of great value. She asked if the guy would chase after her after hearing her name. Little Jack had already built a fire near the wagon. He was as calm as if he hadn't been on the verge of death an hour ago. Little Jack was very loyal, and even now he was thinking how good it was that he had found food for his master. The young master sat inside the wagon with his guest. There was a table with food in front of them, but the food was disappearing at a great speed. Nick was hungry. She wasn't even stopped by the fact that she could die because of eating the food quickly. Lynn Lannister was watching the food intake. He offered the girl some water while she took a new piece of food from the table. Grabbing the bread and holding it as if it was about to be taken away, she looked at the young man. His offer of a drink of water made her stop her speedy eating and look at him, from which the guy also came to a standstill. Grabbing a glass of water, the girl started drinking it with great greediness. 
She was so cute because of her childlike directness that she attracted a lot of attention. Lynn tried to look into Nick's face while she ate and decided to ask her a question that worried him. Lowering his head slightly, he asked if the girl would stay with him after his release. Maybe Nick wanted to return to the clan? The young elf girl's face darkened. She stopped her meal and looked away. The mention of the clan brought a shadow down over her face. Lowering her gaze, Nick began to cry. The tears in her blue eyes were like little gems. Her feet were bare and she clutched her knees. What she wanted to say made her anxious, so she squeezed her dress again with her palms. Without looking at the guy, the girl pronounced that she couldn't go back. Nick said that she was walking and playing in the woods. And at one point standing under the shade of a tall tree, she realized that she was lost. Looking around, she saw unfamiliar land in front of her. After a long search for a way home, when she arrived at the right place, she saw that her clan had disappeared, and the village they lived in had been burned down. She, standing behind a trunk, watched as the soldiers burned their homes. Instead of her clan, there were people in the village, people who had destroyed it. Nick was very frightened and covered her mouth with her hand to keep from screaming at the horror she saw. Soldiers went all over the village looking for the elves. They were angry. After all, only yesterday they had seen these creatures here. Calming one by one, they decided to look around. They had to find at least one elf to make a lot of money. Hearing a noise behind them, one of the humans turned around. There was a basket of pink flowers lying in the bushes under the trees. The basket had obviously just been dropped by someone, and the flowers were scattered. Meanwhile, Nick was already running further and further away from the place. Her hair was flying behind her. She remembered that the clan leader kept telling them that elves should stay away from humans. But as she ran, looking ahead, she didn't notice the danger beneath her feet. There were traps set in the forest, and she was caught in one. Not high off the ground was a rope tied to the ground, and she caught herself on it. Unable to hold on, the girl fell face down. Trying not to lose consciousness, the girl clenched her palms into fists. She was overcome with fear, but she slowly raised her head and looked back. If she was caught, her body would be corrupted by thousands of dirty human hands. She would go to her own hell with nothing but human abuse of her pure soul. So Nick tried to run away and find her clan, but she didn't succeed. The humans caught up with her and threw a net over her. Two men stood over her with an implement and smiled dirty. After all, they had just received a lot of money. But no matter how hard the girl tried, no matter how far and fast she ran, she always got caught. The little elf girl fell victim to the humans every time. Nick's story horrified Lynn Lannister. Out of anger, he thumped the table loudly. All these people were to him a gang of freaks for whom nothing mattered except money. Such savage behavior made the girl shrink with fear. She covered her body with her hands and looked at the guy with a hunted look. The young lord noticed this and began to apologize. After all, all the swear words were not about her. Lynn felt uncomfortable. He was a human, too. That creature that had brought the girl pain and suffering before. He was ashamed of those he called humans. The boy looked at the frightened Nick. She sat meekly with her palms on her lap. Lynn asked if the girl was afraid of him. Nick looked at him and studied him, but the elf girl was not afraid of him. As soon as she said those words, Lynn's eyes widened with surprise. After all, he belonged to the very creatures that had brought her suffering. But in him, she saw a savior. His words to the merchant about not being able to accept his treatment of life as a commodity. His insistent stare at that moment decided her attitude towards him. The fragile girl's body was covered with abrasions. She hugged her knees and put her pretty face on them. Her hair was like a blanket scattered around her. Lynn was different from the bad people. This moment made the young lord blush. The purity of this creature's soul made one feel embarrassed. Lynn scratched the back of his head and asked him not to thank him like that again. Nick's cheeks lit up again. Since it turned out this way, the guy decided to offer Nick to stay with him for a while. As long as they didn't find any information about her clan, she could stay close by. 
After that, she could go back to her family. Nick smiled. She was grateful for such an offer. But right now, Lynn was on his way to the academy. And the only people who can be in it are the students and their servants. So if it was okay with Nick, and judging by the look on the girl's face, she was ready for anything. She had to pretend to be the little lord's servant. It seemed that Nick was about to explode with tension. There was something about the man's words that alarmed her. Nick's grandfather had talked about the word servant being a very dangerous word for elves. Wanting to clear up the misunderstanding, Lynn raised his voice. Apparently the girl had misunderstood. After all, he would not force her to do strange things. Nick wanting to protect her honor covered her body with her hands. The young elven girl would only need to call him Young Master and would probably need to change her leaf dress into her usual clothes. This was the most awkward situation since they had met. Continuing to speak in an already calmer voice, Lynn said, as long as the girl stays by his side, she won't need to be afraid of other people. All of this seemed to have calmed down the frightened poor girl. Nick's rosy cheek spread out in a smile. She trusted the young master. Therefore, she gladly agreed to all these conditions. Her body relaxed and glowed. Lynn Lannister was satisfied that they could clear things up now. Looking at the innocent soul in front of him, he himself was calm and happy. Lynn Lannister was very well-mannered. Since the time was already late, he, leaving the carriage, told the girl to stay in it and sleep, and the young man himself would rest next to little Jack. Descending the steps, Lynn confused his servant. He took his eyes off the fire and asked why the young master had gone out. But that shouldn't be a problem, Lynn decided. Little Jack didn't understand why the Lord was sleeping with him instead of with a young, beautiful girl. Three days later, Lynn Lannister's wagon arrived at the walls of the Iris Magical Academy. Here, every pebble was shrouded in magic. The huge windows of the stone building shone like mirrors in the sun. Everything sparkled and looked friendly. As he got down from the carriage, the young lord thought about what Mr. Oliver had written to him. He had promised him to tell him about the magic book as soon as the boy arrived at the academy. So the lad was enthusiastic and was going to get to meet Uncle Oliver sooner rather than later. Lynn wondered if Mr. Oliver knew about the dragons inside the book when he handed it to the boy. After all, this book held immense power. It was impossible to believe that Uncle Oliver had given it to him without knowing that it held dragons. The boy stood beside the wagon deep in thought. He clenched his chin as his thoughts led him to doubt. While the lad was thinking, the information window showed a new notification. The young rancher had arrived on the grounds of Iris Academy. He needed to explore the grounds to unlock a new quest to unlock the water dragon. He was very interested in this. He turned towards the butler, waiting for more information. What Lynn heard from the information window left him horrified. Were there really other dragons on the academy grounds? The young man's eye twitched. After all, he had just raised one and it had not been easy for him. Of course, dragons have powerful strength and wisdom, and having them in his arsenal could make the young lord more powerful and influential. That being said, the process of taming a dragon is usually not easy and dangerous, requiring courage, skill, and strategic thinking. For Lin, potentially acquiring a new dragon presents an interesting challenge and an opportunity to gain a new power to aid him in his adventures. At the moment, there is only one released dragon. Consequently, the rancher's abilities remained at first-level mage with one unlocked dragon race. Hence, when the rancher completes all system quests and unlocks six types of dragon eggs to obtain the properties of all magical attributes, fire, water, earth, air, light, and darkness, is a great achievement indeed. The young mage will have incredible power and versatile abilities that can change the course of battle and the fate of the world. Dragon egg-shaped symbols representing each element add mystery and magic when used. Stunned by this discovery, Lynn Lannister stared mesmerized in front of him. Getting the properties of all the magical attributes was something supernatural to him. But if he got them all, 
he could easily become a sage mage. This news raised the boy's fighting spirit, and he clenched his fists with joy. After all, that's where all the concentration of his magical powers would be. The greater the risk, the greater the reward. He liked that kind of exchange. The young lord headed for the academy, ready to immerse himself in his studies and training. And little Jack and Nick, faithful companions, carefully unpacking and tending to the horses so they could rest after the long journey. It's important to have such trusted helpers by your side. Lin's self-esteem was at an all-time high. He turned round to his companions and ordered them to wait for him near the wagon. Their young master would soon return in triumph. With tears in his eyes, little Jack wished the lad good luck, and Nick's face flushed with delight for her savior. The academy grounds were bustling with activity. The postman on his broom shouted from above to all the students about the arrival of parcels and with the help of air magic delivered them directly into the hands of the recipients. Boys and girls piled up and showed each other experiments. Here, for example, was the method of creating a magic cloud. It can regulate the density of sunlight for dragon-scale grass and improves the survival rate by several times. The students were mesmerized as they gazed at the magic bubble with the sprouted plant. Lin slowed his step and considered everything around him. There were students standing on the stone stairs and waving cheerfully to each other. A golden-clothed postman was hovering above the ground doing his job. Creatures new to him were flying around. Such behavior was quite expected for a magical academy. The young lord approached the stairs at the top of which stood a monument of two huge stone palms holding a huge magical book. Beneath it was a mage in gray robes. He looked like the most powerful person in the place. And all around, the students were wearing robes, but their robes were different in color. And everyone was looking at the new guy. Lina had been called in as a student and informed of Assistant Dean Oliver's temporary absence. Perhaps a new opportunity or responsibility at the academy is opening up for him. Lin is apparently becoming the center of attention, and he will have new challenges to meet in his studies. Lin turned around and saw a blonde-haired man in a suit in front of him. The man was beautiful and held out his palm as a greeting. He was saying that, although the dean had made an exception for him by accepting him into the academy, but it had rules. The boy should have followed the man to take the entrance test. Walking into the huge hall with high ceilings in which students and teachers were already gathered, you could hear whispers that discussed the newcomer. Everyone was thinking about the person who got here through connections with the dean. Does he have a talent for magic? Some were thinking about him being at an intermediate level and then some people would have to pull themselves up to get close to his level. But maybe he'll be at the highest level. And then everyone would know that Mr. Oliver didn't choose him for nothing. The rumors and gossip about the mysterious student proved to be true when one of the boys spotted him in the hall. The tension in the air became palpable, and the curiosity among those present grew. Everyone is in anticipation of what will happen next. A reveal a conflict or something else unexpected. Eyes are directed towards the mysterious man, and the atmosphere of tension is rising. Lynn Lannister was pacing in the middle of the hall with his head proudly raised. He was confident in himself and his strength. His shoulders were squared and everyone glared at the young man who had entered the room. A silence ensued. A man stepped forward. He was Fred Edmund, and he would be the one to test his magical abilities. Holding out a magic ball in front of him, he asked if the lad was ready to test his power. But now the young lord was more confident than ever. He loudly and clearly agreed to the test of his abilities. After all, after all the information and experience he had received, he believed in his powers. Fred Edmund liked the young man's confidence. He asked him to release his mind and put his hands on the orb. Everyone around froze waiting for the results, and Lin headed towards the magical object. But no sooner had he touched the blue ball, Lin immediately remembered that he hadn't done something. The horror he felt made him sweat. Lin turned to the information window. 
he was curious about whether the ranch would be discovered by this crystal. After all, no one could know of Fury's existence. But the blue screen reassured the guy. The crystal only detects magical abilities and would not be able to interact with the ranch in any way. But there was a catch. The information window was interrupted. The teacher called out to the Lannister student and asked him to concentrate on the task at hand. Lin had to apologize for his hiccup. Lin decided not to hesitate and held out his hand in front of the magic crystal. His father was a magic genius, so his magic abilities should be of a good level as well. The orb glowed brighter from the approach of the OK Man. After a few moments, the orb changed its color to orange and became like a blob of fire. And Lin looked at these changes and smiled. He had already achieved more in a short time, more than he had in his entire life. Inside the ball, changes were taking place. It vibrated and shook very violently in the air. It seemed like lava was about to flow from inside. The teacher was amazed at what he saw. He had thoughts in his mind that this was the highest level. Was this young man really hiding so well? Before him, no one in the academy had ever been given exceptions. This teacher had even filed complaints with the assistant dean. It turns out that this guy turned out to be a real treasure. What he saw in the magic crystal caused teacher Fred Edmund to be amazed and delighted. What was it that he saw ahead of him that made him marvel so much? Surely something amazing and exciting. May this discovery bring new adventures and opportunities for everyone in the room. As soon as the teacher sat down, expressing his admiration, the magic crystal uttered a conclusion. The results of the test were that Lynn Lannister's ability level was low, and a fire element with poor efficiency was found. At these words, everyone froze. Even the air stopped its movement in the room. Fred Edmund was annoyed. He turned away from his student and covered his face with his fist so that no one would see his mistake. Lynn Lannister, on the other hand, was furious. He couldn't understand how this was possible, a low level, a weak element. But immediately, an information window appeared with its own explanation. The way Lynn's magical ability awakens is different from others. His ability is limited to his level. The level of ability will become higher once his magic level increases. Lynn felt like he was being played a joke on. Behind the young lord's back, whispering began. The students were discussing the fact that the boy was very weak, and all the rumors led to the fact that these were just words. After all, the guy doesn't even have an average level. The students didn't understand why Mr. Oliver had chosen him. Shame surrounded the boy. Since the dean had made an exception for Lynn, the teacher's words meant little. He handed the new student his things and asked him to be at the academy by tomorrow. The young mage tried not to make eye contact with the teacher. After all, he had failed not only himself and him. He had failed to live up to expectations. No sooner had the boy left than he was called out. A man in a purple robe approached the new student. His name was Augustine. He was the president of the True Student Association, and a notice appeared at the sight of him. Augustine was an important character for the next task. The task was to defeat him in the Tower of Magical Trials and obtain the Water Dragon Egg Fragment. It would open after completing the task in the Magical Tower of Trials. The difficulty of the task was high. After this notification, Lin had a question. Can the system detect other people's abilities? Approaching closely, Augustine stood over the young lord. He demanded that he hand over his uniform and badge. He demanded that he leave St. Iris Academy immediately. He believed that Lynn had used some tricks to deceive the assistant dean, but thought about the fact that such scum who use nefarious ways to get into the academy and have the audacity to stand here, disqualifying the glory of the academy. Like a bolt of lightning, a memory struck Lynn's head. He remembered how he had been pushed and abused as a very young boy. He was considered the son of a traitor and couldn't even go to the shop to do his shopping. People wanted the boy gone. Older boys threw stones at him and beat him. They thought he was rubbish who didn't dare stand near them. They humiliated him 
and said that by his presence the boy was spoiling the air that normal people breathe. But the young lord was no longer that frightened boy. He wasn't scared and answered him. The boy said that this president sounds like a street hustler. Can a president trample on other people's fate just because he has more privileges? Doesn't such behavior by a mage desecrate the academy? Lannister smiled and looked without the slightest fear at the one who tried to humiliate him. Augustine had followers. They went behind their ringleader's back and started to keep talking lies. After all, everyone around them thought that the guy had tricked his way into the academy and was now just fooling around. The students behind the president asked not to get their hands dirty with the rabble. They believed that sooner or later this insolent boy would be kicked out of the academy. Lynn Lannister was becoming furious. His fist was already gathering magical energy to attack his offenders, and around his clenched palm a clot of fire began to form. Despite the rage, the young lord couldn't lose control and give up for nothing. The boy needed to calm down. He talked to himself to keep his composure. After all, they were partially right. He had taken advantage of not the fairest way to get into the academy. It was useless to argue with the students. If he ruined his reputation in front of them and the teachers, his life in the academy would not be easy at all, and it wouldn't be a good start to becoming a sage rank mage. Silently turning away from the company, Lin walked away. Behind him, the students who were humiliating him were still whispering. Even though they were shouting at him about being a coward, he wasn't, and now his plan was to find a way to become stronger. All the joy was gone from his face. He could no longer rely on the system. He must use his own power to make all the students regret their words. Lynn Lannister decided to visit the Dragon Ranch. The information window greeted him cheerfully. It told him about the events. Today was the day of the dragon fruit ripening. The small farm was bringing in a good income, but here was the dragon fury was extremely dissatisfied. He had already become quite mature, and every time he saw a human, he would get so angry that steam would come out of his nose. The small volcano on which the dragon sat was more like a small rock. The animal didn't fit there at all anymore and its annoyance was shown by fury in the form of the fire it let loose at the man. Every time he saw him, he would shout that the pathetic little human was in no way improving his dwelling. The little lord watched as the dragon's irritation grew stronger by the second, reflected in the fierce glow of his eyes. The beast's fiery breath was heading closer and closer to him, the power of the flames gradually increasing, creating a hot wave that made him shiver in fear. At moments, it seemed that any wrong step or breath could lead to disaster. The novice mage took the dragon's favorite food and tried to placate it. He spoke of waiting a few more days and his dwelling would become larger. But the proud dragon turned away and would not accept the food from the man who tried to trick him. Fury had heard these promises two days ago. He refused to eat until his dwelling was improved. The animal got up on his hind legs and tried to attack Lin to show how serious he was. The lad could see that matters were bad, but Lin Lannister couldn't undertake the task of improving the dwelling right now, so he forcefully shoved the food into the dragon's mouth. The man again promised to fulfill his wish next time. Both of them tried to stay to their own. Trying to talk and chew at the same time, the dragon made incomprehensible noises. Of course, the boy could easily pick them apart, as he had heard it all not the first time. Fury didn't care about the man who was feeding him. Lin, on the other hand, was thinking about the dragon acting like a child. After feeding it once again and surviving, the boy headed for the exit. The information window Lannister renamed the butler and spoke to him often. Upon moving to the real world, the little lord kept a tally. The small farm yielded about 500 zlotties a day. After planting the land with fruit, there was not much money left. But to improve the dwelling required 10,000 gold coins. Lynn Lannister could already feel himself dying from this amount. It was too much for him. The little lord hardly slept at all, trying to think of how he could increase the dragon dwelling. 
The heavy thoughts were making him look quite bad. Getting up in his bed, Lannister decided to relive today and figure out a way to make a quick buck. Quickly jumping out of bed, Lannister hoped and went over the options for a part-time job in his head. These included waiter, bartender, and driver for the gods. Or maybe a few mercenary jobs might be worth doing. The little lord, adjusting his clothes physically, felt the pain of the dragon's anger. One could still babysit, but he already had a child that was particularly cranky. It seemed that the young lord had been called for breakfast. A nice offer after a long morning or a busy day. Nothing beats being invited to a delicious breakfast by a pleasant voice. Time to enjoy a good meal and start the new day with energy. The young mage was amazed at what he saw. A blonde-haired maid stood in front of him in the front door, causing him to look at her with surprise and perhaps curiosity. He had seen a blonde-haired maid. The guy expressed obvious delight and admiration for what he saw, despite the lack of vulgarity in his expression. His eyes indicated only pure amazement at what he saw. Standing in front of him was Nick. She was dressed in a maid's dress. The long covered dress only emphasized her graceful body, and the small hoop on her head made her long ears even sharper and cuter. The girl liked the way she looked. The servant at the inn said it was the best outfit for a maid, especially for one like her. Flowers bloomed in the elf girl's hair, and her cheeks burned with embarrassment. It seemed strange to her. She had never worn human clothes before. So she covered her mouth in embarrassment. Lynn Lannister came closer to the girl and stroked her head like a small child. It wasn't the least bit strange, after all. This was the kind of clothing that human servants wore. The only thing that was strange was the feelings that arose in front of the young men. But they didn't notice it. The young lord suddenly felt sadness as his eyes lowered. He realized that his actions or request might have hurt this gentle creature. Empathy and moments of self-understanding can lead to such experiences. It is important to find a balance between your own desires and caring for the feelings of others. If someone other than servants were allowed to come to the academy with the students, then Lynn would have given the girl a prettier dress. The little girl in that dress was innocence itself, and every word the master said made her even smaller. From all the words spoken by the young lord, the feelings overwhelmed the elf girl. She was about to explode if she didn't say everything. She gave the young lord a quick hug. She would never feel uncomfortable around him. This kind of behavior from Nick surprised Lynn. She almost swept him off his seat with her hug. So unexpected was her behavior. As she snuggled into the elf's head, Guy smelled the fresh and clean scent of the forest. The girl was pure both outside and inside. She was a child of nature. But it was necessary to tidy up and go to school. Yesterday's entrance test had made Lynn Lannister famous throughout the school. The boy entered the office and approached the desk where a man of short stature was sitting. Apparently, he was waiting for him, since he called the boy's name at once. The man stamped the documents with Lynn's photo. The man behind the desk wasn't very nice to the guy. He lifted the documents into the air with magic. They indicated that Lynn's class was in Zone 1, Building A, Year 1B. Lannister needed to go there and introduce himself to the teacher, and the guy thought about the fact that even though the students treated him badly, they still tried not to make life difficult for him. Everyone except his teacher. As soon as Lynn entered the office, there was a banging on the desk and a loud shout. The teacher was asking who allowed him to enter the classroom. It was teacher Yisha. To her, Lynn Lannister was a pain in the arse. She kept repeating that the reason she looked down on the knower was because the only ability the knower had was to make connections. The woman threateningly repeated that if the whole school was okay with the guy's tricks, for the sake of the assistant dean's respect, there was no way she would allow him in her classroom. The woman's formidable gaze from under her hat was ready to tear the boy apart. The whole audience whispered loudly. Everyone was looking at the young lord and judging. None of them understood how Lynn Lannister got into the academy. 
The students were talking about how the only thing he was good at was finding workarounds. How dare he come in from the front door now? And the lecturer only indulged in these words and helped the students show the guy where the exit was. He has no right to sit next to them with such weak talents. Leaving the classroom, Lynn asked the butler to scan the abilities of everyone who was in this classroom. The information window dutifully agreed. The guy's irritation was boiling inside him and was ready to come out. The students who were in the auditorium were mages of no higher than the first rank. But after all, with that level, they weren't much different from the young lord. How could the best academy train such arrogant darlings? Before he could close the door behind him, he turned around and asked the teacher what the topic of the class was. Yishe opened her mouth in surprise. She didn't expect to hear such a question. The woman moved slightly away from the table and listened to what the student who was about to leave was saying. Lynn was talking about since she didn't want to allow him to take the class because she thought his skill level wouldn't allow him to study hard. But the guy will be able to prove that he is better than all the students here. And if he succeeds, he will be able to study quietly in this classroom. This question sounded like a threat from the guy. His gaze was firm and insistent. The students laughed. Someone like him couldn't be better than them. This is a class on magic potions. Potions is tied to a person's ability level. The higher the level, the more stable and pure they are. According to the students, someone like Lannister could never achieve a fraction of their success, and to be better than them is beyond fantastic. Teacher Yishe shouted loudly, ordering everyone to make the classroom quiet. The students froze in their seats from the loudness and immediately fell silent. The woman was intrigued by the young lord's proposal. She smiled slyly, stealthily watching the one who dared to challenge her. Her smile expressed interest, perhaps even some respect for the courage and ingenuity of her interlocutor. Folding her arms across her chest, she turned to the student Lynn. Was the guy across from her really that confident? And she offered to raise the stakes. Yishe would give him a week after which there would be a test. And if Lynn comes in first place, she'll let him attend her class. The suggestion of a short week darkened the young lord's face. The shadow of the impracticability of the task loomed over his confidence. A week seemed insufficient time to complete a task or solve a problem, which could cause anxiety and doubt. And if he failed, Teacher Yishe would personally kick him out of the school, and the guy would never be able to enter the academy grounds again. To show all her power and disdain for this boy, she jabbed her finger at him. The teacher's words that he could leave the school forever frightened Lin. This bet had become much more serious than he had realized. Sweat beaded on his face, and excitement clenched in his chest. But teacher Yisha's face became angry. Her eyes flashed with a sly light. She was sure of her victory. The woman waited for an answer. She wanted him to accept her terms. Rancher had forgotten all about the butler, but he reminded himself as soon as the terms of the dispute were announced. When completing this task, Lin would receive one of the ten fragments of the water dragon egg, as well as magic experience in the form of twenty points. Although it was necessary to rank first in the test, the difficulty of the task was low. After hearing all the information from the information window, Lynn Lannister accepted the terms of the bet, especially since there was a reward for his victory, which he could use right now. Yishi watched the departing student. It amazed her that he was still holding his face after such a warm reception. The boy, in her opinion, had not only pulled the strings of the assistant dean to pressure the woman and still managed to think straight in a dangerous situation. Maybe the rumors about the boy were a lie? Despite all the anger and disgust she showed towards the child, Yishe looked at him with curiosity. She really hoped that he could surprise her. Things were getting very interesting. Above the academic library, the sun was shining brightly and the panes of the windows shimmered with rainbow colors. Lynn Lannister walked along the corridor of the library and looked round it with admiration. Now he understood why the academic library was called the most magnificent place in the empire. 
the golden columns and magical objects in the air mesmerized his eyes. The boy walked over to the racks of books and began to look around the shelves for books on magical potions. His goal is to study them in order to improve his knowledge and win the argument with his teacher. What an exciting adventure is beginning. He hopes to find all the knowledge he needs and achieve his goal. But even in the library is not without evil whispers. Two guys in red robes thought he was scum who got here through connections. As a first-year student, he should be in the classroom now. And this idiot, according to the students, was kicked out of the classroom for being stupid. Naturally, they spoke loud enough to be heard. The young lord sensed that behind his back they began to laugh. Although he was annoyed, he showed his smart side. Students in the academy could be loud and talkative, but it was important to remain calm and dignified. Smart actions and words could be stronger than any jokes. A girl with blue hair walked into the room. She had glasses on her face and a counselor badge hanging from her clothes. She sternly muttered that the students should feel sorry for themselves, not Lynn. The two boys were startled when they heard her voice. The hair on their heads rose and they abruptly fell silent. The girl spoke, clearly enunciating each letter. She addressed the two chatty students who were already in their third year and still hadn't memorized that noise was forbidden in the library. If they didn't shut their mouths now, they would get fines. One of the guys wanted to get into an argument. He didn't think the girl was as good a library counselor as she thought she was. But the other student was smarter and started to take his friend out until the two of them got a fine. Lynn smiled. This girl had saved him. She was wearing a tall hat with wide brim and yellow stars. She stared at him carefully while the two troublemakers walked out of the library room. The long stare made the girl blush. Her small green eyes lowered their gaze downwards and she blushed slightly. Squaring her shoulder slightly, the girl apologized to student Lannister. Lynn couldn't understand why she was apologizing for the insults directed at him from the two students. He felt that there was no need for her to apologize to him, and this embarrassed the girl. Her face expressed mixed feelings of surprise, offense, and bewilderment at the unexpected turn of events. The situation became even more complicated, and Lynn tried to figure out the reasons for this misunderstanding. She covered her face with a black book. It was her fault that the guy wasn't allowed to read in peace. She's a library counselor, after all, and should keep order. Lynn thought for a moment. Despite her menacing behavior, the girl clearly had a huge sense of guilt. Apparently, she took her job with complete seriousness and responsibility. To make up for the awkwardness, the young lord asked the library counselor for help. He needed to borrow some books on magic potions, and the lad asked for help in finding them. The counselor willingly agreed to help. She turned the other way and said coquettishly that Lynn could just call her Vivian. Vivian, a girl in a blue robe, looked very nice, her words sounding inviting and friendly. By allowing Lynn to address her by her first name, she added playfulness to the interaction and created an atmosphere of trust and openness. On the shelf, among the many books, was the Encyclopedia of Magical Potion Making. The book had a black cover with a golden edge, and a green magic power propelled it into motion. This magical power belonged to Vivian, who thus brought the book down from the top shelf for Lynn. A magic circle with various symbols formed around the girl, and unlike the blue magic energy, it was green. The guy enjoyed watching the girl's magic work. In his hand slowly dropped books, one by one. What else was there to expect from an academy of magic? He was enjoying it. Vivian held her book in two hands. She decided to warn Lynn about the test he was preparing for. She had only recently learnt about it. The test would not be in writing, but in practice. And there is a lot of information about magic potions in these books. The counselor was worried whether this student would be able to cope if he just read these books. She was humble, even as she helped and worried about the student. Holding a huge stack of various magic potions books in his hands, Lynn Lannister thought to himself about how unusual it was that Vivian was worried about him. He silently looked at the girl with a grateful smile. 
The information window suddenly appeared and stated that wealth and beauty could be achieved through diligent study. It was a reminder of the importance of education and developing skills that can lead to success and a better life. Investing in education and continual self-improvement can bear fruit and open up new opportunities. The young lord, despite the obstacles and ridicule, was confident. His confidence and self-esteem made it impossible to worry about him. He seemed calm and unwavering, ready to overcome any difficulties. Sometimes believing in yourself and your abilities can be the best shield against negative influences. As he moved closer to the library counselor, he expressed his gratitude. After all, she was the first person in the academy who didn't start insulting him after hearing the rumors about him. The words of gratitude penetrated into the girl's heart, and she looked up at him from below with immense admiration. Leaving Lynn winked at Vivian and promised to have dinner with her after taking first place in the test. The girl covered her face with her hat and remained silent. She stood clutching the hem of her dress with embarrassment. The girl's gaze was still hidden under the brim of her hat, but she had something to say in answer to his farewell. So she called out to him. But the order of her superior flashed in her mind. She had spoken menacingly of some task. Vivian needed to do everything possible to get close to Lynn, and then something would happen. Vivian Mason, library counselor, a girl with an open and gentle heart, despite her rough job. She apologized to Lynn for the wrong guys. Little Jack's cries were heard in Lynn's house. He was asking his master to stop reading and eat. But the boy kept promising to eat after reading this book, and he had been reading it all day. Outside the window, it was already evening, and the pair of birds paid no attention at all to the noise in the house. After all, the guy only had a week before the test. And after reading the book, it was necessary to hurry to use the knowledge in practice. Five days later, the pair of birds became the happy owners of several eggs, from which their children would soon emerge. This is a beautiful and joyful event in the natural world symbolizing new life and the renewal of the cycle of life. Meanwhile, Lynn was no longer sitting at the table, but lying on the floor. All around him was a mess. Piles of books were scattered all over the floor, sheets with various notes and food. The boy sighed heavily, finding himself in this cycle of knowledge. The young lord squeezed his eyes tightly shut and began to massage his temples. He tried to remember what one of the clues had told him. Was she really the key to solving the problem? Lynn Lannister's eyes flickered with an incomprehensible light as he stared up at the ceiling of the small office. Seconds stretched slowly, as if time stood still in anticipation of some important unraveling. A vague epiphany possessed him as his long riddle suddenly became clear. The key to his problem was before him in the guise of his faithful companion, the Dragon Fury. The property he sought turned out to be the world he owned. Realization flashed in his eyes, setting everything in place in this game of fate. Creating magical potions requires stable mental powers. Beginners usually don't have them, thus it would be necessary to add dragon saliva as an additional ingredient. Due to the constant lack of sleep and studying the material on his own, Lin was going to extreme measures. Fury was no longer breathing fire on him, but hated him for bullying himself. Of course, with the added dragon saliva of a real dragon, even the most ordinary person with no magical abilities would create a flawless potion, one that can rival the potion of a professional in this business. After getting all the necessary ingredients, Lynn Lannister made a preliminary potion to check if he had learnt and understood everything correctly. All the magical energy swirled around him and creating the necessary effect. On the day of the test, Lynn sat in the auditorium. All the students around him were stunned. They didn't expect that he was actually able to create a potion, and some wondered how he had managed to control his mind so well. All eyes were fixed on the newcomer. Student Schwa, the newcomer, was a second-rank mage, and was more like a cute corgi dog. He growled at Lin and shouted at the entire audience that the guy was cheating. But for his yelling, he got a curl on the head. 
It was Teacher Yishe. Her anger was palpable like lightning in the air. She didn't like the noise in the room. Had all the students decided to fail? And in Shua's opinion, the teacher was more like a dog than him. While student Shua licked his wounds and covered his face with tears of pain, the teacher and student Lin looked at each other. They were studying each other. After all, it was today that the young master's fate would be decided. The boy was scrutinizing the top-level potion in front of him. His heart filled with admiration in front of the meticulous work put into this creation. Every ingredient had been selected with a keen attention to detail, every proportion perfectly calculated. Bright light played on the surface of the liquid, reflecting off the intricate patterns created by the fusion of magical elements. The boy realized that the potion in front of him was more than just a potion. It was a work of art the result of careful craftsmanship and dedication. Yishe couldn't believe that with such talent as he was said to have, he had actually turned out such a good regent. She was surprised and almost showed it on her face. A purple magical energy floated towards Lin's test tube and swept his potion into the air. The teacher praised it. Not so much as to call it the best, but it was good enough. She examined the vial very carefully. Noticing that the quality of this potion was really good, and if no one made it better than Lin, then without any question it would be the best result for today. But since Lin's student heard the doubts of the other students, and to convince the audience of his honesty, he would have to stand on the podium under the supervision of the whole class. The entire audience murmured. There was an uproar around Lin. Everyone was demanding to make another potion, and the teacher, Holding the potion vial in the air was looking at the boy attentively, waiting for an answer. This behavior bothered the young lord a little. Does the teacher really not trust him? Do they all think he's cheating? The guy's sharp gaze was frightening. One of the girls in the back row was upset. Naturally, he made a good potion. Who else could be suspected? And another girl with pink hair blurted out that it was all about dragon saliva. There was an outcry from the entire class about the fact that in time to create the potion, Lin had added another secret ingredient that helps all newcomers stabilize mental abilities. One of the students was certain of this. After all, it was impossible to achieve such an effect in seven days, and an idiot like Lin is capable of cunning. The young lord grinned. All the students knew about the dragon saliva's help. But how could they accuse him of using a secret ingredient? On one of the days of preparing for the test, the rancher approached the butler. He wanted to know if it was true that time flowed seven times slower on the training ground. Could he practice his skills there? The information window confirmed this information. Lin stood up from behind his seat and agreed to the conditions offered to him. He was determined to prove his honesty and ability to accept the challenge, even if he wasn't initially trustworthy. Ready for the challenge, Lin set out to prove his reliability and competence. As he stepped into the middle of the classroom, he made Teacher Yishe take a different look at him. In Lin's hands was a vial to start the experiment. The feelings inside the teacher were changing. She was amazed that he had agreed to remake the potion so easily. She stood and watched how confidently he walked towards the center. Lin, adding each ingredient as he trained, was constantly defeated. At every stage, every time, 35 failed attempts is not an easy road to mastery, but it's important to remember that through trial and error, we grow and learn. Not giving up after failure is the key here. Persistence and perseverance will lead to success. When adding 10 drops of demonic rhinoceros snake saliva, it failed 291 times. This seemed to be a very difficult challenge for him. But even in such difficult situations, it was important to remain optimistic, not get discouraged, and keep moving forward. But now standing in the audience and adding all the ingredients in front of everyone, he was calm and focused. He had three grams of water and firestone to add. Never before had he been so relaxed. The teacher opened her mouth slightly in surprise. She watched the young man's movements carefully. 
He was very good at controlling his mental abilities. Although it was true that one could achieve a good result in such a short period of time at a low ability level, but such a concentrate could only be obtained with impeccable mental balance. Yishi watched how clearly and calmly he carried out all the instructions, and the students in the auditorium began to move closer to see this miracle. Yes, this guy was the best of those trained by Yishi's instructor. Lynn Lannister raised the potion vial above the table. It was ready. The students were discouraged by this outcome. This was a top-level potion, and the guy had actually made it without any secret ingredients. The surprised faces and whispers of the students spoke of victory. Teacher Yishe stood in front of the student and smiled. Both guys and girls realized how wrong they were. They had underestimated the new kid. It was a huge shock to the whole class. The instructor had a question. She wanted to know if the Lin student had this talent from birth. She still stood in doubt, wondering how he was able to surpass those she had taught. Her interest was strong and she was curious to study his success and the methods that had helped him achieve this level of skill. Perhaps there was wisdom in this experience that she herself could learn from. Would she learn his secrets? This question caught the young lord off guard. He was one who was left without talent from birth. He had studied hard and been mocked. No, this talent was not from birth. It was all achieved by sheer hard work. It was the result of hard study and constant practice. Success does not come easily, and gaining mastery takes dedication and effort. It is important to remember that every victory and achievement comes through hard work and constant improvement. By endeavoring to comprehend meditation, how many times he suffered bee stings, how many times he was beaten by a hammer and could have been eaten by bears, but he persevered. Remembering all the training in which he had reached such a high level, tears appeared in the young lord's eyes. It was unbearable for him. Everyone around him almost had their hearts stopped at the sound of his voice, and his appearance spoke of the fact that he had gone through hell. All of Lin's students' confessions left no hesitation in Teacher Yishe's mind. The guy made up for his lack of talent by putting great effort into practice, the teacher wondered. Was it because of this hard work that the assistant dean made an exception for this kid? And even if he wouldn't become the greatest mage in the future, his persistence and perseverance would be a great example for the academy. Suddenly, the teacher was overcome with consternation. Recent events made her think about her hasty conclusions and decisions. Shame for her actions enveloped her, causing her to involuntarily lower her head. In the silence of the auditorium, she began her speech, as if acknowledging her mistakes and intending to regain the student's trust and respect for her. The woman, the self-proclaimed punishing arm of the Academy's law, failed to see the perspective this time. Even those who are generally regarded as authorities or enforcers of the law can sometimes make mistakes or miss important details. It is important to learn to see the big picture in order to make more objective decisions. The teacher took off her hat and bowed before Lynn Lannister. She was wrong to ban this student from her class. Seeing this behavior of the teacher, the children around were amazed. Of course, there were other students who were able to achieve similar results. But since the guy was learning on his own, also practiced a lot in such a short period of time. The first place rightfully belongs to Lynn. Around all those who had recently discussed him began to congratulate him. Students were expressing their admiration and delight at the guy's skills. At the same time, the information window announced the successful completion of the task. The first fragment of the water dragon egg had been obtained, and 20 points of magical experience. Since the rancher had chosen a more difficult way to pass, he was given an additional reward, a teleportation array. This was all obtained because he didn't rely on dragon saliva and underwent the hardest training. The butler thought the master was wise, but the lad didn't want to leave a stain of disgrace in the place where his father had worked diligently. Besides, dragon saliva was a very valuable ingredient, and it shouldn't be used for such a simple matter. 
On the young mage's belt hung several vials with various ingredients. Picking up a vial of dragon saliva in the sun, Lynn Lannister knew what he wanted to do. He decided to exchange this saliva for the riches he so desperately needed right now. Practicing his potion brewing skill, the young mage realized that with such a rare compound, he could easily prepare the most complex potions. A single bottle of saliva could be sold for thousands of coins. Lin decided to go to the merchant tomorrow and sell his dragon. The dragon was already going crazy from its boring life in a small place. Realizing that the dragon was suffering mental anguish under such conditions could cause regret and heaviness of heart. One hopes that Lin will make a wise decision, considering the well-being of her faithful companion. The situation becomes tense. A dragon threatens to burn down the entire ranch if it is not built a nest immediately. The rancher in desperation tries to calm the animal, realizing that the ranch is not only his home. It is important to find a compromise solution that satisfies Fury and the boy. Coins needed Lin in order to buy his pet a new home, and to stop his tantrums and torment. Every time the lad came to the ranch, it was getting harder to leave in one piece. Thinking about Fury's dragon, Lin gazed dreamily out the window. The sun was already setting over the horizon, and the lad was still in the midst of his textbooks. Sitting under the tree in its shade created a sense of tranquility. In the sky, the sunset spilled out in bright colors. All the workers were already flying home on their brooms. It was already quite late, and Lynn remembered about Vivian. She should have finished her work in the library by now. The guy had promised the girl dinner. He had invited her to go after the test. After all, if she didn't give him those books, he would just fail the whole test. So the young lord got up from his seat and started to pack. There were still students in the library. Everyone was carefully studying the necessary material, and Lynn Lannister was walking around looking for a library counselor. The guy had already wandered around the various departments for a long time, but it was very strange. He didn't see Vivian anywhere. Suddenly, someone's hand rested on his shoulder. Behind him was a girl wearing a tall black hat. From under the hat, she looked very sinister. Grabbing his shoulder, she called out to the student. The boy was slightly startled, but when she raised her head and the student saw her face, she was no longer so scary, rather even cute. The girl coquettishly covered her lips with her fingers and asked if he was the student Lynn Lannister. The young lord recoiled from the girl. He was alarmed by this kind of behavior. Therefore, he asked if something was wrong. But the girl once again moved closer to the boy. She leaned her shoulder against his, as if flirting with him. Pressing her palm to her mouth, she began to whisper that she had approached him because of Vivian and told him that she was behind the school. Then she blushed slightly. After all, Vivian was about to confess something intimate to him. Such words made the young lord blush with embarrassment. It seems that some exciting event happened here where the hero escaped danger from a strange student who probably caused him strange feelings. And the girl in the hat is just having a nice laugh. Maybe she knows something the rest of us don't. She starts shoving him in the back. He shouldn't have made that face, because even if he planned to say no, he needed to do it in person. Lynn, on the other hand, balked and asked him not to shove him. Suddenly, an information window appeared. Lynn had the task princess carried by Vivian. It was necessary to become the princess carried by Vivian. The difficulty was low, and the reward, as before, was a fragment of a water dragon egg and twenty experience points. From such an abrupt appearance, Lin was shocked. He got angry at the information window and shouted about how he always appeared at the wrong time. Making a combat lunge, the guy snapped the screen into two pieces with his hand. Such strange behavior did not go unnoticed. The girl in the black robe stood and looked at the guy like he was crazy, and he didn't know how to explain his behavior. To remove the awkward situation, the blue-eyed student said that Lynn needed to hurry. After all, Vivian had promised to be there until the guy came to her. Releasing a bee from her palm, the girl said to follow her, and then the young lord would find who he was looking for. 
the lad raised his gaze upwards and followed the insect's wings. Something was bothering Lynn Lannister about this situation. Everything seemed strange to him. The girl, Vivian's behavior, and the surroundings. Perhaps there is something hidden behind the visible picture, and Lynn begins to feel something wrong. It's important now to remain vigilant and unravel the mystery that lurks beneath the surface. Rancher has only met the library counselor once, and even though their conversation was pleasant enough, it wasn't enough for recognition, and looking at it as an assignment, it felt more like a joke. The second main assignment was in progress, Princess Carried by Vivian. None of this was as simple as it seemed. While the guy on the path was contemplating this strange situation, a loud scream was heard from outside. The sound clearly indicated that someone was in danger, and it was most likely Vivian. Lynn immediately snapped out of his seat and rushed running through the alley. The path was wide enough and there were bushes instead of hedges, and a stone platform could be seen ahead. Seeing huge flying boulders on the stone arena, the young lord stopped. Magical energy was emanating from the middle of the arena, which formed a magic portal. The blue portal was accumulating more and more energy in it, expanding and becoming more powerful. This created an atmosphere of tension and expectation because such a phenomenon could lead to unpredictable consequences. What would happen next? Climbing the steps to the stone arena, the guy was asking himself questions about the purpose of this strange place within the magical academy. What awaited him at the top of this arena? Perhaps answers to his questions or new mysteries for him to uncover. May his exploration of this place bring him insight and new possibilities. The blue portal was accumulating more and more energy within itself, expanding and becoming more powerful. This creates an atmosphere of tension and expectation, for such a phenomenon can lead to unpredictable consequences. What would happen next? Standing in front of a boulder floating in the air, in the middle of which an unimaginable portal shone. Lynn reached out to it, wanting to feel and realize what it was. A notification appeared that Vivian Mason had entered it and the room was awaiting a second participant. But how could a girl be a contestant? While the guy was making the decision to enter this strange portal, there was someone hiding in the shadows behind him. And this someone possessed a dark magical energy that was ready to deal a fatal blow to the student. Studying the area, Lin was preparing to enter the portal and studied it. A strong blow of magical energy flew into his back. With tremendous force, it seemed to shove him straight, inside without giving him a chance to recollect. But who could do such a thing? Confronting the strong stream of black energy, Lin turned around. At the bottom of the stone arena on a broom was the same girl in the black hat that had sent him here. She was the one who was creating the magic blows. In flight, the guy turned around and tried to reflect the powerful stream and understand why she was doing that. But the power surpassed his strength and he flew straight into the portal. The notification showed that Lynn Lannister had entered the portal, and the witch on the broomstick began her transformation. On the back of her palm was a smile, alive and grinning with her mistress. But the girl's face was becoming masculine. It was personality-altering magic. And the man thought about how, when he was younger, he was always bullied by older students. And no one ever stood up for him. They would bring him to his knees in front of all the students and laugh at his helplessness. But Lin got into the academy through his connections, and everyone called him rubbish. This strange guy first met him in the library. But no one saw him since he was hiding behind the shelves while Vivian was protecting Lynn. The guy's eyes were crazy. He was angry at the library counselor for helping this scum. And since she was so kind, she would help him for the rest of her life. They're both going to be crazy. Lynn found himself on the other side of the portal. He ended up falling to the stone floor. And behind him, the blue portal began to fade. Lifting up on his hands, the first thing the young lord saw was a pile of stone peaks sticking out all around the perimeter of the abyss. There were no thoughts in his head. The unexpectedness and change of scenery left nothing in the lad's mind. 
After a few moments, he was brought to his senses by the quiet sobs of the girl. Hanging from the ceiling on golden chains was Vivian. She was hanging so high that her face could not be seen. The golden chains were magical, so they didn't squeeze her. They just held her in the air. And just below the hanging girl was a chasm with sharp stone peaks. At the very beginning of this scary room stood a guy who did not understand at all what was going on here. Unfortunately, the girl could not answer. There was duct tape glued on the poor guy's mouth. And after Lynn appeared, the golden chains began to burn and it seemed like they were burning her. But behind the guy, something began to appear from the portal. From a blue window, huge red eyes appeared in the air. The noise caught the young man's attention and he decided to turn around. Right behind him, a huge wolf appeared out of the portal. It was several times larger than Lynn and bared its teeth. White spikes grew on the big animal's back, and every movement of its paw brought the guy closer to the abyss with spikes. The wolf's movements were fast, a second, and it was already flying straight at the young lord with its mouth open. The portal began to burn so brightly, as if it was about to burst into flames and explode, striking all living things in the room. A huge wave of magical energy threw the lad off, and his back began to fall into the abyss. When he turned his head slightly, he saw that he was about to land on the sharp stone peaks that would pierce him through. His eyes widened with fright so much that they were about to fall out of their eye sockets. The situation demanded instant decisions, but there was no time to think about it. Lynn Lannister, thanks to a high skill of concentration, kept his balance right on the edge of the cliff. At the same time, a paw was coming at him, ready to kill him with a single blow. There was only magical energy in the room instead of air. As soon as the monster's huge paw touched the stone floor, it fell apart. A huge hole was formed at the place where the flesh came into contact, and a pile of stone shards scattered around. Meanwhile, the young lord was in the air. A split second passed, in which a lot of things changed. Looking down at the wolf who just now could have killed him with a single blow, Rancher thought to himself, how long had it been since he could jump that high? This was too sudden. His jump was like flying. He went up several dozen meters above the wolf, and the animal walked around the room and couldn't understand where its prey had gone. From above, the wolf seemed no bigger than a puppy. According to the mysterious laws of magic, something amazing happened in Moonwind Castle that day. A mage known for his skill in brewing potions had taken part in a trial that was an exciting test in the art of brewing, and now his magical abilities had increased so much. Therefore, running was no longer an option. Lin lowered himself to the ground as softly as a feather and steeled himself away from the monster. The wolf noticed the movement and turned towards his opponent. The judges could not hide their admiration as they declared the mage the winner of the test. His achievement was majestic and unique, first place for the test, which raised his level to second. The mage's powers became brighter, his knowledge deeper, and the art of potion brewing even more magnificent. The young lord took an active pose and began to concentrate his magical energy around his palm. Blue streams enveloped him, and the guy decided that with the new power, he would definitely be able to defeat this monster. The huge wolf did not hesitate and in one leap appeared next to the guy. His huge maw was ready to swallow the man, leaving no trace of him. The wolf's red eyes swept past Lin, and he managed to deflect the sharp teeth in a second. It was clear that the wolf could develop tremendous speed. Everything happened in a split second. The beast closed its jaws right over the body of the falling man. The attack was unsuccessful. Lin fell down just in time. The huge wolf moved after the young lord with incredible speed. It was hard to follow their movements around the arena. If Lin had slowed down, he would have died immediately. But the young mage's body had time to react to the changes in the wolf's movements. Their speed became equal to each other. Therefore, it was easier to deflect. The boy's reactions were faster, so Lynn Lannister's attacks would become stronger. Transforming the magical energy into fire, the guy tried to whip the wolf with it like a whip. 
He carefully watched every change in his opponent. He was able to deflect the attacks and concentrate his power to deliver his blow. And now the young lord jumped to the ceiling, releasing a strong stream of fire from his hand. The boy aimed it straight at the wolf. The accuracy of his strike was enviable. The wolf screamed in pain and his eyes were no longer so bright. Only the fire created by Lin burned brighter than its eyes. The defeated wolf fell straight onto the stone peaks. He drove over them, breaking them off. The animal was dying. The golden chains that held the girl suspended began to break. The links were breaking, and parts of them were falling into the abyss where Vivian could fall at any moment. Just a little more and the library counselor would fall right onto the sharp peaks. She was scared. She couldn't do anything. She couldn't even scream. She was about to crash to her death. Lynn Lannister saw the fall and snapped out of his seat. He stretched out his arms, wanting to protect the poor girl. He shouted as if it could save her from imminent death. But then the fall stopped. Vivian swayed again on the taut chains. But the distance between her and the abyss had shortened considerably. The girl's hair was disheveled and she was about to faint from the madness that was happening. Lynn was angry with himself. He was so busy with the battle that he completely forgot about the girl, who was in more danger than him. Here he was, protecting more than just his own life. The guy stood and looked into the abyss where the killed wolf was lying. He tried to understand why the girl had gone lower. The animal that the guy had defeated had shattered some stone peaks in its fall, but was still alive. The broken peaks had great significance in this situation. The fewer intact stone peaks that remained, the lower Vivian would fall on the golden chains. And if one destroyed all of them, the girl would fall. Grinning his teeth, the young lord tried to figure out how he could destroy the peaks and save the hostage at the same time. It was very problematic, but there had to be a solution he could help her with. Lifting his head up, the boy shouted to Vivian that she needed to wait for him. There were many people in the academy who would definitely be able to help save her. The girl hovered in silent anticipation. Her blue hair hung down as helplessly as she did. There were tears in the defenseless creature's eyes. Through the glasses, her frightened eyes seemed larger. With her whole appearance, she was begging for salvation. From her taped mouth came sounds. She wanted to say something to the young man, but she couldn't. At Lynn's sudden appearance in an unknown place through a huge blue portal, a magical beast followed him. The surrounding scenery was incredibly picturesque with bright colors and strange creatures that floated in the air. Lynn felt a sense of excitement and amazement, finding himself in this world of magic and mystery. The blue portal disappeared, flooding the area with bright light, and the unknown world revealed its secrets to both of them. They stepped forward along uncharted paths, ready to take on the challenges that fate had in store for them. So he must urgently find the gate through which he had been put here. The young lord turned in the direction from whence he had come, hoping to find a way back out. But there was only a wall in that direction. The blue portal was gone and there was no way back out. Nor was there any door that could in any way help him find his way back to the academy. Approaching the bare wall, Lin touched and examined it, hoping to find something. Could it be that they were stuck here? There wasn't the slightest hint that there was any way out of here. And then the young lord remembered the girl in the library, the one who was sweetly talking about Vivian's confession. It dawned on the boy that it was all a setup. They'd been set up. The bastard on the broomstick who'd used her magic to shove him into the portal was the same girl who'd sent him here for Vivian. She set the whole thing up. Still, yes, same bright eyes and hair, same tall black hat. It all fits. Lynn Lannister had fallen into a strange girl's trap. Leaning against the stone wall, the boy thought, what does she want all this for? How does she benefit from their deaths? Lynn struggled with the fact that he would have to let Fury out of the ranch, but he was afraid of the fact that Vivian wouldn't be able to keep it a secret. The lad hesitated in his decision as the lad stood there making important and hard decisions for himself. The animal that was to die stood on its haunches among the rocks. 
It was even darker and scarier than before. Quick jumps of the wolf, and now it was right behind the man's back. A moment more, and it would be the end. But Lin's instincts told him of movements behind him. His irritation had reached its limit, so he shouted loudly that the animal was in his way, and his eyes burned brightly, as bright as the fire he released at the wolf. Then the fiery energy was even more powerful than the first time. With his power, he lifted the animal into the air, giving it no chance to dodge or deflect the blow. The information window congratulated him for defeating the wolf phantom. Thanks to this, an experience point had been earned. Lin stood there and didn't realize which phantom the butler was talking about. Turning his head towards the blue screen, the guy decided to find out what it was talking about. But the butler pointed out that the assignment was outside the jurisdiction of the ranch, so all the information the lad needed to clarify on his own. Grabbing the blue screen, the young lord squeezed it hard. He threatened to smash it if it showed up again at such an inopportune time. The lad's anger and irritation had no limit. But Lin suddenly stopped. Something in the distance caught his attention and made him leave the information window alone. A purple blob of energy was slowly emerging from the wolf's muzzle. Rising above the animal's fur, it formed something like a ball and rose higher and higher. It was more like a soul leaving the body. The entire torso of the animal was embraced by purple streams of energy that swirled in the air and rose above the body. It was hard to believe it. So unusual it looked. The blob of energy rose straight up towards Vivian hanging from the chains. The violet orb startled the girl and came closer and closer. The library counselor tried to get further away from the incomprehensible creature. The young lord was delighted by what he saw. He was fascinated by this unimaginable display of energy. He stood and watched to see what the blob would do. And the blob of energy approached one of Vivian's broken chains and strengthened it. By doing so, the girl found herself taller than she was. Vivian was surprised by this behavior but tried not to move so as not to scare away her salvation. As they got closer to the abyss, Lynn Lannister realized each broken peak would break the chain and bring the girl closer to death, and each monster killed brings Vivian closer to the safe zone. While the boy was examining and studying the behavior of the chains, a fog was rising behind him. It grew thicker and thicker. The dense shroud rose higher and higher. Out of this fog, a monster appeared, and this time there were two of them, two huge wolves staring menacingly at the man. Their mouths were open and drool flowed down their fur. Every wolf that Lin killed would automatically split into two. It was like some kind of mechanism, and he seemed to have studied it in some manual. One day at the student house, he was studying the manual. It said that a third-year student could enter the world of trials and compete against demonic creatures. The teacher would customize the mechanism of the trial depending on the task required. But it said that once the student completed the task, he could immediately go back. But right now, two monsters were flying straight at the man ready to tear him apart. Lynn Lannister prepared to repel their attack with fire. Since he had looked at that manual with one eye, that was all the information he could remember. Since the name of those wolves was Phantom, this trial was for the seniors. But how could Lin have ended up here? The wolves were flying past him and the guy was constantly hitting them with fire. The movements in this fight were hard to follow. One person or wolves flashed here and there. In addition to the sounds of fangs, more fire blows could be seen. Lin had to properly understand the mechanism for this victory. The fist strikes with fire inflicted huge wounds on the animals, and there was blood at the sights of the blows. The wolves roared in pain. They fell and rose again. The young lord had the key to winning this battle. After killing one of the monsters, Lin stopped to watch his progress on rescuing Vivivan. She was left hanging in the same place she was. One of the wolves was still alive and the other was turning into mist. Vivian, brave and determined, stood at the edge of the arena, fully conscious, staring at the duel unfolding before her. Her heart beat in unison with each stroke of the swords, the hope of victory for the young fighter growing in her chest as the light of a new day shone through the clouds of adversity. 
She watched every movement, every intonation of the battle, for so much was at stake in this struggle for honor and glory. Vivian believed in the young man's fortitude, his skill and courage, knowing that he carried within him the spark that could ignite the flame of victory. Since there was no change for the worse in the girl, the young lord continued his battle. The monster was already behind his back and was already trying to bite off his arm. Good reaction, as always, helped the guy out. He quickly turned around and concentrated to release a huge stream of fire magic into his opponent. The fire knocked the monster back a few meters, and won again, gaining experience points for each creature killed. But the wolves quickly reappeared. For every animal killed, two were regenerated. And no sooner had Lynn Lannister finished with one, two more pairs of toothy muzzles appeared behind his back. They didn't give the man a break. One had to think very quickly. And the guy knew that with attacks at this pace, his strength and stamina wouldn't last long. A new solution had to be found. Each defeated wolf was divided into two. They couldn't be defeated by fireballs alone. The young lord stood on the edge of the abyss, surrounded by a pack of wolves, which were slowly approaching, stretching the pleasure of the cornered enemy and his fear. There was nowhere to run. One of the determined wolves began its attack. He could only rely on his memory and the abilities he had received from Fury. Besides the fireball, he had other skills that could be used. Just then, an information window appeared, listing all the available skills from the dragon, and one of them was Shield. The butler suggested importing the dragon ability, and immediately a fire shield appeared in the rancher's hands to protect him. The young lord deployed the shield that appeared so that it entered the wolf's mouth and stuck in the closed jaws. The tension was so great that it was difficult for the man to stay in one place and not fall straight into the abyss with a peak. But the force of the wolf's bite was great. It was squeezing its jaw with tremendous force. So the strength of the shield was not enough, and the fang bit through the fire shield, leaving a hole in it. The situation was critical. The guy stood on the edge of the abyss holding a weapon that was cracked. To increase his pressure and fight the man, the wolf stood up on its hind legs trying to shove him down on the pikes. The other wolves slowly came closer. Lynn Lannister used all his strength. Trying to push the wolf away from him, the shield he used was almost all the way into the animal's mouth, but the confrontation could not last forever. With one last effort, the young lord pushed the animal aside. His desire to save the girl was as great as these animals were, and there was no end to them. The wolf that had just nearly killed a man was falling into the abyss itself. His back was about to touch the stone peaks that would take this beast's life. The shield had proved useless in this struggle, and now the rancher imported his claw skill. Along the length of his arm, it appeared to be magic that resembled a dragon's paw. Lin dealt one blow after another. The claw was a powerful skill that dealt deadly blows to monsters throwing them a bladeless distance away from the person. Blood flew in different directions. Stopping for a second to catch his breath, the guy looked at his opponents. The claw, though, was a fairly powerful weapon that did a lot of damage. The main problem remained unsolved. Suddenly, an information window appeared. It congratulated the guy on his victory and indicated that he had received an experience point. But right now, Lin hadn't killed anyone. Where did he get this experience from? A purple magic ball appeared in front of the young man's face. It flew straight from the abyss. But just a short while ago, one of them had flown there. That could only mean one thing. Throwing wolves into the abyss would also cause the mechanism of this room to activate. Lin turned around and looked down. A sly grin appeared on the young lord's face although his stamina was running low and his strength was ready to leave him. Right now, he knew how to proceed. As long as the guy controlled the numbers of these huge monsters, he had nothing to fear. The man stood on the edge of the abyss, activating the fireball, and the pack of wolves, which had no end in sight, began their assault. Lynn Lannister's every blow was lit up with fire. The fireballs flew with great speed, 
But the wolves were not lagging behind. They were attacking and attacking. One of them was about to bite a human. Rancher used fire magic and claw skill at the same time. The monsters were dying one by one, and information windows flashed everywhere. Each window spoke of victory and gaining experience. The skin of the animals were burning. They fell one by one into the abyss with a wild howl and died. A mist remained in the air and the temperature in the room rose. And the reason for this was not the fire, but the active battle for life. The young man's clothes were already torn. The animals were clawing at him with their claws. He held back his hand with magical energy so as not to waste time restoring it. Looking around, he saw no one around him, which meant he didn't need to fight anymore. Thanks to magic, Vivian's chains loosened their grip and the girl flew gently straight into the arms of her savior. She fell right into the young man's arms. Her tension was so great that she clung to him, not believing in her salvation. The guy, on the other hand, was confident. He smiled and hugged the girl he had saved. Could it really be over? When their excitement let go, the young men crouched down on the ground. Lynn Lannister was still clutching Vivivan's shoulders tightly as she tried to come to her senses. They had finished the test and they should be teleported out of here soon. But something was wrong. The room came into motion and the space around the people began to change. The changes taking place made them turn around and look at what awaited them. Instead of a chasm with stone peaks, a staircase began to appear. The steep stairs led deep down and the dungeon was covered in a green mist. The hiking challenge didn't end there. Lynn Lannister and Vivian sat on the stone floor in front of the stairs leading down. The girl had gathered her magic in her hands and was treating the young man. She bowed her head and apologized as there was nothing she could do to help her savior after being tied up. Her face was covered with tears. She lifted her glasses up and wiped her tears. Because of her rescue, the young man had been hurt and that made her very sad. While the tears were flowing, she couldn't look at her companion. Lynn looked at the girl sitting across from her and smiled. She was very fond of apologizing. Wanting to reassure Vivian, the guy put his palm on her head and stroked it. Vivian raised her eyes gratefully to the young lord. He kept telling her about not blaming herself, especially since she had helped him so much earlier. Yes, and right now both people needed to be saved. Lynn thought about the fact that, after freeing the girl from the chains, they would be able to get out of this training world. He didn't think at all about the fact that there would be another stage here. Standing in front of the stairs, the guy dared to take the first step towards the new challenge. The guy turned around and turned to the girl. She had been at the academy longer than him. Maybe she has information about the training worlds. His gaze was serious. Vivian bowed her head again and apologized to the student Lynn. The training worlds were only for advanced students. Therefore, she had no useful information for them. Leaning closer to the girl's face, the guy smiled. She apologized to him again. She needed to relax. There was no point in blaming herself. Vivian wanted to apologize again, but stopped herself in time and said that it wouldn't happen again. Since they didn't know any further, there was only hope that they could cope in the next stage. Lynn had recently killed a lot of wolves, so there was more danger ahead of them. Holding out his hand to the girl who was frozen in place, the guy promised to protect her and asked her not to worry. This behavior surprised Vivivan sitting on the ground very much. The young lord wanted to take the girl's hand in his palm, but it scared her a lot. She raised her hand and asked the student to stop these movements. Lynn was surprised at this behavior. The girl, who had experienced the power and excitement of battle, made a decision. For the next stage, she wanted to be by the young man's side in their fight together. Her heart was filled with determination and confidence that together they could make it through whatever trials lay ahead of them. She decided to support him, to be his ally on his path to victory and glory. Courage and devotion resounded in her decision. She was willing to go through fire and water to be by the side of the one who mattered most to her. Her magical energy was green in color. 
Taking her staff, she opened it up and let it out. Lynn stood mesmerized by the given change in the girl, but from such a sudden noise, bats appeared in the distance. The sound of their wings traveled far away in the huge cave and caught Vivian's attention. As soon as the girl saw these flying creatures, she was frightened and hid behind Lynn Lannister's back. Not a trace of her fighting spirit was left. The guy snapped his fingers and burned those creatures that scared his battle mate. After the bats disappeared from the horizon, the young lord turned to the girl and questioned if she was definitely ready to fight him as an equal. His smile hid his real feelings, but the girl was uncomfortable with such behavior. The young men walked down a long and steep staircase. Lynn was carrying a torch in his hand and Vivian was holding on to his other hand. There was a dense fog around them which impaired visibility. It was dark all around. One false step and they would fall into the abyss. The young lord raised his palm with the fire higher and asked the girl if she could feel that the fog was starting to clear a little at a time. Vivian looked at the lad as if he were a hero. She admired the hardness and confidence in his face. Listening to her senses, the girl realized that the fog was actually getting smaller. Also, some strange sound was heard behind the bottom. Vivian tried to look back but she was too scared. As soon as her green eyes looked back, they got bigger with fear. Her face changed. Something terrible was happening behind her. Both people turned around and saw that the staircase they were walking on was completely destroyed. Vivian's feet were standing on the edge of the cliff. There was no going back anymore. Lynn Lannister quickly grabbed the girl's hand and shouted loudly to her that it was time to run, but the girl froze in place from fright. It was difficult for her to look away from what was happening. Young people were descending the stairs with great speed, and the staircase collapsed immediately at the place where their feet were. The path was only forwards, and behind was a collapsing void. But the stairs were collapsing faster than they were moving, and at one point there was only air under the young men's feet. They began to fall. Lin had no other choice, and he made a very difficult decision. Falling into the abyss, the young lord called the butler and asked to summon fury. The girl clung to Lynn very tightly, but suddenly the guy heard her whisper, which soon turned into a scream. She was shouting that she was calling out to the great winds. She called herself their servant and asked them to grant her wings. In the blink of an eye, the situation changed. The girl was already holding Lynn in her arms and her magic changed its shape and became green wings so huge that they could carry them far away. Lying in Vivivan's arms, Lin looked at her with admiration. He couldn't believe that the girl possessed amazing wind magic. The girl's green eyes glistened with pleasure. Carrying the young man in her arms, the girl felt the pleasant wind in her hair. She had trained for two whole years to reach this level. While Lin and Vivian were flying, an information window appeared. It congratulated the Lord for completing the task Princess carried by Vivian. That's how it happened that Lynn was not only rescued, but also helped to complete a system assignment. The guy owed the girl very much. Also, the rancher reached the third level of his magical power. And at the moment Fury is only interested in his new habitat, he did not get the dragon magic improvement. But the dragon didn't seem to care about that at all. That was the end of the young men's flight of wind magic. They found themselves at the bottom. Lynn stepped on solid ground while the girl smoothly descended through the air. They were dazzled by the light from the shimmering stones. The explanation came quickly. As soon as a person touches the stones, they begin to glow. This was the intention of humans. Ahead of the students was a road of bricks. It was lit by torches. Since there was no way back, but was blocked with stones because of the collapse of the stairs, it was left to go forward and look for a way out. Up ahead, Vivian saw a portal. A bright light was coming from it. The girl was very happy and pulled the boy forward. Now, this was all that alarmed Lynn. The brick road was completely flat. No obstacles and it was a short walk to the portal. Illuminated not only by its magic, but also by burning torches, the view of the portal was mesmerizing. Vivian asked Lynn's student about the possibility of going out right away. The corpses of wolves lay on the crumbling rocks. 
they had not been resurrected, and the path to the portal looked safe. Looking around, Lin voiced that whoever had devised this task for them would not let them leave the training room so easily. Taking a small pebble in his hands, Lin began to toss it. The young man asked the girl to move out of the way, and she hid behind his back. The guy wanted to check something out. Lin threw the pebble so that it flew over the bricks of the road and hit them. So the young lord decided to check if there were any hidden traps hidden here. The stone hit the bricks in different places and flew further and further away. And when it hit another brick in the passage, it moved. Like a key, the brick moved down and lighted up slightly. Above the portal was a statue of a kitten. From touching one of the bricks, the diamond in her forehead lit up and a red beam shot out of it. This beam aimed straight at the students. Lin knew that it would and grabbed Vivivin tightly, and they started to run away from that fire. Just a little more and the red beam would hit them. Running out of the brick road, the young people fell to the ground. The girl shouted the guy's name loudly and looked to the side. Without noticing the girl's gaze, Lin muttered to her. Not to worry, he was fine. The girl's hands were burning from the prolonged contact with the stones. She tried to heal them with her magic, and Lin reasoned that the touch of the stone had activated the trap. But then why was the beam not shooting at the stone, but aiming directly at the young man? Suddenly, the kitten statue began to crack and the portal shrank slightly. This strange behavior of the object startled the lovely Vivivivin. They both looked at what was happening but didn't want to believe their eyes. The statue had turned into a living wolfman who was stretching as if from sleep. There were tears in his eyes. He was crying as if he had been hurt, but the red diamond was still on his head. Lin compared this wolfie to his dragon fury. He looked just like him. Vivian, on the other hand, was fascinated by the sight of this little white animal. But this wolf cub was not simple. When he opened his eyes, he showed all his anger. His eyes were as red as the eyes of the monsters up there. Red magical energy began to spread around him from his scream. The sound was deafening. The young man needed to get far away to stay conscious. Gathering the rest of their strength, they covered their ears with their hands and started to get further away from the portal, and the wolf cub kept screaming. The red streams of his sound traveled further into the room. The dead wolves that lay on the fallen stones absorbed the energy with their bodies. The more streams there were, the faster they rose on the stones. They rose from the dead and prepared to destroy their opponents. Standing at one of the walls, Vivian said something that was clear. The wolfman raised the huge brothers with his curve. Guy, standing in front of the girl, tried to protect her from the approaching pack of animals. Baring his teeth, Lynn Lannister looked at the animal that sat above the portal. Since it could resurrect these monsters, then the key to the exit was also here. The white wolf cub calmed down and no longer screamed. He had accomplished his mission. Applying his dragon magic, Lin used the claw to defeat the rebellious beasts. The wolves bled from his swift blows, but their red eyes weren't going to fade. They were advancing, Lin swore. The dead wolves were immediately resurrected. A guy alone wouldn't be able to deal with a wolf cub while he was being attacked by a pack of wolves he hadn't killed the first time. As the young lord fought the oncoming monsters, he noticed the girl's movements behind him. Vivian began to summon wind magic once again. She asked for help and to turn her staff into a sharp blade to defeat the monsters. Green streams of magical energy lifted her into the air and turned her staff into the weapon she needed. The girl stood right in front of the wolf cub who covered her eyes. She pointed her staff directly at him, and her wind magic power Wu aimed straight at the diamond to destroy it. Lin admired his companion's strength and skill. After a while, Vivian leaned on her staff tiredly, her face flushed with exertion. The student turned round to her and supported her. He thought she was a fine mage. The girl smiled tiredly at such a compliment. But the wolf cub only grew angry at this attack. With a growl, he summoned a defense spell that stopped the green energy flow right in front of his face, and it spread out right in front of the screen that appeared. 
The young men were amazed and puzzled by what was happening. How was this possible? How was the creature able to block such a powerful flow of magic that they had thought was insurmountable? They debated possible outcomes, their minds soaring for answers to the riddle they were about to solve. Was it possible that the creature had powers beyond their comprehension, or was it the result of a subtle game of intrigue and magical tricks? Lynn and Vivian stood motionless, their gazes filled with surprise and disbelief. Their heads were filled with only one thought. This was impossible. How could this happen? The events had unfolded too quickly and unexpectedly, leaving behind only emptiness and confusion. Holding her staff in her hands, Vivian trembled. Her fear came out when she saw the shield that her magic could not penetrate. Once upon a time, a long time ago, a little girl was brought into the city by the military on horseback. People stood and stared at her. She was the only survivor of a huge merchant fleet. Only one little girl survived. She was riding a horse. Her clothes were torn, and she was all torn up. On the way, the fleet encountered a huge level eight demonic creature. The escort group couldn't even penetrate its shield. When reinforcements arrived, they only found the child in a mountain of corpses. The girl's staff was lowered and barely glowed. She kept repeating that they wouldn't be able to defeat him. There was a tremor in her voice and only the same words, We can't defeat him. We can't defeat him. Vivian fell to the ground and grabbed her head. She was shivering and screaming that their level was not enough to defeat the monster. The girl was being covered in hysteria. While Lynn Lannister was fighting a pack of vicious wolves, the girl sat helplessly. In her head was spinning only the thought that they would die. The boy shouted. He tried to pull the girl out of the oblivion that covered her, but she didn't hear him. Interrupting the words of doom with his scream, Lynn tried to bring her to her senses. They're not going to die. There is always a way out, and they would find it. He fought and didn't believe they would die here like this. Fire magic came into play. Lynn used claw and fireballs. The wolves moved very fast, but the guy was not lagging behind either. Everything swirled in a dance of fire and blood. He shouted, trying to convey his thoughts to the girl. In the past, a huge monster, a level eight green water monster, stood in front of the little girl, threatening her life. This snake stuck out its poisonous tongue, anticipating the sweetness of human life. A picture of the past appeared in front of her eyes. Little Vivian was sitting on the ground, covered in blood. In front of her stood a warrior with a sword in his hands. He was holding on with his last strength and saying the same words that Lynn was saying now. This man standing in front of the huge monster was also telling her not to be afraid. He was by her side and would not let anyone harm her. Vivian sat there trembling. She couldn't stand her inner pressure. She had promised herself that she would never hide behind someone else's back again. What was she doing now? Is she really going to watch the one who protects her die again? Clutching her staff tightly in her hands, she watched Lynn Lannister fight for their lives. Even if she died in this battle, she would never be the same again. She would not allow herself to be. The girl got up from her seat and ran into the thick of the battle. She swung her staff and screamed. She would never hide behind other people's backs again. In an instant, the girl came running towards the guy. She unleashed the full magical power of her staff on the wolf that was trying to bite Lynn. A little more and she would have hit the guy himself. He stepped aside and looked at his companion in surprise. Vivian's face was burning with rage. She clutched her staff tightly in her hands, while the other wolves paused, slowing down from the girl's sudden attack. Lynn looked at her and didn't understand why she was using physical attacks. But she apologized again. She had used all her magical energy, and now she could only fight like this. But Lynn asked her not to apologize anymore. He looked at the portal, and he already knew how to deal with the wolf cub and its shield thanks to the girl. The girl looked in the direction Lynn was looking in surprise. The young lord created a fireball on his palm. He asked his companion about wanting to use the fireball to give her a way to cordon off the wolves. She needed to hold them back for 30 seconds. 
the girl looking at the monsters promised to try her best. Gathering all his magical energy in his palm, Lynn Lannister gathered all his will into a fist. His plan must work to save them. All around the man, everything was burning with fire. A fireball burst out of the young man's palm in a huge stream. The pressure of magical energy instantly set the wolves on fire, throwing them several meters into the air. The girl with the staff was on the ready to attack. The burning wolves tumbled around the brick road. Vivian rushed forward, fending off the attacks of the surviving animals. Lynn Lannister jumped high and headed straight for the portal. Everything happened in a split second. While the guy hovered above the portal holding onto the stone wall with one hand, there was a fierce battle going on below. Vivian rushed forward, driving the wolves on their way. Everything was flashing with fire and blood, and the portal was getting closer and closer. Since the wolf cub was able to reflect magical energy, Lin would have to use physical strength. The guy swung his fist and was about to strike directly at the blue shield that the white beast was trying to defend itself with. At the same time, the little lord realized that defeat or failure in a certain attack was only a temporary stopgap on the road to victory. He must learn a lesson from this experience, reconsider his approach and prepare for new challenges with even greater diligence and perseverance. The whole beginning happened as if in slow motion. Time seemed to stop. Lin was hanging on one arm holding onto the stone wall. The other was clenched into a fist and swung high above the wolf cub that was surrounded by a shield. The animal, mouth wide open, was showing its readiness for defense. Its evil intentions were clear and it was persistently trying to reinforce its shield with energy, preparing for the upcoming confrontation. The wolf cub's eyes glowed with fire, reflecting his anger and determination. This animal may have been forced to resort to aggressive defense because of the threat that lurked beneath him. Its instincts of defense and survival took over, forcing it to summon all its strength and energy to preserve itself and its environment. Lin's fist struck directly into the center of the protective shield. For a moment, fear appeared in the animal's eyes. Cracks appeared on the blue shield. Removing his fist from the protective shield, the young lord was pleased with himself. Shards of the shield were falling, and blood was coming out of the guy's palm. He had succeeded in breaking through the shield. Lin now had no doubts about his strategy. He had a second wind, and he struck one after another. His fist moved with great speed, and it was impossible to follow the movements of his hand. And below... Vivian was waving her staff to ward off a pack of wolves. The sharp, spiked animals on her back stood ready to repel an attack from above, but they had to fear the movements of the girl, who, despite her size, was very accurate. And so the last blow pierced the shield. It shattered into hundreds of shards. The young man's fist flew straight into the animal's face. Opening his palm, Lynn Lannister began to gather his fiery energy around his fingers, and the wolf cub folded his ears. He was scared, and he whimpered like a small child. Summoning an instant fireball, the young lord released it directly at the pup. The stream of magic pushed him off the wall, and he flew down. Because of the fire, one couldn't see what was happening to the white wolf cub. The magical animal, embodying its power and mystery, disappeared under the wave of fire, stunning the dusk watcher with its majestic fall. Its scream pierced the night air, filling it with fear and painful anxiety. Sadly, but inevitably, the fall of this magical creature left its mark on the hearts of all those who had been at the origin of this magical incident. But the fall was inevitable. Lynn Lannister was pleased with himself, he had succeeded in destroying the portal guardian. That meant he had won this fight, and they would soon be able to escape from this trap. Descending from the wall with the portal, the boy looked down. He searched with his eyes for Vivian, who, with his victory, should have been fine. But the girl was standing near the wall, surrounded by a pack of wolves ready to tear her apart at any moment. The wolves were closing in on the girl, but their bodies began to turn into mist. 
Their bones were bare and the animals themselves were screaming in unseen pain. The girl still stood in a defensive posture displaying her staff. She was ready to strike at any moment. As Lynn Lannister flew down, an information window appeared. It informed the rancher that he had defeated the boss and earned ten experience points. The guy had obtained the title of Wolf King, and now he could summon and bend the wolves to his will. It also turned out that Lynn had learnt the Fire Fist skill as a level three mage on his own, and received the Beginner to Master Award. The guy's landing was soft thanks to his magic power. Vivian ran and called out to Lynn. The wolves had disappeared. The girl was so happy and called out to look at her find. Her happy face had a smile on it. Pointing directly at the blue portal, she pronounced the fact that it was the most real one. The portal was calmer now than when the young man had entered the training class. Both young men stood in front of the blue portal. They scrutinized the blue door in front of them. Lynn Lannister held out his palm to see if it was true, and Vivian stood hoping to return home. The young man gingerly touched his fingers to the portal. No movement occurred. His fingers sank gently into the blue smoothness of the door. For some reason, Vivian couldn't take her gaze off the student. Only now that things had calmed down did she notice that his body was all scarred. His clothes were torn and in the dirt. Wounds and abrasions were all over his body. But he stood there, so strong and brave and smiling. The happy man mouthed the same feelings now from touching the blue surface that he had when he entered the cave. Vivian apologizes again. She again asks the student Lynn for forgiveness. The surprised young man took his gaze away from the portal. He didn't understand why he was hearing those words this time, and Vivian was already sobbing. She clenched her small palms into fists and lowered her gaze. Her voice trembled and little drops of tears were hailing down her cheeks. If she had been more helpful, he would not have been hurt. The young lord abruptly interrupted the girl's heartbreaking speech and drew her attention to the fact that she had apologized again. The girl stopped talking abruptly and the hail of tears stopped. She began to stammer. After all, there was an apology to be made here. Lynn Lannister took the girl's hand in his palm. There were only scratches on it and she had nothing to worry about. This kind of behavior caused the girl to feel unimaginable. She had never experienced such calmness from those words before. The guy smiled broadly and walked straight inside the portal. He beckoned Vivian to walk with him. He really wanted to see the sky beside her. The girl obediently followed the student. She looked at him with her huge turquoise eyes. Lynn seemed to bewitch Vivian with his calmness and good-naturedness. Now the girl was ready to follow him anywhere. Coming out of the portal, the young people heard solemn shouts. They were congratulating Lynn Lannister and Vivian Mason on passing the test. Vivian had received a B level and Lynn an A+. Their results would be sent out shortly. Stepping out of the portal, the young lord felt a strange lightness in his body. Examining himself, he noticed that his wounds were gone. Vivian regarded the young man in the same surprised manner, but she was glad he was in one piece. At first, the rancher thought that it was the butler who had furtively cured him, but then he studied the student handbook and learned that there were two ways to leave the training room. The first is to pass through it, and the second is to die. But students need not worry. The test world was a complex illusion. Everything that happened there did not reflect on the student's real existence. While Lynn Lannister was trying to regain consciousness, Cute Vic was reading him the student manual. Although the pain he felt inside the room was real, he came out of there without a scratch. The boy cried at not being able to read this book earlier, but the student was happy that he was able to fight his way out of there. If he had been bitten by wolves in reality, it would have been much more painful. Such words frightened the little elf girl. The next day within the walls of the institution, the students were whispering about what had happened the previous night. They were talking about a student who had entered the academy through connections and had passed the third-year student test without any talent. But many people didn't believe it. 
Such a small student can't pass the test. But it was all set up by a senior student who set the trial in motion. Lynn passed the test and even got an A plus mark. After that, the teacher suspected that there was a mistake during the placement test. So they allowed him to take the test again. So the young lord found himself in the audience in front of the academy's top teachers passing the magic ball test. This test was watched by the students of the Truth Union, and the new results amazed them to the core. Everyone stood with their mouths open and watched. Everyone was shocked at the second touch. They couldn't believe their eyes that his mastery of the fire element had reached an intermediate level. It became a mockery to them. The students whispered that his abilities were lower level before, and it was impossible. Since the Academy's founding, the leadership had never made a mistake in the tests. How could there be two completely different results in such a short time? While all the members of the Truth Union were watching what was happening, the assistant dean sat with a disgruntled face and listened to what they were talking about. The students thought about the fact that the assistant had only settled here because of this guy. Twice intermediate level would he really be able to pass the fifth test. Everything seemed very suspicious to the students. Many were now praising him and apologizing. Suddenly, the assistant dean snapped out of his seat and shouted, Stop! He was sick of listening to the ramblings of the students. These teenagers were acting like idiots. He looked obliquely at those who couldn't calm down. Turning away from his students, he leaned on his arm. He thought about what had happened with the new student and how it was turning out now. Frightened by this behavior of the aide, the students became quiet and whispered behind his back. Since classes were almost over, the students needed to prepare for patrol. Putting on his purple robe, the assistant dean walked out of the classroom. He decided to find a way on his own, a way to see for himself the abilities of Lynn Lannister. There was no way this petty student could be as good as everyone was saying now. The assistant dean's face was covered in a shadow of doubt. Adjusting his clothes, he prepared a plan. At this time, the young lord was afraid of something and clutched the bag of vials tightly to his chest, which contained the potion he had worked so hard to make. But the sudden shivering sensation passed quickly. But the lad couldn't stop thinking about why he felt it. Behind the market stall, a man was calling out to Lynn and asking him not to leave. He was telling the guy that he was willing to bargain more if he thought the price for potions was too low. Lynn woke up from his thoughts and apologized to the man. He apologized because of his thoughtfulness. He was being offered 2,000 gold coins for 15 bottles of potions. To him, that was a lot of money. But to the merchant, his potions were of high quality, and he held out a mountain of gold coins, asking the guy to accept them. Lynn's eyes widened at such money. Satisfied, Lynn piled the moments into a sack and happily headed home. The merchant waved at him and asked him to come back again. He would gladly buy back the rest of the potions from him. But right now, Lynn was overjoyed with the money he had earned, and he didn't think about further potion production and sales just yet. Clenching a single coin in his fist, the young lord considered that he was doing well now. He didn't think that he would still be in such great need of money in the near future. Leaving the market, Lynn Lannister thought about his beast. The dragon had waited for a very long time, and now the master would return to him and fulfill his wish. When the young lord arrived at the ranch, he saw his disgruntled dragon sitting on a small rock that used to be a volcano but Lynn would make him a new shelter now. After the improvement, a huge volcano spread out before the eyes of beast and man. It was taller and larger than two living things, and fury came to marvel at it. The stone house and boiling lava looked marvelous. Fury jumped straight into the volcano's mouth like a little kid. This was his new big house. Folding his arms across his chest, Lynn confirmed that he hadn't lied to his pet. Yes, Fury was pleased. He loved his human very much right now. But suddenly the dragon released fire from its mouth right into the human. The guy got scared and started running away. How can you show your love like that? The dragon was embarrassed. He apologized because it wasn't on purpose. It just happened. 
Suddenly, an information window appeared above the dragon and the human. It congratulated the rancher for upgrading the dragon's nest to a medium level. Five magic experience and 200 gold were gained. A new area, Dragon Training Ground, was opened. The butler asked if they would like to move there now. Lynn and Fury's eyes lit up with interest. The human training ground was seen as a dragon's playground for entertainment, and Fury burned with a great desire to get there. Turning to his pet, the young lord suggested he go and see what was there. The dragon cheerfully supported his decision. Lynn snapped his fingers and asked the butler to move them there. As the dragon and human moved along the blue corridor, the boy thought about what the place would look like. Maybe there would be a place where a dangerous flying course was possible. Among high black cliffs and with huge wind currents, which would give the impression of a dangerous and exciting course that requires not only courage, but also skill in control. Or maybe they will find themselves in the arena of ferocious battles, where high magic level opponents would be waiting for them, and the dragon would spew its flames at them. Lin thought about the fact that in any case, this arena would be bigger than his small training room, and the dragon looked at the human. He clearly didn't desire such a room, but they found themselves in the middle of the magical ocean on a metal platform. It was very unstable and swayed with every movement. Putting a hand to his face, the man became frustrated. What would they even be able to do on a small piece of land? In vain, he had hoped for something, and the dragon was angry. He thought he was being bullied. The butler asked to be patient. The more tasks the rancher did, the bigger the place would get. And after completing all the quests, he would be able to open the Divine Dragon Arena. The dragon and human stared intently at the screen. What was this arena? The butler asked for the first training task. A dragon stick was lowered into the young man's hands. The task was to wave this stick a thousand times. Taking this stick as bait, the man was frightened. The dragon's face changed dramatically upon hearing the sound of the bells. He began to watch and listen. It was a new sound and object to him. As soon as the man made the movement heard, the dragon became like a kitten. Pressing his front paws and muzzle to the ground, his eyes widened and glittered. He was ready to jump on this toy. He liked it. Lin, on the other hand, didn't like it at all. He thought it was a cat toy. Letting the stick out of his hands because the full weight of the dragon had descended on it, the man argued with the butler. Did he really think that by changing one word in the name that it would completely change the purpose of the item? The dragon was happy to catch the toy. While Fury was enjoying this stick bait, Lin grabbed the information window and started shaking it. He demanded to be given a bigger task. The man's screams caught the animal's attention. Little Fury's eyes filled with tears upon hearing the man's words. He tore himself away from his toy. The dragon was upset by what Lin was saying. He turned away and quietly said the man's name. Lin stopped in his efforts to destroy the information window and looked at his pet. The sad dragon sat with its back to the young lord. Its head and wings hung limply. Fury had said that if a person didn't want to play with it, there was nothing wrong with it. And then Lin remembered his little self, sitting in his room all alone among the toys. He wondered every time his daddy would come and play with him. The man's eyes filled with the bitterness of the memories. Is this baby dragon sad? Apparently so, for he was the only dragon on the ranch. Lin understood Fury's feelings more than anyone else. Every time the young lord appeared at the ranch, he was always in a hurry. That was most likely why the butler had given him such a task. Lin turned around and looked at the toy lying there. Fury was sad. The young lord took the toy in his hands and shook it to attract the dragon's attention. Fury turned around a little wary and looked at it. He wanted to play, but in a way that the man wouldn't get away. Lannister swung the stick, a decoy, and decided he would consider this play with a child. The satisfied dragon got up and started running after the toy. There was no limit to the animal's joy. It ran after the toy wanting to catch it. The information window constantly updated the progress of waving the stick, bait. 
The satisfied dragon ran, jumped, and crouched in his game. Joyful shouts flooded the entire playground. The swings were 687 out of a thousand, and Lynn Lannister's waters were already sitting tiredly on the floor of the training ground. He was thinking about the fact that this training was not for the dragon, but for him. His arms ached from swinging that huge toy, and he was already tired, and the dragon asked him to swing harder and faster. And so, when there was only one single swing of the stick, the bait for the task, the dragon changed. His gaze became predatory, and he himself as if he increased in several times and stood over his man frightening him. The man stood there and couldn't move. He didn't realize what was happening. And then Fury flew up to him and grabbed the toy with his teeth. The progress was complete. A thousand swings were made. Lin held the stick tightly trying not to let go, but the dragon's grip was stronger. The butler congratulated the rancher for completing the task. Fury learned a new skill, dragon fear. Behind Lin, the dragon was happily waving its tail, happily devouring a toy. The young lord looked at his pet. The question in his mind was, how could the dragon learn such a skill from simply playing with a stick? But the butler hurriedly explained to him, since the rancher has reached the third level, he is able to learn a skill like dragon fear. This skill paralyzes all magical creatures of a rank lower than the owner. The young lord also has the ability to paralyze a creature of a higher rank. The more he will have a difference in magic with the enemy, the longer this skill will be in effect. That is, in the game and Lin was able to learn this skill. Since the first task was completed, there was a new training task. A stone passageway appeared from their arena to another arena. But the limit for today had already been exhausted and they needed to return next time. Lin and Fury looked at the new ground and listened carefully to the butler's words. So the information window wasn't lying about the area expanding after each completed task. There was so much space here, and Lin wondered when he would be able to open the Divine Dragon Arena. The guy was looking at the huge water space around him. The dragon was happy. He wanted to come back here again, and the human had promised him that. They would come back and play here some more. Plopping his pet on the ground, the young lord began stroking his belly, promising to play with him more often from now on. Fury was angry at the man's cavalier behavior, so he got to his feet and threw his master's tail far into the sky. He wasn't allowed to stroke his pet's belly. As Lin flew away, he talked about how he only wanted to play with him. The next month of school passed without incident. Teacher Yishe kept her promise and allowed the student to attend her classes, and he finally learnt the mysterious magic he had only heard about in passing. Lin's classmates became more friendly, and those who at first humiliated him began to call him Big Brother. Everyone smiled at him, and no one kicked him out of the classroom anymore. The butler also sat quite quietly and didn't bother him. The young lord thought he could finish the term quietly enough, but he didn't think that helping Vivian clean the library would reveal something strange. As he approached the curtains on the wall with all his weapons, he immediately realized there was something behind them. There was a magical aura on the high wall behind the tattered curtains. The wall was scribbled with huge blue symbols. Lin pulled back the curtain to appreciate the scale of the energy that he had discovered. The realization that he had sensed his father's magical energy quickly came into his head. Taking off the blindfold that protected him from the dust, he quickly approached the wall wanting to touch it. Suddenly the symbols on the wall glowed brighter, and the room began a sweat of magical energy swirling all around him. The power that was contained in the wall seemed incredible. Lynn Lannister found himself in a completely different place. That energy teleported him behind the wall, and this place was incredible. What the young lord saw horrified him. In the middle of the room that the magical energy had transported him to, there was a dragon skeleton hanging on golden chains. The golden chains glowed, holding the huge bones to itself. It seemed as if the dragon was alive. Slightly frightened by what he saw, 
the man stepped back to the wall of symbols. For at first it seemed to him that the dragon before him was alive, but in front of him were only its remains. Lynn Lannister didn't understand why the dragon bones were in the academy and why his father's magic could be felt so strongly here. Being in this place, many questions arose in the lad's mind that had no answers. An information window appeared above the young man. The main task of the water dragon, the last wish of the sleeping dragon. The condition of fulfillment was to break the chains on the dragon and help it shift. The difficulty was medium. The rewards were two dragon egg shards and magical experience. This was Lin's first task of medium difficulty. Was it really only necessary to break the chains? Creating then fire energy in his palm, the young lord decided to at least give it a try. The dragon, releasing a stream of fire directly into the chains, began the process of destroying the shackles on its skeleton. It was most likely an ancient creature that had probably been subjugated or imprisoned, but was now being freed by its own power. Fascinated by the power and wild beauty of this creature, one can imagine the chains splitting and the shackles flying in different directions under the fire and power of the dragon. But the links of the chain were completely consumed by the fire. There wasn't a single flaw on them after this attack. Of course, Lin couldn't melt them. That would be too easy. Therefore, the young man moved closer to his goal. He needed to first find out what these chains were made of. Therefore, moving cautiously, he walked past the dangling links. Walking closer and closer to the skeleton, Lin stepped on the magic circle created on the floor and activated it. The skeleton's eyes lit up with blue energy and the dragon's remains came into motion. The huge bones rose upwards, wanting to fly, and the man froze in place with fear. This skeleton had become a ghost. The bones flew straight at the man wanting to destroy him. In an attempt to save himself, Lin wanted to create a magical shield in front of him, but with one claw strike, the dragon shattered them into shards. Getting as close to the man as possible, the dragon reached out its paw to the man sitting on the floor and touched him. The chains prevented him from getting any closer. The dragon's claw was long and sharp, gleaming like a sharpened knife. Its edge touched Lynn Lannister's neck. One sloppy movement and the man's skin would turn red in color. The young man was glad that the chains restricted this dragon's movements and prevented it from getting close to the man. But that meant that if Lynn tore them, he would die. When the guy put the logical chain together, he was furious. The butler tried to calm his master down. He would never hurt him. Suddenly, Lynn heard a whisper. At first, this whisper was unfamiliar to him. But then he began to understand it. It was a voice calling for his child. The young lord began to listen and realize that it was the language of dragons. The dragon was struggling in its chains. It wanted to break free. The animal was asking for someone to give him his child back. Lin was surprised that the remains were talking, but that only drew his attention to the imprisoned animal. Could it be that Lin could understand the language of dragons thanks to the butler? Meanwhile, the bones of the huge dragon were crying. They were begging for his child to be returned to him. The young man watched the animal carefully. He asked the butler whether it was true that it could not move because its skin and flesh had been stripped off before it died. But the butler replied that the answer was outside the rancher's jurisdiction and he had to find the answer on his own. These words made the rancher angry. Why does he keep telling him the same thing every time? Lin swearing at the butler called him completely useless. But calming down, he decided to find answers to his questions. Looking at the bones once more, he was convinced that he could understand the dragon language. He wondered if a dragon could understand humans and establish rapport with them. Smiling at his hypothesis, Lynn Lannister moved closer to the mighty creature, exploring the boundaries between myth and reality. Dragons, magical creatures with incredible wisdom and intelligence, may have the ability to understand and empathize with humans, sensing their intentions and emotions. The young lord's encounter with the dragon becomes a test of sorts for both parties. 
a test of faith in the power of mutual connection between different worlds. But the dragon didn't seem to understand him, or maybe he just didn't listen because he was preoccupied with his grief. Pressing his paws to his muzzle, he wept for his child. Even bones can look noticed when the soul is suffering, Lin shouted. He asked why the dragon was locked here. He pleaded to tell him something, and then maybe he could help the poor animal. But the dragon raised its maw upwards and roared even louder. He was only screaming one thing. He was asking for his child to be returned to him. With every movement of the animal, the golden chains glowed brighter, and the eyes still burned with blue flames. His soul was suffering. This behavior did not suit the young lord at all. Apparently, talking to the animal will not work at all, and it is necessary to look for another way to solve this task. Lynn Lannister decided to look around the room. He hoped to find something useful here. Around him there were cabinets with books and a table where a man was sitting. Walking over to the table, the boy picked up the grimoire. Wiping the dust off it, he saw that it was untitled. But he decided to look through it anyway in case there would be something useful for him. When the young man opened the book, a pink stream of magical energy began to pour out of it, as if it embodied the power and beauty of the knowledge stored in those pages. The young man's gaze could not tear himself away from this amazing sight, for the doors to a world of magic and possibilities that he could only imagine in his wildest dreams were opening before him. What emerged from this magic made him look closer. Out of the energy came memories. An elderly mage in a tall hat was talking to someone. He was addressing Zoe Alfred, the boy's father. The conversation was about some research. And if they didn't talk about it soon, their work would definitely go down in history. Before Lynn stood the memories of Uncle Oliver and his father, the young lord began leafing through the book. After all, the place he was in must have been their laboratory. From the rapid movement of the pages, streams of energy came out faster and completely surrounded the young man. But all the pages of the book were blank. The only thing there was energy which enveloped each page and traveled to the man's hands. Closing it, he looked at the cover. It looked a lot like the book that had helped the guy awaken the dragon ranch. Was it really the result of his father and Uncle Oliver's experiments? Thoughts came into his mind that the evil dragons should be exterminated. Then the whisper of a dragon reappeared and drew Lin's attention away from the book. The dragon, wrapped in golden chains, cried out in pain in his soul, he was still begging everyone to bring back his child. The sight was horrifying and made the blood run cold. The young man's pensive eyes thought about the fact that his father was against these experiments. Maybe Zoe Alfred had let the dragons go so that they wouldn't fall into the hands of human monsters. But then, Lynn's father must have been opposed to Uncle Oliver. The uncle talked to the boy all the time. He was saying that something was happening to his father. And once Lynn reached the rank of sage, Oliver promised to tell him how to clear his family's name. Why would Mr. Oliver want to help the boy? All thoughts jumbled in the boy's head. He needed to stop thinking about it now. There was nothing he could prove right now. After all, in this room there is only an empty grimoire left by someone unknown. Right now, Lynn didn't have any clues. The young lord walked towards the wall through which he had traveled here. He needed to find more information, so he decided to return to the academy. He would definitely find out more there. But after completing the task, walking back, the guy beckoned the girl to the wall. He asked her to put her hands on it and tell him if she felt anything. Yes, she only felt the cobwebs that Lynn hadn't removed from there. That was clearly not what the guy expected to hear. Giving a task to a fellow student who called him Big Brother, the one appeared happy on the doorstep that he was able to help his classmate. But there was no news. He asked around and there were no dragon legends in the academy. These words upset Lin. So he traveled further and decided to check with Teacher Yishe for the information he needed. He asked if the academy had conducted any experiments on dragons. Yisha, a focused and attentive teacher, looked carefully at her student. Something in his sudden question made her uneasy. 
making her think and analyze the situation. The teacher's gaze was perceptive, as if she was trying to penetrate the very depths of her student's thoughts and feelings to understand and decipher the true meaning of his words. Dragons were fearless creatures. Why would humans bring them to the academy, and why did the student have such questions? Without answering anything intelligible to Lin, the teacher herself bombarded him with questions. But her facial expression was hiding something. Yishi advised the boy that instead of asking such silly questions, he could focus on his studies, considering his impressive score in the last test. The academy had decided to give him an extra test before the last exams. If Lin passed it, he could skip two years of schooling. He would be allowed to enter the entrance to the Tower of Magical Tests. The test he passed was just a mock-up based on the Tower Test. It would be the most difficult test in the entire academy. The teacher's words caused Lynn Lannister to be terrified. The magical tower test the young lord was being asked to enter was the magnum opus of the head dean of Gladstone, the only sage mage at the academy. There were many dangerous traps and terrible demons lurking there, and each floor became more difficult. The level of the monsters got higher and the traps got trickier. Not many students were allowed to enter this tower, but those who performed well in the trials received many different awards. May the King's Medal of Valor always be a reminder of fortitude, steadfastness, and willingness to stand up for truth and justice, being a symbol of true heroes and defenders. Lynn Lannister had heard of the Medal of Honor, but he didn't seem to understand what it had to do with it. Turns out every time the tower is opened, King Ornid comes, and the king personally presents the medal, and students who receive the medal have the same rights as professors at the academy and have access to the imperial library. The teacher gave her student a sly look and said that maybe in this library he would get information that couldn't be found in the academy. The boy looked at Yisha carefully. It seemed to him that the teacher had just hinted to him where the answers to his questions could be found. The student's gaze was full of curiosity and determination to decipher the clues he picked up in Yish's words and gestures, information that could not be found in the academy. There in this library, he would uncover the secrets that were revealed to him outside the walls of the library at the academy. Lin quickly agreed to the extra challenge, so he decided to ask the teacher how it was going. Yishi admired the young student and his determination. In this additional trial, Yishi's teacher had to be defeated. The woman stood up from her seat and was happy to say that. Kayeshia Lin didn't particularly like the idea of fighting a teacher, especially considering the fact that she was a level 6 mage. Lin was annoyed. He felt like he was being laughed at. A rank 3 student should defeat a rank 6 teacher? Yes. It was easier to say that he would never be allowed into the tower, but there was a condition. During the battle, the teacher would suppress his powers to be of the same level as him. She wasn't going to bully him. Lin gratefully exhaled, however. He would have preferred to receive this information sooner. Teacher Yishe firmly squeezed the young man's shoulder, wanting to support him. This movement was so unusual that Lin was confused. When Yishe had said that she would wait for him to enter the competition, her face had only expressed kindness and support. She really wanted him to show his full strength and even win this competition. Immediately, an information window appeared. The main task of the Water Dragon Egg, gain admission to the tower. The conditions were to defeat Teacher Yishe without using dragon magic. The difficulty of the task was low. But what scared Lin was that dragon magic couldn't be used. Rank 3 against rank 3 looked residually fair. But teacher Yi Shi could use the kind of magic that was inaccessible to Lin. Especially she specialized in water magic, which was the complete opposite of his fire magic. But the opposite of the elements wasn't the only problem. Mastery also has an impact. So Lin's only chance to win was to learn something new, something the instructor wouldn't expect him to learn, so he could resist her magic. The young lord was busy actively preparing for the competition. 
The butler presented the young man with a book that became an active aid in learning fire magic. There were many spells for summoning the uncharted for the lad, and he with the book in his hands began to study spells new to him. But blindly learning was not enough. Therefore, in active training he was helped by fury. At first the dragon was proud of the fact that he constantly defeated his man, and it seemed to Lin that with every training session the dragon was trying to kill him. More combat experience was needed, and the training continued. Eventually Lin was able to learn how to deflect his dragon's attacks, and Fury was getting pissed off that he couldn't hit a human. It was difficult to train every day, but the young lord could feel his body getting stronger and his magical abilities increasing. Also, his relationship with the dragon had reached a new level. Fury was happy, and that made Lin very happy. While the young man's days flew by in training, the day of the competition had imperceptibly arrived. The students in the stands were whispering about Lin, how this guy had reached the third level in half a semester and still managed to go to battle with his teacher. Not a single freshman had managed to enter the tower yet. No one believed that Lin with an average level of talent could become the best. The guy sitting next to Vivivivin was saying that he was waiting for this student to lose so that he could go prepare for the tower. But Vivivin holding the corgi student in his arms started to shout. How can he talk about Lin like that? He's gorgeous. And corgi promised to wash his hair against the growth if the guy loses. Lin Lannister stood in the arena, and teacher Yishi stood across from him. They heralded the start of the contest. The teacher reminded that whoever gets hit by magic first, and whoever leaves the circle first, will lose. Lin began to gather fire energy around him and recited the spell, O oh fire, hear my call. And the teacher hardly changed and asked the water to dance for her. They began their battle. The young lord used the technique of multiple fireballs. Everything around him became burning. The teacher used the multiple water ball technique. With just one movement, water suddenly appeared around the woman, giving the impression of a mysterious and amazing atmosphere. This technique breathtakingly demonstrated the skill and power of controlling the elements. The water balls hitting the fireballs instantly extinguished them, but the water balls were much more numerous. Lin was constantly dodging the teacher's attacks. After all, she had created twice as many outfits as him. As expected of a rank six mage, even though she suppressed her powers, she was still quite strong. Yishe was calm. She had asked student Lin not to give up so quickly and had already started using her new water magic. She started using the fierce silver snake skill the moment Lin jumped high into the air to deflect the attack. The guy's business was not going well. But Lynn Lannister was not confused. He had something to answer the instructor with, and he used the Ring of Fire skill. Descending to the ground from his hand, a stream of fire came out, forming a fire tunnel, and the water snake passing through the long fire tunnel vaporized without reaching its goal. The teacher was surprised that the student used the Ring of Fire to vaporize the water spell. It was a delightful thing to do. But the water was already too close. Lin couldn't delay any longer. Despite the fact that Lin's understandings and control of the elements were deeper than his peers, the teacher had something to say to him. What would he do if faced with a force in a fight that knowledge would not help? And teacher Yisha summoned a tide of rank three. Everything around him was covered by the water. But it turned out that the young lord had something to answer for. And to counter the water tide, he gathered his strength and summoned a third-rank fire spring. A huge torrent of fire rushed out. Neither element was inferior to the other. They fought and competed, but at the same time, their dance radiated beauty and extraordinary interaction. This duel of natural elements showed the strength, resilience, and grace of their essences until the last moment. But in an instant, water began to increase its power and fire was quickly returning to its master. The fiery lava began to diminish, a little more and the water would reach the student. Yishe was focused. She was telling the student Lin that continuing the battle would not be the smartest decision. She was ready to continue the fight and win. 
But the guy wasn't going to give up. His eyes burned brighter than his magic. He had something to show for it. But Lin's spring of fire was quickly repelled. How did he even think of fighting his teacher as an equal? The water stream approached his disciple, but met fierce resistance. The young lord was determined. He needed a victory to enter the tower. Therefore, he put all his magical power into this strike. The teacher's eyes widened in surprise. Lin had controlled the flow of fire, and the water column was unable to put out the fire. Even though there was more water, the guy could easily control it. The teacher was amazed at how skillfully he could control the fire element. Fireballs were already gathering around her. Thanks to teacher Yisha, he had time to prepare the necessary spell to win. Oh, fiery spirits wandering between the earth and the heavens, please answer my prayers. Lin read his spell, gathering fire magic energy around him. Let the meteor shower begin. As Lin finished his spell, a huge hail of fire rained down from the sky, which flew straight at the teacher. Not only had student Lin managed to reach the third rank, but he had also learnt the meteor shower spell, which was almost impossible for a mage of his level. He had exceeded teacher Yisha's expectations. The woman stood under the meteor shower and smiled. When the meteor fire collapse happened, Vivian jumped up from her rostrum and shouted Lin's victory. The girl was happy to see that, and the other students couldn't believe in any way that a guy was able to defeat Teacher Yisha. Lynn Lannister stood proudly and looked forwards. He was calm and didn't hear anything around him. He was only watching his opponent. Teacher Yishu created an illusion of a night bloom. Raised in the air around her was water that prevented the fire from reaching her. The woman was very powerful. There was even a living fish in her magic. This illusion was as if it was alive. It was as if the person was in a real river. Some students said that in order to use such magic, one had to make a contract with a water spirit. It could be used as a shield, but at the core of this magic was teleportation. Mania could both reflect and transport the river to the battlefield. Lin stood there and didn't understand. The level of this magic was already clearly beyond level three. The teacher stammered a little. She didn't realize if she was already at rank three or not, or if she just wanted to cheat a little. She lowered her eyes and made a comment about how the student had better think about how he would fight back. The spell is almost ready, and when the preparation is done, water magic will engulf the entire arena. A powerful stream of water magic began to form between Teacher Yisha's palms. It was aimed directly at her opponent and threatened to blow away everything in its path. Lin had not expected such an outcome. He opened his mouth in surprise. Even though there wasn't much time left, he was simply stunned by what was happening now. A huge water stream began to approach the young man. The river was in the middle of the arena and its waves were about to sweep away the standing young man. Lin began to remember what the students in the arena had said. They had said that her spell was capable of reflecting magic directly into the river. The magic would be useless, just like a wolf cub's shield. And it's only immune to magic. Since things are going the wrong way, the guy has no other choice. Jumping high, he flew straight at his teacher, clenching his fist and gathering all his magic there. The teacher saw the young man's movements and the fire in his hands. But she did not expect that Lynn Lannister could guess her cunning so quickly. And now the young lord had already pierced the shield behind which the teacher was hiding with his fist. It was as if Yishe was drowning in the depths of his magic. He flew through the shards of the spell and read his own. He summoned fire magic energy and made it dance as fiercely as a serpent. Tongues of flame like snakes wriggled and approached the falling teacher Yisha. She watched this magic admiringly but did not try to reflect it. As the flames got closer, she used the waterfall spell. Her rage along with the water flew straight at her opponent, wanting to wash him away in a flood. And the water magic extinguished all the fire washing away Lin's student in its path. He was swallowed up by this powerful stream and was washed straight to the stands. The students who were supporting Lin were terrified. How could this happen? He had won. 
Why was he now sitting at the back of the arena all wet from the teacher's magic? Did he really lose? But instructor Yishe stopped the student's torment. She announced that she had lost. A surprised Lin rising ground turned round to look at the woman. She was the one who had broken the one-level battle rule to win. During the duel, she had unknowingly perceived him as her real opponent. Lynn Lannister couldn't believe such a confession from his instructor. He looked at her and didn't know what to answer, and Yishe was very eager to find out what kind of terrifying power her student would acquire in the future. As the teacher left the arena, the information window congratulated the young master on his victory. Just a little more, and his level would increase. Standing on the platform was the king of the empire, Oren Levi III. He was surrounded by his knights and was watching what was happening. Lin stood among the many students and was worried. His holiness had indeed arrived. Everyone in the circle whispered excitedly. The king began his speech. He spoke of how the students would soon enter the Tower of Trials. They were not only the elite of the academy, but they were also the future of the empire. A medal of valor would be given to whoever passed the test first. The king's aide opened the box that contained the medal. It glowed with a purple light and attracted everyone's attention. Raising his hand up, the king announced the start of the test. He asked all the students to show what they could do. A huge number of young people shouted, Hooray! and raised their hands in the air. At the entrance to the tower stood a caretaker. Instead of a door, there was a portal. The students were allowed to enter it one by one. The girl in front of Lynn turned to him. She didn't think that a third-rank mage would be allowed to enter the tower. Apparently, Teacher Yishi had taken pity on him. The guy behind Lin, on the other hand, stepped in his defense. He was a reporter and covered that battle. And Lin Lannister proved himself. That's why the student council is spreading unwarranted rumors. But the girl wasn't reassured by this. What if Lin had bribed the reporter? The other students tried to calm them down. There was no need to start a fight right in front of the tower entrance. When everyone calmed down again and lined up, Lin covered his eyes in embarrassment. The girl with pink hair that stood at the end was scrutinizing the young man. The blonde girl with long hair still couldn't believe Lin. She thought that he had fooled everyone, but it would be over in the tower. He wouldn't be able to lie there. After all, the president of the council had already told everyone that he would personally test Lynn Lannister's medal. She said it so quietly that only the person she was addressing could hear. Meanwhile, their turn had already come. The young lord opened his eyes in surprise. Augustine is the name of their president. Seeing Lynn's puzzled face, the girl laughed. She thought about the fact that the guy was already scared. Lynn remembered that with Augustine, there was a task that needed to be completed. But would he be able to defeat the president of the Truth Council right now? When defeating this student, an additional task in the Tower of Trials would open up. But the difficulty of this task was high. It was the kind he hadn't done yet. Suddenly, a notification appeared that the additional challenge had not been completed. The information window advised against starting the Tower battle but Lin thought that he had completed the preliminary test. Wouldn't there be any other tasks in the tower? While the student was holding discussions with his butler, the others had already entered. He was the last one left, and the guard motioned for him to enter. The portal burned in anticipation of the last participant. Standing in front of the burning entrance to the Tower of Trials, the young lord gathered his strength. He was ready to begin the trial, but would he have the strength to win? All the students had already entered, and Lin had entered. What he saw made him doubt that he had entered the Tower of Trials. Compared to what was in the training room, this was a completely different world. He was now on the ground floor of the tower. The forest that the guy moved into really did look like a place for nobles. Before entering the tower, the teacher handed the young lord a map. It was a magical parchment that he was now holding in his hands. But the lad wasn't looking at the map, but at the area around him, so much so he was surprised by this place. The tower had a total of nine floors. Each red dot was guarded by a magical creature. On the ground floor, 
There were quite a few points to move to other floors. Lin ran towards his goal. On the way, not only could they eliminate magical creatures, but also students. It also counted for victory. But right now, the guy didn't know the strength of his opponents. So he decided to move further away from the nearest teleportation point. While Lin was moving, he had time to use his skills. He used multiple ball technique, ring of fire, fireball. The information window congratulated him for defeating a level three magical creature. Lin got to the third floor fast enough and the level of the magical creatures matched the floor. The guy was slightly shaken and looked around to continue his journey. Stepping into the magic circle that was the window for teleportation, Lin realized that he would now be on the fourth floor and the magical creatures would be of the fourth level. The further he traveled, the less often he encountered teleportation points, and the chances of encountering other participants increased. Lin covered his eyes in anticipation of moving. Once on the fourth floor of the tower, he looked around. He was no longer in a sunny forest. It was more like a volcano. He should have been more careful. Behind one of the stones stood a man. He was hidden behind the cloth and shadows of the place, but he was clearly waiting for Lin. He was holding a vial of some kind of potion. The king stood on his platform and looked at the Tower of Trials. In the real world, the sun was shining and said nothing about the difficulties the students were currently experiencing. Even though His Highness comes here every year, what goes on inside the tower cannot be seen from the outside. The pensive Yishe kept a close eye on the tower. They could only watch the movements of the students by the tower lamp and she was watching the student Lin who was on the fourth floor of this dangerous building. The woman was nervous. Every change in the lamp made her more and more tense. Fourth floor. The tower was divided into nine floors in total. On the ground floors, one simply had to move upwards. At this stage, not many people would leave. From the fourth to the sixth floor were floors with tasks. Those who fulfill them will go further and the last three floors were mechanical floors. The students had to defeat magical monsters from level 7 to level 9, and that was well above their own. Teams, betrayals, battles for places. Only ten people would make it to the end. It could be said that the real tower starts from the fourth floor. Yishe looked up at the top of the tower and thought about how far Lin would be able to go. Each floor had its own information windows. On them, it was stated that the conditions for completing the task was to get a thousand points before all the critters were killed. But killing students would take away a thousand points. There were 782 monsters left out of 1,000. The students were all 100 people. So there were 10 monsters for every student. There shouldn't have been a problem with students killing more than they needed to. Someone would definitely not get enough points and would drop out. Lin decided that he had to get ahead of everyone else. As the guy set off, he was closely followed by the man behind the stone block. He was looking for the moment for his attack, and this was his chance. Without stepping out of the shadow of the rock, he threw a vial of pink liquid directly at Lin's student. Out of the corner of his eye, the running student noticed the object flying straight at his back, and shot his fireball at it. The bubble shattered before reaching its target. Lin covered his mouth against the horrible smell. He looked at the man in the shadows and didn't understand why the man was trying to kill him. Killing a student would take away a thousand shackles. But the guy didn't have time to mess with him, so he decided to leave. Stepping out of the shadows, the student smiled. Even if the vial didn't reach its goal, the mission was accomplished. This potion had left a mark on the young man, and now it was easy to track him down. Now this cunning plan had been executed. Lin was running, and all the students could follow him. But most importantly, they could outrun him and leave no chance for victory. And his enemy, one of the students of the truth community, would only scoff at this. Ten minutes earlier, studying the fourth floor's information window, Augustine said that it was best not to fight amongst themselves on this level, and they should wait for Lin on the fifth floor. The students of the truth community listened attentively to their commander. 
The red-haired student didn't understand why he would go so far to compete with Lin. Did the commander really have enough time for this? If the president needed a rival, the guy was willing to continue his candidacy for the competition. He was already at rank four, and he had enough strength to stand up to his president. President Augustine turned around to the red-haired member of his community and looked at him carefully. He didn't like this kind of activity from the guy. He was too weak for such a competition voiced Avu Stun and turned away. The other members of the community just laughed at the student. But the president promised that if Lin had less points than him on the fourth floor, Avustin would get into a fight with him on the fifth floor. So the boy decided not to let Lin get a single point. A formidable shout echoed throughout the perimeter. Lin reached one of the magical creatures. It was a level four stone rhinoceros. Its tusk consisted of burning lava. The guy decided to hide behind the stone after studying his target. This time, he managed to get ahead of everyone and decided to use instant fireball magic. But before he could fire, Lin saw the rhino being defeated by another student. That one used wind blade, binding and shooting water balls. It was impossible to follow the mage's movements. From the active battle, it was impossible to see who it was. The young lord was confused. This was the tenth monster in a row. As soon as he found a magic monster, someone would immediately attack him. It couldn't be a mere coincidence. The young lord didn't have much time left. Out of the thousand monsters, there were only 89 monsters left, and he had yet to earn a single point to move to the fifth floor. While he was running around looking for monsters, he heard someone's voice. It caught his attention, so the guy slowed down his run. The students of the truth community were bragging about their achievements. They had already earned thousands of points each and had managed to threaten Lynn Lannister. They considered themselves lucky. If they continued like this, they would gain enough points and Lynn wouldn't. The young lord was hiding behind a rock, eavesdropping on the conversations of the crafty students. Suddenly, one of the students was grabbed by his clothes. It was so unexpected that there was no time to fend off this attack. The student Alan was attacked by Lynn and knocked him to the ground. His fellow students stood there with their mouths open. No one had expected such behavior from a young man, and Lynn was interested in what they were saying about chasing him. He wanted to know what it meant. He was angrier than ever. Preparing for the attack, the members of the truth community began to prepare their magic. To them, Lynn Lannister was mad to attack an entire team alone. They'd beat him in no time. But Lannister wasn't afraid of them at all. Still continuing to hold one of the students, he reminded them that if they wanted to lose a thousand points each, they could safely attack him. These words stopped the young men. They had completely forgotten about the condition of attacking students on this floor. They began to stutter and back away. Holding on to the student's clothes, Lin said that it was fine if he didn't tell him anything. In any case, the young lord would no longer have time to earn enough points. Therefore, he offered to give the guy a duel. His smile looked threatening in this situation, but the boy begged him not to do that. After all, he himself had barely earned the required number of points. Covering his face with his hands, he told the student Siren had told them to watch out. If they didn't help him, he would break all their bones after leaving the tower. But who was this Siren? No one knew what Lin had done to him. But since Lin was busy looking for monsters, he didn't look up at all and didn't notice anything. The students told him to raise his head and look up. Above Lin's head was a glowing sign that indicated his location. Now it was clear why absolutely everyone was ahead of him. It was despicable. Now the young lord understood. The guy who threw the vial of potion at him. It was red gunpowder. It was at that moment that he was tagged. Thirty-six monsters out of a thousand remained. Despite all the stipulations, the members of the truth community laughed at the fact that Lin was already in no hurry to go anywhere. Even if they didn't interfere with him, there was no way he would already be able to gain the required number of points. Lin released a stream of fire at the mark. From his anger, it was so great that it frightened the student lying on the ground. But nothing happened to the mark. Even from the powerful flow of magic, it was still above him. It wasn't worth wasting energy. This mark couldn't be dispelled. 
But why? Meanwhile, student Siren was standing there laughing. As long as that mark was in place, his men would always be one step ahead. After all, he had warned that he wouldn't leave him a single point. Lin could forget about his victory. But something like lightning struck the student, and he opened his eyes wide with surprise. The mark abruptly disappeared from its previous place. Saren couldn't believe that the guy could move at such a tremendous speed. Lin was running so fast, but there was only one monster out of a thousand left. He wouldn't be able to make it in time. No matter how hard he tried, the other students were always one step ahead of him because of the damn mark. Even if he found it, he still wouldn't have enough points to advance to the next level. Out of sheer frustration, Lin pounded on the stone fence so hard that it cracked and lava poured out. Suddenly, a strange sound was heard nearby. It caught the young man's attention and he raised his gaze in the direction of the movement. One of the monsters had been killed. Its dead body rose in the air like a piece of fluff after the impact. The pink-haired girl who hadn't tried to fight against Lynn Lannister after killing her last monster was happy that she had gained the necessary thousand points to advance to the next level, and the young lord kept running in search of that very monster and his victory. But so far, all his attempts were empty. The number of monsters kept decreasing. There were only two monsters left to defeat, and now there was only one left. A screen flashed in front of Lynn Lannister's face. It was the fourth floor's information window. It indicated that there was only one monster left. The hopeless counterattack order was being activated. The young lord smashed the stone mountain standing beside him with anger, and lava flowed out from there. But the information window didn't stop talking. There was something that would help get to the next floor. Whoever defeats the last monster will receive a golden orb. When activated, the orb would randomly give between 0 and 999 points. There was one hour to complete the task. Those with insufficient points needed to actively participate in the task. This news made Lynn Lannister so happy that he didn't even think about the fact that he still might not have enough points. But this was a great chance for him to level up in front of him. He still had a chance to win. Gathering all his strength into a fist, he rushed to find the last monster, not even thinking that his mark was still with him. This monster was too good at hiding and was hard to find. Lin used all his skills, but it wasn't enough. The teacher who was overseeing the task said that it was hopeless, and he'd better head to the teleport in the sea note and rest. In the middle of the high mountains of lava stood the center teleport ion circle of the fourth floor of the trials. Around it, torches were burning in anticipation of the battle participants. The girl who was laughing before entering the tower above Lin was talking to the president. She thought that Siren had gone too far. He's using dirty methods against the newcomer, and that could ruin the face of the council. But the president didn't think so. Only the strongest survived in the tower. And if Lin Lannister can't handle Siren's little pawn... Then he shouldn't be given a second of President Augustine's precious time at all. The guy turned away from where the Lynn student was conducting his search for the magic monster. There were only 15 minutes left. Time was running out and so was the young lord's strength. He was tired and his whole body was saying that he couldn't fight anymore. With his last breath, he asked the butler to use his title, Wolf King. The skill that Lin obtained after fighting the white wolf cub in the fifth realm of the trials can summon packs of wolves as well as subdue them to his will. Wolves with burning eyes appeared near the young master. They had to find a rank four fire monster. He ordered the wolf pack to find this monster for him. Like obedient trained dogs, they scattered in different directions in search of their prey. The students who were chasing Lin were frightened. They couldn't understand where the wolves had come from on the fourth floor, but they guessed that someone had summoned them here. The students in red robes talked about how there was no one in their class who could summon so many wolves. The girl assumed that it was the tower who decided to help them and give them such a clue since they had little time left to find the last monster. Lin stood and looked at the students who were trying to use his wolves for their own purposes. One of the guys named Woj Notice that the wolves had found something, and whoever got there first would win this fight. 
The young lord was calm. He ordered the butler to use an item, a teleportation array. He would not let those who had so unfairly bypassed him in the beginning win. Fire magic and blue symbols swirled in the air. The portal that Lin had summoned was ready to be used. Behind the young lord, a student appeared. He also stood in the shadows and laughed. He thought the guy was a fool since he was using such an expensive item as a teleportation array here. The voice that Lin heard made him stop. Had someone come to the right place before Lin did? Around the guy, there were still remnants of the fire magic after traveling. He looked behind his back. There stood the very same siren, the one who had placed the mark on the young lord. The student was smiling. He was satisfied with his joke. Lin didn't like that he wasn't alone here. Had Siren already killed the last monster? They stood opposite each other, unwilling to give up. Siren spread his hands apart. He said not to worry. When the wolves came running in and howled, the guy was already here. Therefore, Lin, even with the help of the wolves, was already a latecomer. Especially if these animals were to be believed, the last monster was in the volcano's vent. A pack of wolves stood on the edge of the cliff and looked down. They howled long, announcing to their master that they had found prey. Just then, the rest of the students appeared. It wasn't surprising that no one could find this monster. It was too well hidden. Everyone was saying that it wasn't worth looking for at all. The volcano would now begin its eruption and some students would no longer be able to pass the test this year. The lava in the volcano was rising to the surface. While Lin was looking down, Siren kept mocking him. He was saying that the kids should just accept it. In war, all means are good. And just because people use deceptive means to achieve their goals, it's not a bad thing. For a newbie like Lin, it was a great experience. He was quickly able to see the rotten human nature. In this situation, did Lin Lannister really have to thank the student who showed with his brazen ploy, the whole underside of the human soul. Siren turned to his opponent. With a sly smile on his face, he asked if he was not happy about this arrangement. But Lin didn't answer him. The student from the truth community only saw a cloak that quickly disappeared into the volcano's vent. This caused the standing man to be terrified. Lin Lannister couldn't lose like this. There were two minutes left until the end of the trial and fear already had no place in the guy's mind, so he didn't hesitate to fly straight into the boiling lava. As the young lord flew down, the waves of lava tried to burn him, but he remembered that he shouldn't be injured if he died in this tower. Therefore, he must try. As he flew down, Lin smashed the rocks that came his way with his fists. The lower the guy got, the hotter it got. He was already soaking wet. If he wasn't immune to fire magic thanks to fury, his lungs would have burned up long ago. When Lynn Lannister almost reached the lava, something stopped him. It was as if arms of thread were clawing at him, preventing him from falling lower. The boy was startled as they pulled him upwards, and so the young lord found himself inside a huge web that hung over the boiling lake of lava. The thickness of the threads was comparable to that of a rope. The lad's whole body was glued to the surface and restrained his movements. He tried to tear his hands off the sticky tape, but its surface adhered strongly to the surface of his clothes and prevented him from freeing himself. Yes, there was no doubt that he was trapped in the web. And the last monster that was in the vent of the volcano was already looming over its victim. Dozens of red eyes burned over the young man's face. There was no escape. It was a huge fire spider. It itself was like a living part of the volcano moving on the webbed young man. It was so huge that the man was a small insect against it. Unable to contain his emotions, the boy screamed that this monster was going to eat him, starting to gather fiery energy in his palms. Lynn Lannister made the decision to burn the web. Since his movements were limited, he had to turn his head towards his palm every time to increase the power of the magic strike. But all attempts to burn the web were in vain. The fire did not do any damage to the web, but the spider was already approaching, so slow to savor the torment of its prey. Time was running out. A sudden blow to the leg. 
one of the monster's paws pierced through the young man's limb. This attack was so sudden that the realization of the pain did not come at once. It was when the adrenaline let go that Lynn Lannister screamed. He was pierced as if by a sharp sword, and the pain was insane. After a few seconds, an information window pops up. It tells about the monster. In front of the rancher was a rank four phantom fire spider. This monster always sits in the crater of a volcano. The golden spider's web is fireproof. Even the volcano can't burn it. The spider likes to torture its victims until they lose the ability to resist and then eats them afterwards. The young lord's face turned blue with pain. He was certainly grateful to the butler, but this information would have come in handy a little earlier, before meeting this monster. And so a second sharp blow followed. This time the golden spider pierced Lynn Lannister's palm. How sharp its paws were, and how fast it moved. Sweat, whether from the heat or the pain, covered the student's face. He was distracted and missed the blow. But even if he was stuck in the web now and his magic couldn't help him remove it, he could still use magic. The guy started to recite a spell. Oh, fiery spirits that roam between heaven and earth, answer my call. The young lord's cry echoed throughout the depths of the crater. Without letting the boy speak, three spider paws pierced the man's body at once. Both shoulders and side were wounded. The young man's clothes were soaked with blood. But the blows were not fatal. They only wanted to torture the man with pain. Gathering the rest of his strength, he screamed, putting all his pain into this call. He begged the spirits to rain down a meteor shower. Huge drops of fire fell directly on the golden spider and the little lord. The stone spider began to burn brighter along with its web. It was the reign of death. The spider was cunning. Its stone shell served as a solid defense against any attack. Therefore, he hid all his vulnerable limbs there. The young man screamed with anger. How dare this monster hide? Trying to fight Lynn Lannister with all his might tearing his arms and legs. If he wasn't glued to the web, he would have been able to hit this monster and break its shell. But he was too tightly bound. Time was inexorably advancing. There was only one minute left until the end of the competition. Something had to be done immediately. Red eyes were burning from inside the shell. They were staring at their victim, waiting for the meteor shower to end. And the guy thought about the fact that it looked like he wasn't up to the task. Lynn Lannister noticed that the shell couldn't completely hide this monster. He could see its eyes. The lad decided to use a fiery spring and drill a path to destroy the spider. Releasing his hand from the web as much as possible, Lynn began to recite an incantation. He called for the fire gods to hear his call and dance. Fire was a flexible, burning spring emanating from the palm of the mage's hand. Now there was no telling what would come first the end of the contest, or the eruption of the volcano. The lava beneath the web rose higher and higher. Its heat began to blind the young man's eyes. The spider sat on the edge of its trap and waited. Right out of its shell, the golden spider released its weapon. Like a sharp blade, it flew straight at the man. The spider web covered the young lord's mouth. It would be much harder to use magic now. After all, a voice was needed to activate spells. The end was inevitable. The information window once again voiced out information. The golden spider is very fond of devouring its victims baked in lava. That's why it sits in the depths of the volcano. But the butler, as always, was late with his information. The boy's eyes became insane. The time of his demise was approaching. If the volcano hadn't started erupting, he might have won. But now that he was completely restrained, defeat was inevitable. The golden spider pulled its head out of its shell and roared menacingly. Thousands of fangs were covered in saliva in anticipation of a meal. The students of the truth community were already standing far away from the volcano at a safe distance when the eruption occurred. A powerful torrent of boiling lava rushed out. No one could have survived such a thing. The students stood and watched, realizing what had happened. Siren was happy. Just as he said, a brainless guy like Lynn Lannister couldn't be a worthy opponent for President Augustine. 
Augustine's own facial expression was completely emotionless. The red-haired student cheerfully strode towards the portal to move to the next floor. He was excited to do battle with the president, but the latter stopped him. They couldn't move to the floor above yet. There were 45 seconds left until the end of the mission. Until it was over, no one could leave the fourth floor. The president stood waiting for the last task to be completed. Siren was overconfident. Nothing could happen in those few seconds. No one could survive a volcanic eruption. No one but him. Lynn Lannister's fist flew straight into the golden spider's face. Thirty seconds remained until the end of the challenge. The monster's teeth scattered from the impact. The young lord stood in the middle of the erupting volcano. The information window congratulated him on reaching the new level, Lava Bath. Thanks to the immunity of fire magic, the man's body withstood the effects of the lava and became as strong as Fury's fire. The guy's body had changed beyond recognition. It was like a wall of stone. The level of resistance to fire would increase with the dragon's level. Lin would no longer be able to be hit by normal physical attacks. Examining his body, the guy noticed that all the wounds on his body had disappeared. But while the volcano was erupting, there was less and less time left. Rancher looked unusual, but he still had four more seconds to win. As Lin found the golden spider in the stream of fire, the score was getting smaller. The monster tried to run away from its strange prey. And so, there was one second left until the end of the contest. Lynn Lannister shouted his incantation, praying to dance fire fiercely. A fiery lava rose up in the air and destroyed the golden spider with a strong stream. At the time, the young lord was destroying the monster. The student standing in safety rejoiced at Lynn's mediocrity. He couldn't pass the test, and anyone who thought otherwise were complete idiots. President Augustine covered his eyes and asked Rayner to shut up. It was as if he felt that this wasn't the end. He was trying to use all his senses to find out the truth. When the president turned away from the volcano, the students started shouting and pointing their hands to the sky. There was something moving towards the crowd. Augustine stopped his move. The president of the truth community tried to push away what seemed impossible. Still, he turned to see where the other students were pointing. Lynn Lannister's huge mark shone in the sky, and it was approaching the crowd of students faster and faster. Was the guy really still alive? A wave of excitement passed in the whispers of the students. Reiner was annoyed. What difference did it make to this student or not? Is he alive or dead? And the other students saw Lynn alive and well approaching them. On a vacant patch of land, a young lord landed from the sky. In his hands was a golden orb. Before he could stand up, he apologized to Master Saren, and the crowd gasped in surprise. The prize orb was in the hands of Lynn Lannister, and the man, unashamed of his nakedness, stretched his hand with the orb forward in full view of whoever doubted him. The member of the Community of Truth turned to his opponent and opened his mouth at the sight of the prize ball in the hands of the one he hated with all his soul. All the students stared at the balloon, some admired it, and there were those who couldn't believe their eyes. A blonde girl from the truth community asked skeptically how many points the balloon gave. Of course, the Lynn student would reveal the balloon in front of everyone. But first, he needed clothes. His clothes had been burned in the lava during the battle with the golden spider. It was only now that people noticed the guy standing completely naked in front of everyone. Behind a huge rock, Lynn changed his clothes and thanked his companion for her help. She stood nearby and was glad that she was able to help. Her reduction potion was working perfectly. Thanks to it, she could carry a lot of other things with her. As she got closer to the guy, she told him that she had been watching him before he entered the tower. She had heard him referred to as a genius who could compare to Augustine. Lynn listened to her attentively. The girl, extending her hand to the guy, introduced herself. Her name was Dia. Smiling, she offered to team up with him if he could make it to the next floor. Something about Dia's face made Lynn Lannister very surprised. She was a senior student, but that wide smile of hers was very similar to Vivian's. 
Was it really just a very similar cute girl? Dia watched the young man's face carefully waiting for his answer. The blonde student was quickly at the young lord's feet. He squeezed the boy's leg and called him brother. He wanted to be a member of his team, too. There would be rank five monsters on the next floor, and he couldn't handle them alone. Alan made huge eyes and became like a puppy in his pleading. He was talking about how he had been tricked by the villains on this floor that wanted to harm Lynn, so he would definitely be useful on the next floor. Lynn Lannister tried to remove the Alan who was clinging to him from his leg, but the latter clung on tightly and begged him to take him with him. Dia watched this kindergarten and did not interfere. While the boys were trying to find common ground, someone turned to the young lord. The voice that approached said that it was a little early for Lynn to go up to the next floor. Siren approached the team. He was talking about how if he was lucky enough to kill the monster, the prize ball might not give him 400 points and he would be out of this competition. The young men were starting to get nervous in the presence of this student. The young gentleman immediately became serious. The prize ball burned gold in his hands, urging him to open it. Dia and Alan were also saying that it was time to do so. Taking the prize ball in both palms, Lin closed his eyes and concentrated. He tried to calm his excitement for the opening. Dia and Alan stood praying that their new friend would have enough points to advance to the next level. Rainer, on the other hand, prayed to all the spirits that the orb would help Lin fly out of the tower. With a slight movement of his fingers, the orb split into two. A golden light poured out from there. Soon, the numbers that everyone had long awaited would appear. When the prize ball was fully revealed, everyone saw the numerical value. Lynn Lannister was credited with 399 points. The amazement of the students was so great that their faces were unrecognizable. The young lord was only one point short. His world had split apart. Siren laughed at him. The tower's information window appeared. It notified all contestants of the end of the fourth floor. All participants who had gained a thousand points would be moved to the fifth floor. Those who had not gained the required number of points would be moved back. Satisfied with himself, Siren laughed at the boy. His words about fighting with the president sounded like mockery. Dia was defending Lin. She couldn't believe that he could behave like that after an unfair victory. Lin Lannister lowered his head. A shadow lay on his face. He was only one point short of crossing over, and returning to the academy was inevitable. Therefore, he asked Dia to forget about everything. The young lord had already fought for his life, so none of this mattered anymore. Lin tried to hold on as best he could despite his disappointment. He didn't regret anything right now. After teleporting, all the students found themselves on the fifth floor. That was also where Lynn Lannister was located. There was no limit to Alan and Daya's happiness. Siren, on the other hand, was deeply disappointed at the appearance of his opponent here. All the students were whispering. They all wondered why the young lord was on the fifth floor. He didn't have enough points. Could it be because he had completed the final task of the fourth floor? It's possible, because what they did there really deserves a reward. Yeah, the rules are written for a reason, but that's not what Siren thought. So he flew up to Lin and grabbed him by his clothes. He was angry and screaming about how the guy was cheating. He shouted so loudly and shook so hard that he almost tore his clothes. Lin opened his eyes in surprise. How could he be cheating? Could it be that the butler helped him win this time, too? But no, there was no way that could be the case. This statement greatly excited the guy, and he was sweating slightly. Siren said that with the young lord's strength, he didn't understand how he even survived after falling into the volcano. Oh, and he had defeated the monster as well. He had clearly been cheating from the beginning. Still holding Lin by her clothes, he squeezed her even tighter and demanded an answer. But Dia intervened in the conversation. She ripped Siren's hands away from Lannister's clothes and ordered him to stop talking nonsense. Her shout left the boys confused. They had not expected such behavior from the girl. Alan and Daya defended their friend. They told Siren that it was better for him to read the rules instead of shouting at nothing. 
It was because of the rules that Lynn Lannister was able to get to the floor above, even though he was one point short. The conditions of the fifth floor were to split into teams. The winning team takes all the points of the losers. To participate, you must have an indication card. It is obtained by killing monsters. Without cards, participants are not allowed. But killing monsters takes away 200 points. And for killing a student, a thousand points were taken away. At this point, it was necessary to work in pairs. So Lynn gets the missing points. Siren was seething. Because of that, he passed. And the young lord rejoiced his battle in the volcano had not gone in vain. Extending his hand to Dia Lynn with joy, announced that they were now officially a team. The girl was happy. But there was one thing, but they had a third. She asked if Lynn was okay with another member on their team. Alan clung to the body of his named brother again. He begged to be accepted on their team. He even agreed to be a shield for him, just to be there for him. Dia laughed at his behavior. While Lynn was trying to get the clingy Alan away from him, translucent tentacles appeared behind them. The young students shouted and laughed as the monster moved closer and closer to them. The young lord was very attentive, and with the edge of his eye, he sensed some movement behind the team. Everyone stopped the noise and froze. They tried to listen to their surroundings to see what had them so tense. Everyone looked at the empty field in front of them. Was there really something out there? But the boy replied that he had just imagined it. Maybe it was just the tension of imagination. Or maybe there was something, but it had already disappeared. Dia looked around and realized that many teams were already on the move. They had to hurry up too, so they wouldn't lose. Lynn agreed with his partner and they set off. Guy glanced at Alan and said that he could go with them, but the order of getting the cards would be determined by how much effort each of the team would expend. If he wasn't useful enough, he would get the card last. But Alan was willing to do anything to be with them. And behind them, the green tentacles reappeared. They were reaching straight for the team. Dia was fascinated by the two friends, one of whom adored the other, and the other asked not to rub her face against his leg. And now everyone was keeping a close eye on which floor the lights came on. And it looked like all the students had already moved to the fifth floor. The king was surprised. Last year, almost half of the students had already dropped out at this stage. The news that the majority were in the tower pleased him. The boys were stronger this year. The king decided it was time for him to prepare more awards. Yishe stood pensively. Her mind was spinning with thoughts that the students were stronger, but the rules had been changed as well. But it was impossible that not a single student had been eliminated so far. The teacher was tormented by a vague doubt. Something about this behavior was not right. Bad premonitions haunted the woman. In Dia's experience, the stronger and more difficult the monster was, the greater the chance of an item dropping out. The girl fought the monster with magic potions. She was very agile. Alan, with the help of his water magic, flew directly over the magical creature. If you added up all the team's points, they had 14 attempts to get cards. But one had to choose their opponents wisely. One wrong choice and they would all fail. The team was admirable. So far, everyone had succeeded in defeating the monsters they faced and Lin in turn smashed the stone monster. But the stone remained a stone. Only steam was coming from its surface due to the violent impact, and Lin still didn't find anything. The guy exhaled tiredly. The team of students stood under the tree and again thought about the fact that opponents should be chosen wisely. They hadn't earned a single card yet, and everyone looked tired. Dia had 200 points left. Alan had the same number. But Lynn had more, 399 points. The students threw pebbles and contemplated their next steps. All the young men were frustrated. They had one shot left, and the chance of a card falling out was too low. Lynn tried to ponder. The chance of falling out, if you think about it like that, could an item as important as a card depend on the odds? While the guy was deep in his thoughts, green vines moved towards his clothes. 
They move slowly so as not to be detected. A sudden attack and the liana wrapped around the young man's stomach. It squeezed him with a force that was not human and pulled him towards it. Lin had no time to realize anything about the incident. The students were all hanging in the air. They were suspended by a magical monster of the third rank of the ogre vine. But it was strange. Shouldn't the level of monsters here be higher? What's a level three monster doing on the fifth floor? Lin was starting to blame himself for what had happened. He was so immersed in his thoughts that he didn't notice this monster's attack, and the vine was squeezing the man more and more tightly. This monster was quite cunning. After marking its prey, it would not leave it until it killed it. When it grabs a man, it's best to fight back. But nobody lifted a finger, because they knew this monster wouldn't give them a card. Dia and Alan looked at their friend. It was as if they could hear his thoughts, but that didn't change the fact that they were in trouble and didn't know how to get out. Each had only bad thoughts. Lin had more points, and even if he killed this monster, he wouldn't be eliminated. The guy started to create his fire magic to free himself and his friends, but then he wouldn't be able to kill the monster anymore. Was it worth risking everything for those hanging in the tree with him? It was. Those two students had defended him to Siren and were willing to defend him in everything. They wouldn't leave him to be torn apart by an evil student. So he raised his palm upwards and began to recite the spell to summon his fire magic. Oh fire, hear my call! The words were heard far ahead. Hearing Lin read the spell, the students realized his intentions. They were frightened, but they didn't know how to stop him in this situation. He was sacrificing himself for everyone. They needed to stop it. And so the young lord finished reading and fire lashes soared into the sky, ready to strike the vine that imprisoned all the students Lin froze waiting for the monster to burn. But a water barrier appeared in front of the lines of fire and immediately extinguished them, preventing them from striking. Alan hovered and conjured to prevent Lin Lannister from doing the deed. Rancher and Dia turned around and looked at the student. They hadn't expected him to act so decisively. But they wondered why Alan had done it. The man turned his head guiltily away from his friends. Picking up his words, the boy shouted furiously at Lin. He thought he was a trickster and didn't understand why he had summoned fire magic. Meanwhile, the young lord's face changed. He didn't expect to hear such an accusation from his friend. After all, he only wanted to save everyone. Alan explained his action, for Lin couldn't see that none of them wanted to fight. They were all willing to go head to head, and the rancher decided to stand up for all of them alone. It was hard for him to watch Lannister sacrifice himself for others, the way he uses his magic to keep the others alive. Yes, the guy admitted he was cowardly and selfish. He never tried to help the others, but even he doesn't want to live with the weight on his heart. After all, Lynn saved him, even though Alan had done him a favor. That's why he stopped Lannister's attack, so he wouldn't sacrifice himself for him. And that's where Dia comes in. She threw away her potion with the words that a rank three monster isn't worth the show. She also tried to help Lannister destroy this monster, which made Alan angry. But because he is so proper, she turned away in embarrassment and said she wouldn't do it again. Lynn Lannister looked at the students and thought to himself, how can they still be friends after this ordeal if everyone is acting on their own now? Friends. That word mattered a lot more to the young lord. He had never had any friends and he didn't know how to act. Daya tried to resist the branches of the vine, which squeezed her tighter with every movement. Lin noticed the behavior of this monster and something about it made him wonder. The cannibal vine had already wrapped around all of Alan's limbs and was ready to squeeze him to death with its branches. Alan shouted to Dia, Did her potion not kill the monster? But the girl had no points, so the potion wasn't powerful enough to kill it. So it wasn't a vine, a rank three ogre. It was a rank five monster masquerading as a vine ogre. It was a tree puppeteer. Realizing their mistake, the students were horrified. Normally, when faced with a vine, people instinctively attack. But the branches of the tree, ogre when resisting, squeeze even more. This tree disguises itself as a vine to make the victim resist longer. Someone had to go down and find the root of the tree. It was the only way they could save themselves. 
but all the students were hanging from the branches and it was impossible to do so. It looked like they had no hope of escape, and that's what Lynn Lannister would do. Looking down, Dia and Alan cried out in surprise. The guy was standing on the ground and was completely free. But how had he done it? Now it was urgent to come up with an excuse for his release. It would probably sound strange to the others. Because the guy is too strong, the vines tried to strangle him, but they ended up strangling themselves. So they broke off and released him from their restraints. In general, after that incident in the volcano, Lin's body became as strong as a dragon's. But the guy couldn't tell the students the whole truth. So he tried to choose his words. Daya decided for him. She voiced her guess that Lin knew how to use the spirit of the night. And Alan repeated after her and thought that his friend's fighting spirit was at a high level. That's how they figured it out, but also gave Lin a good excuse. From close friends, nothing less was expected. Only, there was no more time to waste and they had to start digging. The young lord rolled up his sleeves and lowered himself to the ground. His hands were his only tool in this fight. Meanwhile, in another part of the forest, students from the truth community were arguing. Siren was yelling at the president who promised to pick a fight with him on the fifth floor. The girl was trying to silence the nasty student. After all, attacking each other takes away a thousand points. Does Siren really want the president to lose? But Siren knew and understood everything. The only thing he didn't understand was why Augustine wanted to find Lynn so badly. Why was it always about this guy? Why is this student who came from nowhere worth the president's precious time? Tired of listening to Siren sobbing, Augustine stopped. He turned around to the insolent student and walked closer. The members of the truth community saw how serious the president was and became frightened. From the breast pocket of his robe, Augustine pulled out a card and silently held it out so that it was in front of his partner's eyes. Siren froze and opened his mouth in surprise. The girl ran over and hid the card. Why did the president show it to Siren? His target was Lynn. Suddenly this guy would pull something again to prevent Augustine and the young lord from dueling? But Augustine was calm. He knew that the guy in front of him could never do anything. Siren would never be able to defeat Lynn Lannister. That statement made the guy fall into a coma. He didn't know how to answer the president. The guy lowered his head sadly. Was it really true that he would never be able to defeat Lin? But why would the president want to know that? Could it be because it wasn't Siren who jumped into the volcano, but the young lord? The president and the girl were moving away from the scene of the fight. The card that Augustine had shown them listed the opponents of the next floor, and the president of the truth community was the opponent of Lin Lannister. This made the student angry for he wanted to be in his shoes. Siren snapped out of his seat and jumped high up. He was determined to show everyone who was unworthy of a duel with the president, and that would be Lin. Around the tree was a deep and wide hole. Vine branches were hanging from the tree, wriggling threateningly. The young lord's hands were all mangled and bloody. He dug this hole, but he could not find the root of the tree. Was it really that deep? Surely this tree knows how to play hide and seek. His hands were still digging in the ground. The soil here should be soft, but it was as hard as metal. Even though Lin was as strong as a dragon, the damage he would still receive if he continued digging. Dia talked about how the root should be two meters deep, so the guy should be able to find it soon. Alan felt uneasy about his mate being down there. Dia thought about the student's dedication. Even though this monster might have a card Lin could have thrown them long ago, and he can't use magic as it might provoke the tree. Oh, and other than his hands, he doesn't have any tools to dig. The blonde-haired student's attention was caught by something. He fell silent and began to watch the movements. With a loud shout of something moving behind Lin, everyone turned their heads in that direction. Behind the young lord, it was as if a wheel was moving from the ground, looping from side to side. Lin realized everything. He realized why it had taken him so long to find anything. Because the root was constantly moving from place to place. By striking with his fist in an attempt to stop the root, the young lord was creating holes, 
and the root itself was constantly moving away from the attack. The students began to pray to the spirits of wind and water to put the warrior in a battle suit and give him strength. The magic worked, and Lin's wounds healed, and he wore armor instead of his robes. Multicolored threads of magic swirled around the young lord, but using magic was harmful to the students. Rancher knew this and turned around on his friends to see how they were doing it. The vine squeezed his friends, but none of them showed it. Dia smiled and said she would get over it, and Alan tried to joke about how he couldn't let Lannister show off by himself. Even though they had killed many monsters together, the guy hadn't expected such courage and support from them. After all, they could easily die right now, but they were sacrificing themselves for Lynn's victory. A thin trickle of blood flowed from the girl's mouth. She clenched her teeth to keep from screaming. Alan could no longer breathe. His strength was running out. Instead of air, blood was coming out of his lungs from the damage done to them by the vine. Looking at all this and rushing to destroy the root of the tree, the young lord realized. He only now truly felt that they were a complete team. Using the fire blade, the root of the monster was chopped in half. The information window congratulated Lynn Lannister, Dia Orand, and Alan Savage for receiving the identification card. After defeating the root, the friend's magic disappeared, and the young lord's face lit up with a smile. After so many battles, they finally had a card. There was almost nothing left of the tree itself. It was fading away as it died. Dia found herself on the ground, began to adjust her clothes, and Alan knelt down tiredly. They congratulated their friend, and it was Alan who should activate the card. He deserved it. But the card didn't just belong to Lynn Lannister. In his hands were three identifying cards. The black matte plates seemed to glow in the hands of the winner. Each of the team members took a card in their hands. They were happy. They still couldn't believe that one monster could give multiple cards at once. But during the battle with the tree, Puppeteer, Dia Orand, provided the key information and received the status of Defender. During the hunt for the monster, Alan Savage received the status of Observer. For the battle on the front lines, Lynn Lannister received the status of Destroyer. Each participant received one card. Each was given a status, not just one young lord. It was a team effort. Alan was very moved and cried. He threw himself around his named brother's neck and thanked him. Dia also felt that if it wasn't for Lynn Lannister, they wouldn't have made it this far. Everyone was satisfied. The team hurried forward. Dia's restorative elixir had worked wonders and Alan had decided to call her a second big brother, but the girl didn't understand why he liked finding big brothers so much. Lin stopped and looked at his card with confusion. His opponent in the next battle was Augustine. It was expected, but unexpected. Dia's opponent was Vice President Grena, and Alan's opponent was Siren. Everyone but the blonde man realized who their opponents were, but even he realized who he was up against, and his world split apart. The joy was gone from his face. Siren was no better than the devil to him. Alan wept and imagined the horrible man waiting to do away with him without leaving a trace. Dropping Lynn from his feet, he clung to him, begging him to save him. But the young lord reminded Alan that he had a head, and he could use it just as well as he had during the battle with the tree. The young lord's sense of smell was well developed. He heard the movement of a sudden magical attack and put out a fire shield in front of him, hiding his friend behind his back. A storm blade spell was aimed directly at the friends. The flow of wind was very strong and Lynn Lannister could barely stay on his feet to resist this magical power. The young lord was surprised to see such strong magic. He had yet to have such a strong opponent besides his teacher. The green stream burst through the shield and eventually broke it into small shards that wounded the Lord. A frightened Alan stood up from his hiding place seeing the blood flowing from his friend's wounds. The young Lord knelt down in pain. The student had said that he was not worth protecting his brother. Why would he protect him at the cost of his health? But that's why Alan calls Lynn his brother, isn't it? Daya stepped forward trying to protect her friends. Everyone needed to be alert. Someone was approaching them. It was a frantic siren. 
He was talking to himself, but he was addressing the president. He didn't think Lin was a worthy opponent. After all, he was the only blow he couldn't repel. He was not worthy of this battle. The student was mad. The team of students swarmed over Siren. How could he attack from the sidelines? And his opponent was Allen, not Lynn Lannister. How dare he attack someone who wasn't his opponent? Isn't this student afraid of elimination? The smirk on Siren's face was terrifying. But the student had never attacked the young lord. What Allen was saying wasn't clear to him. He could only have one opponent, and that was Allen Savage. No, there could be no such thing. The young man opened his mouth in surprise and didn't know what to reply. Siren hadn't attacked Lynn. He had helped block the attack on Allen. Oh, and the guy was already in the tower and should have known that the tower was using target acquisition to get ahead of his opponent. If Lannister just left him and ran away, Siren wouldn't be able to do anything about it. The student summoned the wind with a spell and made the attack again. The team saw the student's attack as a ploy. If he was going to win unfairly, he would soon be despised by everyone. But the creep's magic was already flying at his friends. Alan stepped forward. He stood in front of his friends and spread his arms out, wanting to protect them. Once he was expelled, he would not be able to go behind his older brother's back. Siren's attack hit right into the earth shield that Lin had put up in front of himself and his friends. Even though his body was bleeding from his wounds, he couldn't allow his friends to be harmed. Alan urgently needed to defend himself. He felt as if he had been electrocuted by those words and came to his senses from all the rapidly changing events. Lin talked about how the word exclude needed to stop being used. If Saren is attacking them through holes in the rules, they can do that too. Even though he's strong, he won't be stronger than the three of them. Dia raised her hand, preparing her magic potions. They were all ready to engage the sudden enemy. Alan was ready to cry again at this kind of help. He had missed all this care and friendship so much. He was very emotional, but it didn't scare Siren that he would have as many as three opponents. It even amused him. He didn't want to waste time with idle talk. He wanted to see if the three of them could defeat him. Spirit flowing with the wind in heaven and earth, dance with me. Siren split after this spell. Now Lin and Dia wouldn't be able to hit the real student. They would be driven away by his copies. The student really wanted to see how the young lord could fend off all these multiple attacks. Siren's copies were already ready to attack. May the earth protect us, and the wind grant us its agility. It was Dia who shouted out her incantation while putting her palm forward to attack the enemy. She wasn't going to stand idly by. The fight started quickly. There were so many people that it was impossible to keep track of where your enemy was and where your friend was. Everyone was on the move protecting Alan. Lin, trying to support his brother, used him as an observer. He needed to tell which of all the attacking sirens was the real one. Yes, the student wasn't useless as he thought. He had a great skill that would help his friends now. Concentrating on water magic, the student began to recite his spell, calling upon the water spirits to help him and show the real person. A magical snowflake appeared in front of the young man's face, thanks to which all the enemy's magic became inaccessible. All the copies were exactly like the original, but something made them different, and that's what Alan saw. Each copy of Siren had a sword in his hands, but it was not made of metal, but of magic. This became the perfect distinguishing feature for finding the student. He found the real Siren and used the water to point it out to Lannister, shouting loudly about his find. Like wildfire, Lin swept between the copies of the student being right in front of him in a split second. The copies didn't even have time to realize what had happened, but Siren wasn't scared. He stood calmly and smiled. In spite of the prohibition and the rules, they were trying to attack him. Lynn Lannister grabbed the student from the Truth Union without stopping and dragged him behind him. He didn't have time to turn away and hung on his opponent's arms. The young lord laughed at his ploy. Was he really the one who was talking about how it was not the tower that determined the opponent? The guy was carried at a tremendous speed just forwards. Siren tried to resist at least verbally. He called the guy carrying him a baby. 
After all, he was always the first to attack, but he couldn't break free from Lin's grip. No matter how hard he tried, he could not stop him. He wanted to know what he was up to, but the plan was very simple. With Saren in his arms, Lin fell from the huge cliff straight down, leaving behind the remnants of fire magic. Siren didn't have time to activate his wind wings. Therefore, the two young men spun in a huge whirlpool of fire and flew downwards. Their deaths were imminent, and each clearly understood it. In a deep stone pit lay two bodies of guys covered with cloaks. From the height from which they had fallen, their bodies looked tiny, like insects. Lin woke up first. A huge bump had popped up on his head from the impact. There were tears in his eyes from the pain. He couldn't even touch his head to realize the size of his injury. Siren lay unconscious on the rock. The shouts of the students coming down distracted the young lord from the searing pain. Dia and Alan were concerned about Lin's condition and were already rushing towards him. The girl shouted at the young lord. He was constantly getting involved where he shouldn't, and they were only worried. Lin tried to calm the girl down and smiled at her. He was fine. Daya began to examine him for wounds and handed him a revitalizing elixir. Rancher took it gratefully. But then Siren woke up and he was clearly even angrier than before. Steam was coming out of his mouth. The students were much heavier and had more wounds on him than the young lord. But it still bothered him why the president had said about Lin being stronger than him. Was it really because of his determination? The entire team stared intently at the one who hadn't realized until the last moment that he was losing. Lin looked at the guy meaningfully, choosing his words. Did Siren really think that he was stronger than him? But if that was the case, why didn't he switch on his brain every time they met? The Truth Union student froze in amazement. These words were so simple and complex at the same time. He's a rank four mage knows a lot more spells, and he's much stronger than Lin. But on the last floor, he didn't dare to use strength to earn points. He used stealth to tag Lin. And even now he used the excuse of, I can't attack you, to win, and made many copies. Lin stood right in front of the student and asked him if he himself believed he could defeat him without any tricks, Siren shouted. He shouted about being confident, about Lin talking rubbish. He had never treated the young lord as an opponent. He had always considered him unworthy. Lin had agreed for him. He barked on about how Siren was afraid of losing to him. The student had nothing to reply to that. Standing behind the rock before tagging Lin, the student thought about how he couldn't be calm if he passed. After all, this guy would be able to kill more monsters than him. The guy came out of the volcano alive. He can't be stronger than Siren, right? No, Siren wasn't going to let the president look down on him. Since his opponent was Alan, he would kill Lin with his help. Because of the fear of losing to Lin to Lannister, Siren wouldn't risk fighting him. And that's if you don't mention Augustine. The student knew that the young lord was right. He was brought to his knees by the gravity of this admission. No one would recognize a coward like him as the strongest, after all. Darkness descended upon the lad. Accepting all his defeat, he raised his head and asked not to be told off. Lin had no such right even though he had defeated him. Insults followed. Looking towards Alan, Siren told him not to wait any longer and defeat him. He had nothing more to fight for. Alan started summoning his water magic while the Truth Union student spoke his last words. The situation was like an execution. His last words were a request to fight next time with Lin Lannister. Outside the tower... The young lord would be waiting for him for the duel. The situation was settled, and Siren was no longer his sworn enemy. They bade farewell as honorable warriors. The student was glad that Lin was honorable. He felt not fear now, but pride for being able to admit it to himself and not be humiliated. The water magic was approaching Siren's body with a thin snake. Alan was unsure of his actions and was slow. But something shiny flew past the student's face and stopped the water current from killing the man. It was a sun arrow, and Siren knew who it belonged to. Had they really been found? It was Grena with her magic bow and sun arrows. Her formidable appearance inspired fear. But what was she doing here? 
The president ordered the battles to stop and gather at the central teleportation array. She shouted this so loudly that it was heard at the other end of the pit. Everyone froze in place. But why the need to stop the battle? Who gave the president the right to prevent Allen's level from being raised? Even if indeed the gathering was happening, there was no need for the level to be raised. But Grena was persistent. Her facial expression took on an even more serious and hopeless look. The students hadn't realized yet. Control of the tower had been lost. The control panel had started to lose control from the very beginning of their move to the fifth floor. The monsters began to go crazy and behave strangely. People who died were not traveling back to the outside world. Their bodies lay breathless in the hands of their fellow humans. They were really dying here. The security layer was damaged, and those who died here remained here without any transport. Many died in the hands of students. Grena was angry. Siren lost all his courage in an instant. How? How could this be possible? Alan was losing consciousness. He had almost killed a man. Lynn Lannister began to verify the girl's words. And yes, the control panel specifically broke down. It wasn't reproducing the necessary information. Grena turned to Siren. He was an airbender and he needed to heal his wounds quickly and join her. And everyone else would do well to come to the teleportation array. Near the fifth floor teleportation array, a madness was taking place. A huge green monster was stuck in the array and was causing disruptions because of it. It was reaching out to kill the students right from underground. Transparent tentacles were stretching out, wanting to kill. Lynn Lannister froze when he saw what was going on. Those hands he had seen them before. Yes, it was the same limb he had noticed after they appeared on the fifth floor. That moment when Alan, in his gratitude, had not let go of his older brother. The student had approached the company and said something to the effect that it was this monster that had broken the control panel. The president was sure of it. Grena stood behind Augustine's back and reported that all the students had arrived at the site. It was confirmed that 22 people had died, 6 were injured, and 3 were missing. It was also known that those students who kicked out on the fourth floor had successfully escaped from the tower. But those who were missing could also be dead? Alan trembled with fear. The fact that the 20 elite students that made it to the fifth floor died made the girl turn pale. President Augustine turned around slightly and called Lynn Lannister over to him, causing him to be taken by surprise. Compared to those who had died in Augustine's opinion, Lynn was really lucky. The young man's tone as well as his appearance were cold. Did the president with these words think that Lynn Lannister should have died instead of them? Yes. From his point of view, the young lord was too lucky. But Lynn was still a student of the Iris Magic Academy. Hence, the monster could be dealt with later. The main thing was that the young lord's luck should not leave him. These words made Lynn question the president's adequacy. How could he say such things in this situation? Meanwhile, the monster was attacking the students that were within reach of its tentacles. Not a single magical strike had done proper damage to this monster. The magical creature's movements were so strong that a hurricane wind would rise from the tentacle strikes. When Lin saw what kind of monster it was, he became terrified. This monster was huge. The monster octopus towered over the students and was as tall as a tower. Its eyes were burning with red fire and were terrifying. The students defended themselves and none of them could understand how such a monster was able to get into the tower. There was no record of this monster in the demonic monster books. The protective layer was also missing. How can the students defeat it? There was so much power in one tentacle of the monster that the mountains could collapse from its impact. The students ran away to avoid being hit by the ghost god that could destroy them for real. Magical energy saturated the air, and it was no longer possible to tell who was who and which of the blows belonged to the monster. Panic began to set in. Students screamed and begged to be let out of the tower. President Augustine stood at the front line and one by one cast magic spells. His purple lightning formed around and targeted the monster. The guy was in the middle of the monster's tentacles shrouded in a protective shell. Lightning bolts one after another came out from there and tried to do some damage to the monster that got in the way of the students. 
The students from the truth community were running away, but they saw that their president was still fighting for their lives. But fear gripped them, and they could not help someone who was willing to die for them. Lynn Lannister was not standing still. His fireballs were already flying forward, striking the monster. The students stopped, looking at him. There was no way a guy who got into the academy through connections would fight on par with the president. Alan was deeply offended that his older brother was being insulted again. No one dares talk about Lynn like that. Those hiding in the bushes must keep quiet. The insulted student tried to defend his honor. He wasn't going to hide. But Alan wasn't interested in that anymore. He switched on his observer skill and scanned the area. The guy's hurt feelings flew forward into the thick of the battle. He would fight as well. Everyone was surprised at this student's boldness or stupidity and turned around to look at him. The beast was waiting to attack. Lynn and Augustine rose into the air to attack. Their magic weaved together into a single weapon of destruction. In the here and now, they were no longer enemies. They were allies in the fight for the lives of their friends. But their magic was overlapped by the green tentacles of the magical creature. As Lynn Lannister attacked, he constantly observed the damage he was doing to this monster. His fire magic was spinning in a colorful dance. But the president's magic was doing minimal damage to this monster, and it was stressing him out. The two former rivals stood with their backs to each other, trying to destroy the tentacles that threatened to crush them like insects. They silently strategized their next attack. Though the young lord's body was strong enough, but something stirred it in Augustine. Augustine, on the contrary, blamed Lynn for the situation, believing if it wasn't for him, this wouldn't have happened. Fireball, flying sand, fire spear, wind blade, the young men shouted their spells one after another, but the tentacles kept coming closer and capturing them in a ring. Down below, a group of the bravest students stood and did not give up. Each of them tried to do their best and not leave those fighting up there. The president was proud of them, but worried so much for them that he would not want to see them on the battlefield. They all stood on the ground with their hands up showing their fighting spirit. They all wanted to fight. Even though most of them were already tired, they smiled, showing their strength. Lynn Lannister sank to the ground. Although he was considered arrogant, it actually turned out that people thought he was popular and followed him into battle. Dia and Alan admired their friend. There is no need to look at how the young lord seems to be. In the face of danger, he is always ready to act. That's why all the students in the academy trust him. President Augustine stood on the ground. The tower's protective layer had completely stopped working. His appearance was tortured. Everything was heading towards the failure of the test. Grena talked about how the students' safety was also their responsibility, but they should help the others. Everyone currently in the tower was the elite of the academy. None of them would run away and stand by. This was all happening due to the fact that all the elite were here. But Augustine had turned a blind eye to something, something he had missed. It couldn't have been his fault. But the truth came quickly. It was because of Lynn Lannister's presence here. It was because of him. Yes, that student who had run screaming about his battle shouted some more that he was as good as this freshman. And everyone froze in place. No one ran away. And everyone listened. It was pretty effective. He wasn't broken. He didn't run away like a coward, saving his life. He stood shoulder to shoulder with the president and fought for the good of all. President Augustine gathered his army of students right at the feet of the monster. He ordered everyone to prepare for battle, and all the students raised a battle cry and went on the attack. Greena and the rest of the students with the ability to analyze had to find the monster's vulnerabilities. Siren was in charge of the groups of students. The rest of the students had to use all the magic they possessed and protect all the students. They also needed to suppress the monster's forces. Lin became the leader of this group. The operation to capture the monster began. A magic pattern appeared under the huge sea monster. It was to hold the monster and prevent it from leaving the circle. President Augustine, as a true commander, ordered everyone to capture it. 
He led this operation and was the first to move into battle. The student's magic chains bound the monster's tentacles. It was straining its body, wanting to throw off the chains. The chains were getting bigger and bigger, but the resistance was getting harder to hold on to. The students with the highest level of magic rose into the air to attack directly in the face. Augustine ordered fire spells to be prepared. Lynn and the rest of the students read the spells from the ground. The fire enveloped the mages and grew a little more, and nothing would be seen but fire. The fire was directed towards the monster. The students wanted to burn it. Next, air spells came into play. With their help, the heat of the fire would become stronger. The wind swirled, lifting the hollow of the warrior's clothes. Augustine was determined. A powerful fire arrow was carried straight at the monster's head. It was carried by a strong stream of magical air. Strong chains held the monster in place. Just a little more, and the arrow would pierce through the octopus. The arrow went straight through the magical creature's body and pierced through it. The green octopus began to fall on its back. Everything was complete. Had they really managed to win? Alan exhaled tiredly. He was glad that he didn't have to analyze anything and the victory was so coherent. Tears came to the girl's eyes, but the monster was not going to die. Raising its tentacles, a huge mouth appeared beneath them. It was studded with thousands of fangs and let out a loud roar. From this force, the chains the students had made were broken. The remnants of the magic chains flew at the students. That sound that the monster made was cutting to the ears. It was like a spirit spell. Everyone stood with their hands covering their faces, trying to stop this stream of sounds at least a little. Students began to fall stunned by this inhuman scream. Their heads began to split apart. Lin, who could still resist a little, called out to his friends. But even Sayurin, who was strong in body and magic, fell to the ground unable to resist that sonic boom. He coughed up blood, the sound tearing his ligaments. Lin's time had come. The nerve cells in his head began to burst, hammers pounding in his ears. The body couldn't handle the immense pressure and blood came out of the guy's mouth. President Augustine held the dying student in his arms. He begged the others not to give up. But behind the monster's scream, no one could hear their own screams. The head of the truth community surveyed the field where students were falling one by one. He considered himself guilty for what had happened. People were dying. Augustine and Grena stood up and prepared their magic tool. They called on everyone who could stand on their feet to help them attack the monster. The sun bow was already burning in the girl's hands. Lin fought against the pain that was building up inside. It was all to no avail. Even with this many people, they couldn't do any damage, and with even fewer people, there would be no point at all. How could they defeat this spirit? Suddenly, an information window appeared. It reminded him that the mage had reached the third rank and could use dragon-level abilities. Now the young lord knew what he needed to do. He needed to use the dragon's power he would be able to make the enemy numb. The boy got to his feet and called out his power. Fire raged around him and his eyes burned, replaced by Fury's eyes. The students fell one by one. Grena, who stood to the last, lost her strength and flew down. In the face of the evil monster, only Augustine stood. He could neither defeat nor save his brothers, but Lin's strength quickly left him as well. A stream of blood was coming out of his mouth instead of air. Everything was useless. There was too big of a difference in the guy's level and the monster's level, so there was no point in this attack. But then suddenly, like an armor of golden magic, enveloped him. It was fury he had come out to help his man. His image towered powerfully over the young lord. The fire magic the dragon possessed came out. The dragon opened its maw and let out a loud cry, alerting the enemy of its arrival. Fury was ready to attack. The young dragon flew straight at the green monster. He formed a circle of fire magic to hit the monster right in its mouth. The one still continued to emit its murderous cry. Seeing the delay of the magical creature, all the students who were still on their feet started attacking the enemy once again. Along with the dragon, Magic weapons flew forward, 
Everything swirled in a stream of color. One blow after another tried to find vulnerable places. The monster's movements became more chaotic. It stopped its screaming for a while. It was over. Finally, the president alone could stand on his feet. He stood and looked at the monster. He saw something and asked the girl if she noticed the movement. For a second, everything seemed to freeze. The students tried to come to their senses. Many had a headache and everyone asked if the madness was over. Had Augustine worried for nothing? Lynn hid himself. He asked the butler what had just happened. How was Fury able to get out on his own? The butler replied that all the skills the dragon learnt could be used in a fight. But since the rancher's current physical condition left much to be desired, it was better to use them once. Lin and the dragon had a bit of an argument because of the latter's unexpected appearance in the battle. But Fury didn't see anything wrong with it. Alan got to his feet and tried to reach the team. That monster was a level six nightmare troll. Grenna and Augustine discussed the fact that they only had one second of delay, and because of it, they had dealt a crushing blow. Grenna began to reflect on the troll. This monster was too big and it had no scales. Without weighing it, it was a third larger than normal. The girl found that strange, but Alan didn't know that. He knew what his skill was telling him, and if it was a troll, nothing but light would work in an attack. The boy could barely stand on his feet and couldn't fully open his eyes. Augustine hesitated for a moment. It wasn't surprising that the combinations were ineffective. Only lightning and light arrows were useful, but they only had two light mages in their team. What should they do? Unlike the other nightmare beasts, if this one dragged behind them, there was no way back. A sudden sword stab in the back brought all thoughts to a halt. Siren pierced the president of the truth community ruthlessly and without warning. Realization came at once. But how could Siren do such a thing? The guy laughed at his act while his brother was dying. Grenna quickly ran up to Augustine, wanting to help him. The truth community student's eyes were black. He was mad, rejoicing in his victory over the president and laughing. He thought he was the strongest of the students. Grenna quickly cast a magic spell. Light paths enveloped Siren, leaving him unmoving and weakened. Augustine was dying. The girl quickly called out to Alan for help. But the darkness was already enveloping the boy and he no longer belonged to himself. Grenna held the light paths in her hands so that the previous student wouldn't run away. It wasn't Alan anymore. It was a monster with black eyes. He was laughing just like Siren before and wished death on the others. Dark desires were coming out. The boy was free. All the fallen students rose up around the girl. They were swallowed up by the darkness. They all moved towards those who remained conscious. Those who were in the grip of a terrible obsession attacked their living counterparts. They were rejoicing in their victory. Now they would definitely be able to advance to the sixth level. All those who were themselves began to scream and run away. They were calling for help, but there was no help. It wasn't just Siren. They were all caught up in the nightmare. Grenna was terrified. She watched as everyone went crazy. Lin trying to fend off punches from his ex-brothers was hiding Dia behind him. He asked if she had any elixirs that could restore their minds, but the girl didn't know how to fix it. The green monster was still alive. It had risen and was even angrier than before. The tentacles only got bigger and the magic was starting to increase. The maddened students smelled the call of their master and stopped the killing of their classmates. They turned towards the monster and listened intently. Alan called his brother to the troll that was screaming. He ran towards him and wanted to kill everyone with him. It was like he was happy. Lin tried to reach him, but it was pointless. When he caught up to him, he fell him to the ground, not letting him commit the crime and die himself. They hadn't got out yet, but they would definitely get out. The young lord's attention shifted from his friend to the others. What was happening was terrifying to the boy. All the students that were shrouded in blackness were moving to meet the monster. They were thanking the great king for the honor. They all considered themselves first and wanted to be together. They saw those who were not here. One of the students was walking towards his mother. A bleeding Augustine shouted to his brothers. He begged them to come back. Grenna was crying. 
She begged the boy not to move. The blood wouldn't stop. He was their last hope, and she didn't want to lose him. But the students' heads were already being pierced by the monster's thin tentacles. They were crashing into everyone who went to the call, and those believed in their visions and went on without stopping. The troll used its tentacles to siphon the life energy out of people. The young students turned into ancient mummies in an instant. They died. Augustine couldn't bear to see what was happening to his friends. He jumped up from his seat and threw himself right into where the monster was feeding on life. Grena couldn't hold him back. These people were the future, the young mages of the Holy Iris Academy. Augustine put all his anger into a strike of magical lightning and struck it directly at the troll's head. The lightning struck the huge green monster, and the president demanded the return of all the students that it had taken back. Grena looked admiringly at the guy who fought while being badly wounded. It was simply impossible not to like him. He was incredible. Augustine hovered in the air and looked at his opponent. The lightning bolts were still in the air, and he was holding on with his last strength. So many attacks and not a scratch on the troll. And the magic of the shout shattered the trap. The fighting power of the students had dropped. Would what the president had planned work? Suddenly a tentacle flew into Augustine's head. It sucked on him and began to pull the life out of him. The student could no longer move. Life was leaving his body faster than time. His eyes were turning black. Even though the guy was strong, he could not resist the force that was stronger. The people standing on the ground saw their brother being killed. They immediately gathered their magic and launched an attack. The arrow of light was already flying into the monster's limb, and the wind blade gave it speed. Lynn Lannister carried at the speed of light to help the others. The troll bastard was determined to kill everyone here. The guy summoned his butler for help. He wanted to reuse the previous technique, but the information window warned that emotions should be under control and it should not be abused. It had worked out the first time, but he couldn't guarantee it again. The backlash would be stronger. Lynn Lannister was once again facing an evil troll. He summoned his dragon, and it immediately appeared above him. The fire magic enveloped the host and spread further. They instantly struck delaying the green monster's strength and movements, allowing the students to attack and wound it. Pain pierced every millimeter of the young lord's body. It was as if he was being electrocuted and he could barely contain his scream of despair. Coping with the onslaught of pain, the rancher activated the claw skill and flew to tear the tentacles. He was determined to go all the way. Grena was injured. She could no longer stand on her feet and crawled. She screamed at the student that his attack wouldn't work. Magic was exploding around her. But what she saw next made her doubt her words. The claw skill helped Lynn Lannister cut off the long tentacles and stop the killing. The guy realized that the damage to the monster was being done by all the dragon's magic, so there was still a chance. The most effective option was to use dragon magic, but how long would the young lord be able to hold out? He was still approaching his opponent thinking about his next attack. The severed limb of the monster was bleeding. He raised it higher, but did not retreat. Again came the deafening scream of the troll. As he flew higher, the boy realized that one tentacle would not be the end of the matter. The monster's body was intact. It was time to let fury out. What the student saw struck him to the core. Augustine really was a lucky man. The president was standing downstairs. Blood had already deeply soaked his clothes, but he had put up his magical shield to protect those who were still conscious. A little more and the spirit would leave his body. Grena began to use healing magic on Lynn. He tried to stop the girl. It was the president who needed help now, but she didn't stop. Those were Augustine's orders. He said to take care of Lynn Lannister first. Standing behind his magic circle, Augustine spoke to the young lord. He had seen everything. There was nothing left to hide. He didn't know why, but of all the attacks, only Lynn's attacks worked on the monster. Was it worth relying on luck in this situation? Augustine tiredly lowered his eyes. Lynn, sitting on the ground, looked at Augustine. The president didn't think that he should place such high expectations on the guy. But even so, living for Augustine was a fortune in itself. 
He straightened up proudly and looked at someone he had recently deemed unworthy. The president didn't have time to finish his sentence. He and Grena were pierced by green spears. They pierced through the young men's bodies, taking their lives. Lin sat there, unable to move. The two students fell right next to him. Their bodies fell without any scream or unnecessary movements. Could it be that they were dead? No. Lannister couldn't believe it and called out to them, and the monster towered over the bodies of the men as if laughing at their resistance. Dia screamed. She was warning the young lord of danger. Summoning her wind magic, she tried to resist this attack. She saved her friend at the cost of her own life. Another tentacle found its victim. This time it was Dia. Blood fountained from her mouth and she was falling. One by one, the monster killed everyone who could stand on their feet. All the students around Lynn Lannister were dying. He was the only one still alive. The tentacle was moving at a tremendous speed, and they were the only ones visible in the air. The young lord had no choice left. He had to save them all, and he must rely on the power of his dragon. His family had been banished from the Empire because his father had unleashed the dragon. If someone finds out about it, that Lin has something to do with dragons, it will be harder to solve the crime. Could the guy release it? But it was no longer possible to procrastinate. Even if he did reveal himself, he was now responsible for the lives of all the students. So Lin summoned Fury. He summoned his dragon and ordered him to save them all. The dragon didn't hesitate and was already carrying a man on his back, releasing jets of fire around him. Fury was angry. How dare this monster torture his human? Lin calmed his pet down and asked him to get him away from everyone else for starters. They were a team, and the dragon obediently, along with his human, flew at the green troll to prevent it from winning. Meanwhile, back at the academy, the king still stood quietly on his platform and watched what was happening in the Tower of Trials. Behind him, a servant stood and bowed. Without raising his head, he apologized for the long wait. The king waited for him and immediately turned to the man who had arrived. The king was concerned as to why, after such a long time, no disciple had yet emerged from the tower. And what was this man doing in the Holy Academy of Iris? The man being bowed, told what his colleagues had found out. No teleportation circle is working in the tower. It is impossible to enter or exit. There was a confusion in the tower's rules and it caused unforeseen circumstances. The king's face changed drastically. He was angry and demanded to find a solution to fix this immediately. But they were trying to find a way to influence the tower from the outside. But so far, it was unsuccessful. The man tried to contact the dean, but no feedback had been received yet. The king's anger had no limit. Clenching his fist, he slammed it against the stone platform. Wasn't this the best magic academy in the world? So why did the best students facing danger have to just sit and wait? What were they all being paid money for? Yishi passed by and ordered Gwen to immediately contact the dean again. The guard that was guarding the king asked the woman to choose the tone she spoke with more carefully. Gwen was still on her knees in front of the king. She bowed slightly and asked his majesty to allow her to enter. She had important news. Her colleagues had just felt something. They had tested in the dragon's breath in the Tower of Trials. But how? Everyone's mouths dropped open when they heard what teacher Yishi was talking about. The dragon... It was unimaginable. But didn't humans seal dragons long ago? A disaster like this, how could it happen in the academy? The king's memories flashed back to the terrible events of the past. Fury was leading the green troll further into the forest where there were no students. The monster stalked the animal but did not attack. Lin was glad that part of the plan had worked out. After they get this monster away, they need to deal with it so it can't hurt anyone else. The dragon flew above the clearing and saw many people. He asked a human to look down. Lin was surprised at what he saw. It was horrible. There were many students lying on one of the teleportation circles. They were all wearing Iris Academy uniforms. The guy who was a journalist congratulated him on his beautiful duel with Teacher Yisha, lying dead on the stone circle. 
There wasn't a single drop of life energy in him. His body was like an old cloth. And those students who managed to apologize on the fourth level of the tower for killing monsters with tricks, both of them lay like wooden dolls with empty eye sockets. They were also dead. The fourth floor had been eliminated along with all the disciples who had left the tower. He knew them all. Emotions raged inside the guy. Kneeling on the back of his dragon, he resolutely ordered to fight back against this monster right now. Fury was only waiting for this. Lynn Lannister stood up and shouted his dragon's name loudly. This was the beginning of a furious attack. Fury turned around and was already flying straight at the terrifying monster. Neither size nor appearance could stop him. He aimed to slay the magical creature with his power. Jumping down from the dragon's back, Lynn narrated the actions. The boy would attack from the right and the dragon from the left. The first thing they needed to do was to get rid of the nasty tentacles. The guy's arms were already wearing a claw. Fury roared happily. With quick movements, they began their attack. The dragon circled around the majestic creature, burning all of its limbs. Lin, on the contrary, was coming up from below and cutting off everything with his skills. But the monster was still hoping to escape. Suddenly, an information window appeared. It warned of an energy fluctuation of an unknown dragon family. The breath of a super dragon was detected. It was necessary to evacuate as soon as possible. The dragon and human watched as the monster changed. Wasn't this monster a nightmare troll? Where did the super dragon's breath come from? After this alert, it was no surprise to Fury what he felt from this monster in close combat. It was wearing black scales. Both of them watched to see what would happen next. Those black scales were the scales of the father of dragons. Fury knew about it. That scent had been embedded in him since he was born. Normal trolls don't have scales, Grena had said so. Why would he be wearing the scales of an ancient creature? Fury was consumed by rage. He screamed at the green monster. How dare this creature do something to his clan? The monster launched its attack. A black stream of magical energy flew straight at the remaining human and dragon survivors. It was the embodiment of evil and power ready to destroy the world. Despite the man's cries for him to leave, Fury didn't back down. He wasn't going to run away from this place. And the dragon unleashed his fire. Its power was just as great, and it stopped the torrent of darkness coming at them. They resisted each other, and no one was going to give up. Lynn Lannister rejoiced when he saw that his dragon was not hurt, but had repelled the monster's strike. The clot of black energy was getting bigger and bigger. It had already blocked out the sky, and it had turned black and purple. It was neither a monster nor a dragon. Just how well had the man studied the Fury clan? While the monster was gathering its power, the dragon was catching its breath. Fury was seriously injured and collapsed without strength. The human began to worry about his health. In this condition, he wouldn't be able to fend off this kind of attack anymore. The dragon was about to get up. He didn't want to give up even though he was weak. And Lin was asking him to stop competing with the monster in magic. He was asking him to listen to him. Did the man really think that the dragon was inferior to this monster in the level of magic? The monster was tentacleless, but there was still a latent black energy lurking within it ready to destroy the creature. Although it had not expected such a repulse, it was ready to show what it could do. Lin begged the dragon to stay away, but the one didn't hear him. He stood up and told his human that they would attack from above. Jumping on his back, the lad began to support his pet, and they were going upwards to strike. They flew upwards, dodging the monster's energy and each time they got closer and closer to their target. Lin said jumping on the monster's head. The monster would have to shoot blindly. The dragon dodged, but the black streams of magic still hit it. He screamed in searing pain, but kept flying. He was ready to fight his human to the last man. They were already close. Flying overhead, Fury could see the troll's eyes burning. How his magic drew him in like a black hole. But he struck and struck to kill him, and then the final blow. The dragon's wing pierced the monster's stone head. 
Black blood spurted from there, and the skull cracked. The monster's eyes were no longer so fierce. Fury was angry. He stepped on the troll's head, creating holes in it. Black tar-like blood clung to his paws, but he continued. The beast would no longer be able to do another trick and strike him a second time. The eyes screamed silently, of pain and defeat, but they were still able to use magic, which they released into their opponents. Green lightning bolts of magic pierced the bodies of dragon and human. They knocked them out of the way like arrows and they could not resist. The arrows kept a distance from the dragon monster's face. During the battle, the monster changed its appearance. It was no longer a green troll. It was a black dragon. It was the magic power of the father of dragons. And with its arrows, it sucked the life out of all living things. Fury tried to fight back. Lynn Lannister realized that those arrows could suck out magical energy. But he would not allow Fury to be turned into a mummy. Clenching his fist, the boy prepared to attack. Thanks to his high skills, claws were formed on the young lord's hand. Jumping off his dragon, he flew straight into the face of the one who was trying to kill them. But he was immediately stopped by those magic arrows. Immediately, three stabbed into the young lord's back, stopping him from striking. Seeing this, tears came to the dragon's eyes. He called out for his man. The fact that Lin was captured brought him more pain than the arrows in his own body. Lin Lannister had no more strength left. He silently fell to the ground and the dragon that was bound to the monster's body by his magical arrows couldn't prevent this fall. The dragon's tears became his fire. He began to tear forwards, freeing his body from those bonds. He cursed at the tout creature that had ruined his human. His might arose high in the sky. Fire now shone instead of the sun and consumed the blackness of the ghostly dragon. The arrows strained so hard that they were about to tear. The black dragon gazed in admiration at the majesty of Fire Dragon Fury. Fire Dragon Fury had comprehended the dragon breath skill on his own. Its stature increased by 100 points. The information window alerted. The power and splendor of this eruption was breathtaking. The fire consumed everything around it. Fire Dragon Fury had defeated the modified level 6 monster Nightmare Troll. The dragon's growth value was increased to the maximum level. Fury's level had been raised to level 4. The dragon was still spewing its fire and shouting die to the monster. Fury's body was transformed. He had new skills and new types of magic. His immunity to fire magic and physical immunity increased, and his regeneration level increased. The dragon enjoyed flying in his fire magic. He was beautiful in his majesty. Lynn Lannister sat on the ground and watched his pet. He couldn't believe what had happened. Everything around him was burning and the stones of the slain monster were falling from the sky. It was all over. The dragon sank to the ground. He walked up to his human and gave him a fright. There was still fire burning all over his body, but there was still plenty of childish naivety in him. Cocking his head, he asked Lynn how tough he was in this fight. The dragon was pleased with himself and expected praise. The young lord walked over to his pet and scratched his neck. Fury was the best, the coolest. Though the dragon's appearance had changed inside, he was still a child. The information window said that the man had played a minor role in killing the nightmare trio and had only earned five experience points. The mage's level could be upgraded to level four. This news disappointed the young lord greatly and he slumped to the ground without strength. Even though he had fought and was covered in blood, he was not appreciated. Suddenly, the information window changed color to an alarming color and alerted of an anomaly that had been detected. All students would be teleported away in three minutes. As expected after defeating the nightmare troll, it was about time everyone was teleported. The dragon listened to the strange sounds that surrounded him. Lynn Lannister was lying on the ground. He was no longer able to move. He was thinking about whether all the students had survived. Strange sounds and movements attracted the dragon and the mage. Was that freak still alive? A green vial was approaching them. There was something in it. 
Inside the green bubble was a small dragon, as if in an egg the white baby was sleeping peacefully. Was it really a direct descendant of the father of dragons? The egg had been damaged by colliding with the rocks, and the vibrations that came from the surface of the bubble disturbed the little creature. It began to cry out in pain. It wasn't an energy surge before the horrible monster attacked. Lynn approached the bubble cautiously trying to touch it. That whimpering squeak before the attack wasn't a growl. It was the crying of a dragon cub. The monster was trying to heal itself by absorbing the dragon's energy. The egg cracked and liquid began to pour out. Fury couldn't look at what was happening. He was terrified. Everything the man said was horrible and he was angry and cursing at the monster again. The dragon was spewing fire. How dare this troll do this to the dragon clan? He was ready to sizzle it once more. But Lin knew that the nightmare troll wasn't the only one to blame for this situation. The boy remembered the imprisoned dragon. Was the troll's power really enough left to control a baby dragon? Or was this some sort of human experiment to study dragons? Fury took the baby in his arms. Lin moved closer and found a coincidence. Could it be that this white baby was the baby dragon of the chanted dragon? Could this horrible troll be the result of the lab's research? Could his father and Uncle Oliver have been so cruel to the little creature? Suddenly, Lynn Lannister felt tired. He was in so much pain. He was already in the displacement portal. He had been teleported out of the tower. It was useless to guess now. He would continue investigating when he got out of here. Lynn asked Fury to take the baby to the farm and he would bring a recovery potion to heal him. The dragon accepted the command and left for his home. The teleportation module in the test tower has been restored. The test subjects are being moved out of the tower. Gwen and Yisha commanded the rescue team all ran towards the tower. It was necessary to check if everything was all right, and all the medics needed to be on standby. What the teachers and everyone present saw in the clearing in front of the tower was shocking. The teacher covered her mouth with her hand to keep from screaming in terror. No one could move from the overwhelming emotions. There were students lying in the clearing. Many of them were unmoving. The medics rushed to everyone who had been moved, but everyone realized that there were corpses lying in front of them. In the middle of these bodies sat Lynn Lannister. Teacher Yishi ran over to the student who looked conscious. She picked him up by his shoulders and started shaking him. She was trying to figure out what had happened there. What the hell is going on here? Lin couldn't lift his head. He realized from his voice that it was Teacher Yishe in front of him. The only thing he said was to ask if everyone had got out of the tower, and he lost consciousness and fell to the ground. Yishe didn't move. She didn't know what to do or how to react. She sat in the middle of a pile of bodies of her students with medics fussing between them. That day the king became furious and ordered the academy to thoroughly investigate the incident. The anger of the teachers was no less than his majesty's anger. They vowed to find out what had happened after all. To save as many students as possible, the king summoned the best healers and mages to the palace. Dia, Alan, Siren, Augustine all survived. But those that turned into controlled zombies and injured other students left this world. Out of a hundred people, only 28 were left alive. Augustine, whose word carried weight in the academy, once again repeated to Teacher Yisha about who had saved them. She had asked this question many times before and didn't believe what Augustine was saying. He wasn't the one who had saved everyone. When she once again went to the disciples' dormitory and asked this question, the answer was the same. It was Lynn Lannister. The student who was standing by the window couldn't believe his ears. Lynn looked back at the president of the truth community. It was as if he didn't expect to hear such a confession from him. Dia and Alan entered the chamber. They were wearing black robes, but they were smiling. Sadness still lingered on their faces for a long time, but they tried not to be discouraged. They called out for Lynn to come down to the gathering place. Dia once again called the young lord a hero and even if he was late, he would still be expected. Closing his eyes in embarrassment, Lin asked not to say that again. It annoyed him. 
Lin was recognized by the teachers and students. The young lord had become on the same level as President Augustine. Everyone admired him. But such an honor didn't please him at all. Everyone gathered at the cemetery. A moment of silence was scheduled in memory of the classmates who died in this disaster. May the god of magic bless their souls. No one could rejoice at the sight of this. And Lin bowed his head in remembrance of those who had died fighting beside him. He didn't feel like rejoicing at all. This glory was overshadowed by the cost of the lives of the fallen. He looked up at the sky and asked his father if this tragedy was related to him. The next day, Lin appeared in the study where the dragon was imprisoned that he was looking for his baby boy. Bones was still crying and calling for him. Lin Lannister felt that that baby was the imprisoned dragon's child and asked the butler to let him out. The white creature moved smoothly through the teleportation corridor. The young lord pulled the baby in his arms so the dragon could examine it. He asked if this was the little one he was looking for. The little pup woke up and moaned softly. When the dragon skull approached the baby and began to examine him, the baby opened his eyes. Huge blue eye sockets regarded him. Yes, the skull roared. It was his baby. And the puppy, frightened, climbed on the young lord's head and tried to hide there. The baby's claws scratched his face. The dragon's body began to change. He didn't want the baby to be afraid of him. Bones began to be covered with flesh. And a white dragon appeared before Lynn Lannister. Its huge wings glowed gold. He was still in the magic circle, but the baby recognized him and called him Mummy. Fascinated by this majestic creature, the young lord looked at this ancient dragon with burning eyes. He wanted to ask him about his father, but first he had to get the little one back. Lin crouched down and released the little one. He, smiling, said about the fact that he had to go to his mum. Despite the short time, the pup was already used to the human and trusted him. The little guy stood in front of the huge dragon while the dragon sniffed him. His eyes were wet with tears. He was happy to meet his mummy. Mummy moved her baby. She had finally found him. She hugged and kissed her baby. Putting out her wings, she tried to protect him from unknown enemies. What a long time she had been looking for him. The puppy was crying. The mother was grateful that her baby was alive and well. She called Zoe's boyfriend, Alfred, and thanked him. He had kept his promise and saved her baby. Lynn asked if her father had really promised to give her her baby back. Zoe, that was his father's name. This discovery was startling to him. The dragon was surprised that the man she thought was Zoe called him father. Was it really his child standing before her? Since the dragon's physical body had been destroyed, it could only perceive the world through magical power. The power that was in Lynn Alfred was similar to his father's. What the dragon said next struck like a knife. The dragon asked if the boy's father was experimenting on his mates. So his father really was involved in all of this. But Lin didn't know where his father was now, and he didn't know what he was doing. All people talk about is that he betrayed the humans at a crucial moment and sided with the dragons to save them. He thought he knew his father well, but now he's not sure he knows what kind of man he is. The dragon stood up. He didn't know who Lin's father was, but knew for sure that he was different from the other explorers. The white dragon knew that the young lord had more questions about what happened in the lab, but his time was running out. The magical creature continued to cuddle his child. The dragon picked up his baby boy and handed him into the man's arms. He believed the boy's father and trusted him. Lin, Zoe's son, the dragon trusted him with his child. Hanging in his mom's teeth, the baby didn't understand what was happening and called out to her. Time had run out. The magic holding the dragon in this world began to fade. She asked when she met Zoe to overeat him that east of the rift was not the end of the world. That was the truth the man wanted to know. Beyond the rift, there was a new world. Magic dissolved into the air with the dragon raising winds that could blow you off your feet. Trying to keep the ancient creature in this world, Lin asked for more details about which new world he was talking about. The baby dragon in the man's hands pulled its paws towards its parent and cried. 
The chains that bound the sleeping dragon's heart were broken. The task of the sleeping dragon's last wish had been fulfilled. As the chains holding the dragon's bones hung in the air, the man heard his last words. He wished for his baby boy named USO to live happily ever after. Turns out it wasn't the chains that had been holding him all this time, but his own heart. The dragon had held on to her tortured body for so long just to make sure her baby was safe. The baby in the human's arms cried incessantly. He wanted back into his mother's arms. Dragons were very sentimental. It was very different from the knowledge humans had. Tears covered the entire white muzzle. Suddenly, an information window appeared. It congratulated the young master on acquiring a new dragon, Uso's Sleeping Dragon. Due to the fulfillment of the quest, the magic records that were obtained in the laboratory earlier had been changed. The magic notebook that Lin had placed in the lab table when he first got here. In it was a passage addressed by Uncle Oliver to his father, on the first page and nothing else, but now the blank pages were filled in. The baby slept in the man's arms and the book hung in the air waiting to be read. At first, the young lord had asked the butler to send the crying baby, accompanied by fury, back to the ranch. The adult dragon tried his best to soothe the child. Toys and food came into play. Then Lynn Lannister sat down at the table in the laboratory and began to study the notes in the magic notebook. The first topic of study was the study of dragon blood to enhance human magical abilities. It was expected that it could make humans as strong as dragons, in order for humans to be able to fight against members of the dragon clan. It turned out that what his father and the others were doing was not related to enhancing monsters. Zoe had been thinking about establishing a connection between dragons and humans lately. In the note that Lynn's father left for Uncle Oliver, he urged him to stop this horrible experiment before it turned into a disaster. What happens next should not mislead them. Life was cruel enough as it was. These words pleased the boy. His face lit up with a smile at the thought that his father was not a bad man. Experiments were forbidden. What could make Lin's father, who himself was involved in them, change his mind like that? And Uncle Oliver? Did he also refuse and change his mind, or did he continue to participate? Like modifying trolls with dragons? Not careful movement caused the ink tank to drop and an information window to appear. A secret passage mechanism was revealed. It was necessary to remove the ink pot to open it. There really was a secret passage. Lin lifted the ink well and a stone staircase appeared under his feet that led deep down. But why was there a need for this secret passage? The young lord walked down and pondered where it might have led. Judging from the ashes in the lamps, this passage, as well as the laboratory, had not been used for a long time. Lin stepped carefully down the steps, looking around. Ahead of him was a huge rock that prevented him from going any further. Even if no one had used the passage, why was there no further way through? Putting his palm on the rock, he examined the closed passage. It had obviously been blocked on purpose. Under the young man's palm, his father's teleportation circle appeared again. Stepping out, on the other side, the lad found that there was indeed a waterway beneath the academy. Pipes were sticking out of the walls and water flowed directly into the river underground. Someone was in this passage. There were shouts from the men. Lin's passage was discovered as a magical wave rose up. The men who were here sent a cleaner to check who the intruder was. A huge water monster swam straight at the young man. It opened its mouth ready to swallow its prey at once. There was less and less time left. Lin urgently needed to act. By the time the men reached their hand monster, the room was empty. The water monster had calmed down and closed its mouth. The men looked around in surprise, trying to figure out what had caused the magic wave. And Lin was already on the other side of the passage. He pressed himself against the wall and didn't move so as not to be detected. Someone was secretly using the Academy's waterway for their business. The two men on the other side of the stone were looking for the troublemaker. Since there was no one but them, one got angry and hit his partner, because he had raised a ruckus with his shouting. 
Lin could hear all the movements and words of the men perfectly, but he didn't make a sound. Lin stood still for a while and thought that the monster that tried to attack him also had black scales. Just like the troll he had seen in the tower, maybe the monster attacking the tower had something to do with them. It was time to leave. Nothing was clear at the moment, but he should be more cautious next time, lest he fall into another trap. On the way to this exit, the lad saw a well to get out of here through, and he decided to check it out. To get out of the well, there was a tall wooden ladder, which the young lord began to climb. It was necessary to climb up first and look around, that they were already at the height of this well. The top of the well was stone and clinging to it. He carefully looked out. The exit from this well led him straight to a warehouse. There were many different supplies of magical potions stored there, tall baskets and bags of items. Lifting himself up on his hands at the height of the well, he began to look around. This warehouse was a guarded one, and one of the guards noticed that someone had illegally appeared in this room. He immediately called out to his partner and started shouting danger. Lin jumped out of the well and ran the other way until the guards, shouting, There's a thief here! started to catch up with him. They tried to grab him to figure out what was going on. Running through the filled warehouse, Lin came to the conclusion that he needed to get back inside the well to get out of here as soon as possible. It was bad luck for him where the guards even came from here. Before he could jump into the well, swords were already pointed at him, ready to kill him. Still, he tried to jump into the well, but Lannister realized that it was already sealed. There was a protective magic circle on him, which prevented him from getting out. There was no way out. The guy was in a terrible trap. The head merchant burst into the warehouse. He spread his guards to the side and started shouting about who could be this daredevil who had infiltrated the Chamber of Commerce. He wasn't willing to tolerate such a disgusting attitude towards his labor. Lin was still also sitting on the sealed well when the ringleader approached him. They stopped and fell silent, looking at each other the situation taking on new colors because their parting was not at all friendly. The one who first started attacking was the very merchant who wanted to sell the materials. So there really was a chamber of commerce above the well. The guy was trying to do everything he could to get out of here as quickly as possible. The chief merchant jumped away from the young lord like some kind of contagion. He hadn't expected to see this know-it-all turn his nose up at his gifts. He remembered what had happened the first time they had met, and that was why he didn't want to do it again. Suddenly, a familiar voice sounded. A young lady had entered the Chamber of Commerce, and this beautiful lady was Vivian. She was very surprised that the young lord was here, and maybe he was the thief the guards had told her about. The chief merchant approached the pretty girl and began to tell her that this thief had appeared here for some unknown reason. He was obviously up to something very evil. The man addressed the girl with all deference as if she were his mistress. The deferential treatment of the young lord's acquaintance led him to a series of thoughts that she was the same mason from the mason chamber of commerce. Lynn remembered his ordeal where he had rescued the girl as she was presented at the information window. Vivian was a good girl. She immediately stood up for the guy and said that he couldn't be the villain. But the main thing was that the merchant didn't want to calm down in any way. She can't know what his nature is because their warehouse keeps a lot of secrets. And if it happens again, things could get out of hand. But the girl was persistent. She looked menacingly at the man and said she would take the boy to her sister. It would be up to her to decide what to do with him next. In the huge mansion, there were shouts of a girl who was going to the ward to get her medicine. Why is she still hanging around doing nothing? But the girl had a guest, and she introduced him to her sister. The young man was seated opposite the majestic girl. They regarded each other and then remained silent for a long time. In front of the young lord was the president of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Her name was Alice Mason. In her hands, she held a cup of tea. She wanted to clarify how Lynn had managed to pass through the well, which no one had managed to pass through. 
The boy's surprised look told her that he had thought otherwise. That well led to their warehouse, and he didn't understand how they couldn't get into it, because he thought they'd sealed it up on purpose so he couldn't get out. The young lord was partly right. The well could only be accessed from the bottom from the top the way was closed. But Lin rudely replied to the girl that he did not believe them, because it was the secret channel through which the chamber was engaged in its dirty deeds was downstairs. This behavior of the young man slightly alarmed the girl. She decided to clarify if it seemed to her that the guy was hostile to their chamber of commerce from the start. Maybe something related to the head merchant Lucas had given him such a bad impression. After all, they also have difficulties. The girl knew very well that selling elves into slavery was immoral, so she always refused to do it. But Lucas had lived in the chamber since childhood and was very attached to this place. So he himself made the decision to hunt elves for the common good of everyone living here. But the boy thought it was all about his greed. Weren't they the largest chamber of commerce in the capital? Weren't they the ones who needed to sell elves to make ends meet? It was about the secret passages. After all, it wasn't their channel. Everything was set up for shady business and the black hand that was strangling their chamber of commerce. Since the guy was a friend, she had to tell him something. After all, she had told him that out of the entire caravan, only this child had returned and facing a level eight monster, no one had managed to defeat it. She was the only one hiding under the corpses when help arrived. In fact, that monster was created by human hands, the modified troll had great strength, but there was a problem. Their father refused to cooperate with anyone to protect Vivian, to protect everyone in the Chamber of Commerce. So the heiress Alice had no choice but to agree to cooperate with our father's killer. Through a secret passageway, they supply them with specialized pharmaceuticals. In the last five years, they've made next to nothing, and now they are on the verge of bankruptcy. The young lord lowered his head immersed in his thoughts. He hadn't expected the Mason Chamber of Commerce to face something like this. After all, it was one of the largest in the empire, and this modified troll. Was it possible that the people controlling the chamber were involved in the academy attack? While the boy was in his thoughts, he was called out by his older sister Vivian. She was afraid that the boy wouldn't talk to her at all but he raised his head and apologized for being too immersed in his thoughts. Therefore, distracted, the young lord acted decisively. He spoke of believing them, and perhaps the question he would ask would play an important part in the future of their ward, but the girl had to be sure to answer it. Alice Mason agreed she was interested in what he wanted to know from her. She was smart, though, and had calculated her next steps in advance, but she needed this guy's help. Folding his arms hostess-like, Lin replied that he needed a list of herbal medicines or ingredients that they had been asked to deliver through the secret passage. He needed to read them, so he asked for them to be provided. The girl calmly agreed. She closed her eyes, and for some reason, she reacted to this request completely unconcerned. Such calmness excited the young lord very much, and he kept thinking about it. And in the meantime, the girl got up from her chair and asked the boy to follow her. They went into one of the rooms and Alice Mason handed over a list that contained dragon scales, bay leaf, and oregano pepper, a list very similar to the one my father had used in his dragon blood potion experiment. Maybe the man who secretly controls Mason's chamber of commerce is involved. Most likely that person was involved in the experiment. It's the same person. Maybe it's Oliver. Could he be involved in this somehow? Anger overwhelmed the young lord, and the girl carefully watched the guy's changing behavior. As the young man considered the list she offered, she ventured to ask what he was concerned about. Surely he was interested in who was running their chamber of commerce. There was fury in the young lord's gaze. That was it. The only thing he wanted now was to know the truth. But he didn't want to be exposed so quickly. Alice Mason was a calculating girl, as he had asked for this information as much as possible. She would quietly tell it to him, but
but this information could not come to him for free. The young lord agreed if she wanted him to help sort them out. To get Mason's ward out of his control as soon as possible, then they might as well not worry. The man was most likely an enemy of his family. Alice Mason's face changed. She realized that the people who were controlling them were also provoking the academy, but how dare they do that? Drawing her hand to the young man with the words that the enemy of my enemy is my friend, thought the girl that they will get along, she will try to quietly find out the real identities of these people. When opportunities and results would arise, she would definitely let the guy know. He had to shake the girl's hand in return. It wasn't surprising. The girl most likely let him look at confidential documents with such ease. She was most likely going to use this information as a trump for their cooperation from the very beginning. Despite her firmness, she was excited to be able to cooperate with a young talent like Lynn Lannister. Maybe their Chamber of Commerce would finally have a glimmer of hope. She believed that the young lord would be able to keep today's conversation a secret. But the boy couldn't understand why Vivian wouldn't know about it. But as the older sister, she didn't want little Vivian to meddle with such matters. It would be better for her. Since Vivian was a very good friend to the young lord, he had agreed to it. If it was really for her good, after all, even a cold-blooded merchant like this girl would want to protect someone. The young lord returned to the Holy Academy and strolled through its streets. He thought about how many secrets and mysteries these walls hold. Walking into his room, he was greeted by his favorite servants. The young master had returned. They were so worried about him and were very much relieved that he was doing well. The boy and girl's eyes were red with tears. He happily hugged his charges and apologized for their worry. While the friends were exchanging feelings, a knight entered that room. In the knight's hands was a letter. It was an invitation from Prince Lister, which was told to be given to the young lord. He was asked to definitely come to the banquet that would be held in the palace in seven days. Lynn didn't expect such an offer from the prince. The knight was proud of himself. Yes, Prince Lister is His Majesty's only brother, the prince whom His Majesty the King trusted the most. Slightly embarrassed at such a suggestion, the young man covered his eyes. He asked him to tell the prince that he would definitely come. Just like that, it turned out that the prince was a well-informed man and perfectly able to use it. But why would the king's own brother invite a disciple from the academy? The powerful members of the royal family could be in charge of the Chamber of Commerce, but they were within the young lord's circle of suspects. In any case, it would be better to meet the prince. Lynn's underlings rejoiced at the fact that the young lord had been invited by the prince himself. He was so cool. But the prince had invited their lord after he became famous. They hoped that this prince didn't have bad intentions. The elf elder had said that the more powerful people were, the worse they were. Leaving his friends behind, the young lord said he would go get some rest, and later he would have lunch with them and tell them about the big monster he had met. They would all be very happy to talk to the lord over lunch, so they will definitely call him over. But instead of resting, he went to his domain earlier. He was worried about who his little USO was now. No sooner had he arrived at the place than immediately the dragon called him quietly. He motioned for his human to come over here. The guy was afraid of whether something might have happened to his little dragon. But Fury only wanted to show how cute it was sleeping. This little guy naturally as a human asked to take care of him as a baby, and this little guy is now sleeping soundly. The young lord was so worried that he started to lash out at his friend. Why on earth is he shouting? in case the baby wakes up. But the dragon hastened to assure him that there was nothing to worry about. The baby is sleeping very soundly and doesn't wake up even when he accidentally growls. Lin asked him not to make any noise anyway. The boy held the little dragon in his arms and hoped that with his sound sleep he could ease the loss of his mother, checking with the butler if the baby could use the universal nest. That was how he got an affirmative answer. The universal dragon nest was suitable for all kinds of dragons. 
Therefore, the young lord decided to spend 10,000 gold coins to upgrade this nest to a medium level and give it to little USO Fury. Hearing this, he was very much surprised. The man didn't treat it like that right away and didn't buy a dragon nest. But at that moment, Lannister couldn't afford to buy a new nest right away. Oh, and the fire dragon would be able to use it too, so he reckoned he had built him a second home. Fury thought for a moment. Did it really sound like that? Surely the guy was glad he could talk him into it. After all, he really wasn't that rich before, so he promised to make up for it in the future. After settling into the new dragon nest, the area of the territory increased in average size. A stone mountain appeared on the desolate field. Fury was as happy as a small child. He now had a home. His sparkling eyes looked around. There were various crystals along the walls of the mountain. Fury flew and fire burned on him with joy, and the boy carefully carried the baby in his arms. Laying USO down on the platform of crystals, the lad made sure he was still asleep. This baby was sleeping so sweetly, not waking up to any noise. And the fire dragon laid down in the middle of the room and thought about the fact that this place was inferior to the fire nest, but it was still pretty good. The young lord motioned for his dragon to go to the training area. Fury was so happy that the man had time for him and would be able to fight a group of fire lions. Yes, the guy thought, they should completely pass the sixth training task today. The dragon was full of energy and was letting out fire. He would definitely bite the tails off those stupid enemies today. The young lord laughed. The main thing was not to get his tail chewed off. At first, the boy thought of all the training tasks on the playground as simple, like their first one, teasing a dragon with a stick. But in their sixth task, they needed to team up to defeat the fire lions. However, the level of difficulty got higher and higher with each task, and it was harder to fight with the fire lions surrounding the team. She used the fire fountain technique. The young lord made his attack towards the lions. This was a task they had been working on for a week now. In the young lord and his dragon's understanding, their combat skills had improved greatly. They had learned to work as a team and understand each other with half a word. The fountain of fire had raised the golden lions, and now it was time for the dragon to attack specifically. The dragon's vicious gaze told them that this time they would not be able to escape his ruthless attack. He had already prepared his fire magic for victory, and so the sixth training task was completed. The seventh training task was unlocked. Today's training limit had been exhausted. The butler told them to come back next time. Victory didn't come quickly, but the team was happy with the fulfillment. The man was glad his dragon liked it. Every time he left after training together, the dragon didn't want to part with him, and the human was so damn tired every time. His fatigue was so great that it felt like he was about to die. After completing the sixth task, he left the site and the young lord had dinner with Nicole and Jake for the first time in a long time. They had octopus for dinner, which made the young lord sick because he remembered his time in the tower and the death test. Lynn Lannister remembered a conversation with Vivian's sister, Elisa Mason. She had asked him to figure out the weaknesses of their opponents. Since she needed help, the guy asked what he would need to do. The girl had heard from Vivian that the young lord was a real potions genius, who was able to create a spirit potion in just a week. Lynn immediately realized that she wanted him to make a potion, but a simple potion wouldn't do anything for them. They needed something new, something that wasn't on the market yet and would be in high demand. This potion should have an incredible effect and the sooner the better. Alicia knew that developing new potions was a complicated process, and even for experienced mages, it could take months, even years. But given the position of their chamber of commerce, they didn't have that much time. One could always surprise and create a miracle. She was really asking Lynn for help, or only quality new potions would be able to cause a big resonance. By doing so, they would force people from the shadows to reveal themselves. But the boy was already tired. Everything the girl said was true. It was very difficult to come up with something new in a short time. When his brain completely refused to think he remembered his friend Dia, 
She was the president of the Potions Association, and it was possible to ask her for help. The office of the Potions Association was very difficult to find. Looking at the sign on the door, the guy wanted to gently knock. But no sooner had the young lord signaled his arrival than the door flew off its hinges. There was a terrible explosion that broke the doors. Colored clouds of magical dust filled the air and pushed the lad further away from the entrance. Lynn Lannister was startled and immediately activated his protective shield. Lying on the floor, he thought about the academy being attacked and asked himself what was going on here. Students in red robes coughed and ran out of the office. Smoke was coming out of the doorway. One of the girls was shouting to the president that she couldn't create potions like this. Everything exploded again. But the brave president was not ready to give up. How can you make a new potion if it's scary to try it? The young people were in a bit of shock. A fog enveloped the room. In the middle of the fog, the president of the potions community stood in burning clothes. Dia calmly took off her gloves and talked about how the people around her were too young. She was very confident in herself and her victory. This explosion didn't upset her at all, much less scare her. The fog cleared and the smoke only remained around the girl. Her clothes were ablaze with fire and she didn't notice it. When the guy shouted to her about the fire, all she cared about was the appearance of Lynn's student in the study. Lately, the girl had been burning more than a dozen sets of clothes a day. The cost of researching new potions was high enough as it was. After Dia put out the fire, Lynn asked if she was researching any potions at the moment. The research was still going on, but it was still a long way off. Looking around the study, the young lord agreed. Piles of books and notebooks were lying everywhere. The study was in chaos, shards of containers, pieces of clothes and ashes everywhere. Lynn Lannister wanted to offer the girl a cooperation. If she was interested in a development proposal in the field of new pharmaceutical research, collaborating with the guy was an interesting proposition. His power was obvious to everyone. With his help, the research and development of new potions would go more smoothly. But the young lord asked the elder to make him a promise. If a new potion was developed, the lad hoped that the girl would not report the results to the academy. Instead, he offered to give the results to the Mason Chamber of Commerce for publication. Fear appeared on the girl's face. Turn the research over to the Chamber of Commerce. Doesn't the young gentleman know that this is forbidden? If one transmitted research results to the Chamber of Commerce for commercial gain, he could be expelled from the academy. Dia carefully looked into the young lord's eyes. Did he really have financial difficulties? But he looked at her straightforwardly and answered honestly that it wasn't for him. He's not doing this for money. He's going to use this potion for his own purposes. It will help create an opportunity for him to find the killer, the one who ruined his and his family's lives by betraying his father and those students in the tower. That statement excited the president of the potions chamber. Does he really mean the murderer of the 72 students? Does he have any leads on this case? From the surprise of this confession, the girl jumped up from her seat almost screaming. The girl jumped up from her seat and pulled the guy behind her. There was an urgent need to tell the teachers about everything. She knew they wouldn't have a clue about anything yet. But Lynn sat with his head down and didn't think of going. The young lord abruptly grabbed the girl's hand, stopping her. He turned his head and looked sharply at Dia. His gaze was serious. He asked if she would believe him if he told her that one of the teachers at this institution was involved in this tragedy. Dia didn't know what to say to that. She was so stunned by this statement that she just stopped and opened her mouth in shock. Lynn didn't know if Uncle Oliver was involved. After all, he might be behind this too and along with him, the rest of the Academy's teachers as well. Moreover, it was unlikely that a troll could have infiltrated the Tower of Trials without anyone's help. Those were just the guy's suggestions. The girl stretched out her hand and shouted at the guy with anger. How dare he joke like that? Yes, and how could the Academy's teachers do such a thing? But Lynn Lannister's gaze was very serious. No jokes were out of the question. He came here determined to help find the criminals.
Seeing that look, the girl calmed down. Her friend, by all appearances, was not joking at all. There were a lot of thoughts swirling around in her head that were too scary to voice. She turned away. The girl realized the seriousness of the situation. If these speculations had been voiced to her by someone else, she would have called him crazy without thinking. But him, him, Lynn Lannister, she believed. So with a smile, she held out her hand to the young lord. She trusted him and would follow him. Together, they could solve this mystery. Her face was smiling and her eyes were covered. Every time being around this guy, she was calm. The young lord looked at the student and blushed. Her hands were so soft. Touching her made the guy stiffen. His hand held the girl's arm tightly. She warned him not to regret it later. It might drag him down. But he reassured her. One could take it easy, to keep the other participants out of their research. Dia discreetly moved all the necessary materials into the abandoned study room. They studied steadily, with the Elphis watching them. She wondered why their young master spent every day with this little sister. Servant Jack answered what was obvious. He is a man. She is a woman they can be alone often. What the president of the potions community was exploring was a mixture of water and fire. It was hard to imagine through what had to be gone through every time these two incompatible elements merged. The girl carefully observed the fusion process while Lynn worked and recorded her observations for later experiments. Experiment 188 was a failure, as were all the previous experiments. Smoke rose in the training room, and the luli that were there were covered in ash. The balance point was still missing. After another failure, Lynn Lannister voiced his proposal. The water and fire elements purified by the elders are very strong and explode on contact. The elder liked that. Therefore, he decided to use them as powerful attack potions. In that case, one could avoid trying to lower the frequency and find a point of contact. One could just let them coexist in the potion vial. Daya thought for a moment. Apparently he meant not putting them together, but storing them in separate containers and throwing them together during battle. She had tried that once, and the effect was much less. Still would have to use potion bottles to prevent them from being shared. It was the young lord's turn to think. They needed to find a container that would hold them together and separately with the potion at the same time, like an hourglass. Keeping two different elements on either side, then add something in the middle, like a sort of pulling ring. You'd have an hourglass with an explosive mechanism. No one's ever made anything like it before. They'd be in a peaceful state, and after people remove the partition, there'll be an explosion. It will be no less powerful than during the experiments. The guy visualized it so clearly. It was like Dia could see everything in front of her. It would be a watch with an explosive secret. The girl came to delight. The guy really was brilliant. As a rule, pharmacists work hard on potion ingredients, and few change the vial itself. So such a proposal led to a storm of emotions. The girl's mood was changing. Maybe they could also consider replacing the water element with an ice element, increasing the explosion time to make the traction ring safer. This new potion obviously contains only the simplest ice and fire elements. The power is comparable to rank 5 explosive magic, low cost, and will have a very good effect. It will lead them to what they want. It will bring out the shadowy criminals. When the young lord brought this potion to the president of the Chamber of Commerce, she was madly pleased. This potion was going to be a hit. She was so excited and hugging that vial that she forgot that that wasn't the purpose at all. But the president of the Chamber of Commerce, Alice, hastened to reassure the young man he needn't have worried. It would be up to her to act next. She knew her next move and that the right people would take her bait. The head merchant was the center of attention. He was introducing a brand new potion called Roar of Ice and Flame, developed by their Chamber of Commerce. And it was officially on sale. And the demand was so great that a huge number of people had gathered with money to sell it. This potion was a rank 5 power, and it was worth its money. 
The price was much cheaper than other potions, and many people wanted to buy it. While people were haggling and trying to buy it back, some sat and waited for the vials that were at the main merchant. Behind all this crowd stood a stranger. He was hiding his face from everyone and trying to be unnoticed. This was one of the dark players who had been hired to watch what was going on in the Chamber of Commerce. But he didn't succeed. The chief merchant saw the man who was just standing there watching them, and then he left the room altogether. Of course, the man was not okay with the president taking such a risky step. But President Alice knew that a real battle awaited them next, so it was necessary to prepare. She was determined to get all those who were in her way out of her way. A week passed before the behind-the-scenes forces would spring into action. The young lord came to meet the prince. He was met in the courtyard by maids and asked to follow them. In a huge room stood the young prince. He immediately tried to charm the young mage and praise him. The man talked about what a genius he was and the fact that his name was on everyone's lips. Bowing low, he was very grateful for the praise. His royal highness asked the guy not to be modest. He had done something that even Augustine had failed to do in the Tower of Trials. It wasn't just praise. It was at least deserved. The crown always liked to be friends with outstanding people. Hearing about this incident, the prince couldn't help himself and immediately sent someone to invite the young man, and very much hoped that he was not disturbed by this hasty intervention. But it was a great honor for the lad to be invited to the palace. The prince was invited to go to the back of the room and was glad to see that all was well. But to make up for the hasty invitation, he had prepared a small gift for the young man before dinner. On the coffee table was a wooden box decorated with jewels. The young man needed to open it and take a look. The prince really hoped he would like it. When the young lord opened the box and saw what was inside, he was deeply surprised. There was no delight on his face, only shock at what he saw. Behind him, the prince was already standing behind him and talking about how every firebender should be happy about such a gift. But he didn't seem to be particularly happy about what he saw in front of him. In this box lay six vials of purple potion. These vials were familiar to Lynn Lannister, which was why they made such a huge impression on him. They were the same vials with the mid-level potion that he had sold to the market to improve the dragon's nest. The young mage took the potion vial and examined it carefully. There was no doubt that the gift for him was made by his own hands. The prince was upset. He could see the confusion on the young man's face, so he decided to see if he liked the gift. The young lord realized that the look on his face made him doubt, and of course, he liked the gift from his highness the boy clutched the vial tightly in his hand. The prince was a city unto himself for he had not wasted a lot of effort and 60,000 zlotties to buy six bottles of this potion. The cost of this gift surprised the young man very much. After all, he had sold 15 bottles for only 20,000 gold coins. Were the prices really that high? The guy felt that the prince had suffered a loss, but he shouldn't have doubted it, since it was worth it for the prince. With this kind of potion, the efficiency of the normally average level would be greatly increased. Especially for fire mages, it could not only greatly increase the efficiency of meditation, but the fire elemental solution would increase. The prince himself was once a pharmaceutical genius, and as a gift to that same genius, he chose these potions. He should like them more than ordinary high-level potions, right? Although deep in his heart the guy was upset, he smiled for the prince so as not to disappoint his highness. After all, he had prepared a great gift for him just as well. Of course, he could just give him 60,000 gold coins. The most important thing for the prince was that the lad was pleased. He had also heard that the young lord was involved in researching a pharmaceutical drug. Did the prince really know about this as well? A shadow loomed over the man's face as he tried to hide his intentions. Lister also knew that the Mason Chamber of Commerce had released a new potion, and it seemed that this potion was very similar to the young man's research topic. The prince's ambiguous hints were bringing a desperate situation from which an urgent way out was needed. Looking carefully at the man who stood before him, 
the lad thought about the fact that only Dia and the people at the Mason Chamber of Commerce knew about the new potion deal. So how could the prince know about it? Could it be that he was the man in charge of quality control, and if these thoughts turned out to be true, the lad was going to have to put on a good show? The young lord immediately changed his demeanor and started acting like a deeply offended person. Did your majesty really suspect that he could use the research results and go to the Chamber of Commerce to make a profit? That would be a serious offense, and the young man would never do anything like that. The Grand Prince rushed to calm him down and stop him. He hadn't said anything like that, so he shouldn't have worried so much. A cunning person like the Prince was hiding his true intentions. His majestic appearance and kind soul could only be a cover for his greedy nature. The guy's behavior made the Prince even more convinced of his conclusions. Even though the lad was a genius, he was still too young, and so how dare he disregard his principles for the sake of benefits? This would help the man to control him better and use his shortcomings to his advantage. But here the prince asked the guy not to panic, even though he is cooperating with the Chamber of Commerce. It was the result of his research, and he could have the right to fully decide what to do with it. But after all the funding for all research is done by the Academy, could it be that the young one was trapped in this huge trap because of the funds needed in such expensive research work? Everything revolves precisely on money. Here came the offer to provide him with the funds in this way. The results of the young men's research and all their future research would no longer belong to the academy, and there would be no risk. And when they earn everything, they will be able to split the profits in half. This proposal greatly interested the young lord, so he flashed like a bright flame and agreed for him. It was very excellent. The game continued, but it was hard to guess who was playing by their own rules. Both men were pursuing their ulterior motives and playing along with each other. But for the moment, he needed to focus on the Magic Potion Society to make up for the time he had spent developing, and the potion should have been spent on his training. Since talent selection was indeed a troublesome matter, obviously the young man was offered a great many advantages to work for the Chamber of Commerce. Since this kind of cooperation was very important, his majesty suggested to talk about it later. After a long chat, it was likely that the young man was hungry. The boy cheerfully exclaimed and prepared to eat dinner, although the dinner prepared by the prince was sumptuous. All the time, the young man felt perfectly well that he was looking at him like he should pray. His hungry wolf gaze could not go unnoticed. A large number of servants and even his own help was offered for the trip by the prince. The guy refused it. He could get there himself. The servants apologized very much for such insistence, for it was an extremely important guest for the Lord. While the young Lord was traveling in the carriage, he thought of what, if behind the scenes the prince was really behind the scenes, was all the kindness he had shown him a pretense. Oh, and the lunch he had been treated to wasn't much of a meal. After traveling a little further on his carriage, he saw the chief merchant sitting on a bench, whistling some music and watching him closely. But the lad didn't want to pay any attention to him at all, and didn't want to talk to him either. It wasn't worth being seen next to each other. Presently, the chief merchant ran after the wagon, holding a sack of money in his hands. Could it be that he was here to give money? But he kept running and shouting to stop, for he had something important to do. The young lord asked him not to worry and said that he could go to the palace. When they met again, the chief merchant handed over the sack of money. It was the share that was asked to be given. A total of 300,000 gold coins were in there. Opening the money sack, he scrutinized the shiny coins. There were a lot of them. Of course, there were a lot of them, because the new potion developed by the young lord was of such high quality that they were all sold out in the Chamber of Commerce. Could it be that the guy was being hunted down on purpose to give him his share? The chief merchant confirmed. Of course, it wasn't just for that. He'd been asked to relay that after the group found out they'd developed a new green and made a lot of money, they'd acted earlier. They had only allowed them to deliver every other month, 
but yesterday they suddenly asked for a shorter delivery time trying to drain all the money they had made on the new potion. Now they asked for clarification on when the next delivery would be. The chief merchant replied that it would be as early as tomorrow. They tried to act as quickly as possible. So it was time for the young lord to get in on the action. He had plenty of time to prepare for tomorrow at the academy and was working out a plan along the way. But it had to be done in a way that would go unnoticed. Lin asked the chief merchant to return to the palace to see the president. He needed to tell Alice that the guy wanted to follow up with those who would be transporting materials tomorrow. Everyone should be ready. The man liked this idea and nodded approvingly. The people who were loading the goods into the portal were worried that Lin San and President Alice still hadn't arrived at the gathering place. In the past, they had made efforts to delay the delivery date. This time, they were missing two ingredients when collecting. People asked that they not forget about them next time. The chief merchant smilingly nodded his head. Of course they wouldn't forget. He thought about how greedy the man in front of him was. The second dark man turned to his boss and said that all the materials had been sent and they could close the passage. Those who were taking the goods had already started to close the portal, and the main merchant was already starting to get nervous and tear at his clothes. If the president came, it would be too late and they wouldn't have time to accomplish what they intended. Suddenly the door swung open and there was a shout from the girl that they needed to wait. The missing materials were delivered by her. The dark man stopped closing the portal and marveled that the delivery had happened so quickly. The man rejoiced. The girl took all of her charm. She apologized to the people who had taken the goods and said that the missing ingredients had just been delivered. There was a young man hiding behind her. No one could see him, but he could clearly see everything that was going on in the room. Suddenly, the girl tripped and started to fall, dropping the box she was holding. This box flew straight into the depths of the portal, and Lin, who was hiding under an invisible mask, walked along it. The man picking up the goods only watched the box that flew straight into the depths of the portal. The box along with the young lord began to disappear in a blue magic circle traveling to the right place. The chief merchant gave a hand to his president so that she could get up quietly, but the masked man was very displeased. This situation was unpleasant to him, so he asked everyone to get out of here as soon as possible. The portal was closed. Even though the young lord had used expensive invisibility tools, the color veil that hid the portal on the stone door would flash whenever someone passed through it. And so, it was this time. The masked men turned round at the veil that flashed, but saw no one but a box that had fallen to the ground. Had more materials been sent in? Alice purposely waited until the last moment to pretend to recklessly cover the guy's appearance without arousing suspicion. Picking up the last box and putting it on the cart, one of the men did it slowly. The other man was constantly pushing him because they were already waiting for them and it was necessary to go very fast. The men themselves, they still kept their masks on and followed the secret path, which Lynn Lannister had discovered earlier. The waterway was still guarded by a monster whose fin protruded above the water and threatened anyone who was uninvited. The sea monster watched the guards and surfaced from time to time. The men chatted about getting back quickly as their superiors were putting a lot of pressure on them for being late all the time. The young lord looked back at the monster that had surfaced on the surface of the water. It was apparently the same creature he had seen last time. But from the looks of it, it was bigger this time. Much bigger. Lynn Lannister stopped. He didn't want to be discovered. But this monster kept his gaze on him and tried to reveal him. The guy was sweating with fear and didn't know how he should proceed. The monster stopped its smooth passage through the water and began to watch the man, who was hidden from other eyes. Only the monster with his inner sense and magic could see what he did not need to see now. It was emanating streams of some kind of power towards the man. The young lord stepped aside from the guards and the monster watched him. He was testing how good his sniffing was.
The guards noticed the scavenger's strange behavior and told him that the patrol was moving in a completely different direction from the one he was looking at. The monster and the young lord looked at each other. Was the monster's perception so great after all the guy used an invisibility potion if he moved in the same manner he would definitely be detected? So Lynn Lannister applied his magic skills without leaving the invisibility zone. His eyes burned with fire magic and mesmerized the creature. Hypnosis quickly enough affected the monster. His eyes became pale and dizzy. He quickly lost concentration and attention and became distracted. The monster began to spin round and round. While the monster was not watching the man, Lynn Lannister decided that he needed to get out of here as soon as possible to avoid being detected by this monster. He had seen enough here. Walking past the guards, the young lord saw them shiver. One of them had just, just now, felt the fluctuation of dragon magic. But where could a dragon come from in this place? The guards slowed their step and stopped to catch their breath, so the young lord overtook them and walked forward. The sensation probably came from the scavenger. It had been modified so many times and it was still unstable. For example, right now, he was once again doing some nonsense in their opinion, while the scavenger was spinning around like a crazy person. In the stone passage stood a man in a long robe, who looked very much like an academy employee. He staggered everyone and the guards that were carrying the boxes in their hands. Everyone was waiting for the materials to be delivered, and they were in no hurry at all. Once inside the stone walls, the young lord began to look around. Was this really a secret laboratory? At the entrance stood a professor with glasses who was watching how much and what was being brought inside, but he was looking through the guy who had stopped. There was a Roman numeral too on the lab door. Did that sign have some kind of score? Perhaps there were other labs. Stopped and scrutinized the stone door. He carefully needed to check everything out while he had the opportunity. Right now, he was hidden by invisibility potions, which was why he was able to sneak in. In one of the rooms was a teacher with a young student. They were talking about the fact that the data copying of Dragon Blood Potion, number 261, had been completed. Of course, they were still continuing Uncle Oliver's research, and the Dragon Blood Potion couldn't remain forgotten. The professor was very happy that the research had been completed. It was necessary to record this data in the vault, along with the data of Intermediate Potion Number 4. He would like to look at the ingredients for Dragon Blood Potion Number 25. They had everything signed. They kept pretty good records. On the professor's desk was a vial of Blue Magic Potion. It was a potion that the young lord himself had made, long enough ago back at the beginning of his entry into the academy. But why was this potion in their possession? One student of the Iris Magical Academy took the notebooks with the research notes and decided to walk to the reference room to put them back. Lynn followed him. The reference room was the perfect place to study the data. The huge cold corridor was completely empty. Only the stone doors with golden plaques could show the path the student was walking along, holding the secret research notebooks in his hands. Lynn stood in the vault and began to read the 13th experiment. It confirmed that the 12 vials of special intermediate potion circulating in the black market contained dragon nucleation liquid. The difference from their test dragons, it's most likely the blood dragon's bloodline liquid of a purebred dragon. If a blood dragon can be found, it will greatly help the research on dragon blood. People have spent a lot of money to trace the source, and many claim that Oni did it, but none of them can confirm it. Slamming the book shut, the young lord was relieved it was a blessing because there were so many people who were in a hurry to make themselves known, and he did not continue after selling 15 bottles of the potion he had made. As he continued to study the racks of records, the young lord realized that this was not the main problem. If it was true, as the experimentation log said, then, in addition to the three used potion bottles— they had expended a great deal of effort to acquire 12 more unused containers. But then where did the prince get the other six vials of this magic potion that he had brought as a gift to the young lord? 
If they had been delivered from here, then the prince must be the master of this laboratory and the mastermind suppressing the Mason Chamber of Commerce. He was the real culprit behind the tragedy that took place in the testing tower. The young lord was moving forward on his path. He thought about the fact that his opponent was the mighty prince, the younger brother of the king. What should he do? How should he defeat the prince? These thoughts did not leave the young man as he walked. Right now, the guy had confirmed that the prince was the real culprit from behind the scenes. But those six potions weren't enough to accuse him of crimes. Could he find any more direct evidence of the prince's complicity in all these atrocities in this dungeon? At the end of the corridor, two men appeared before the young lord. One of them addressed the lowly elder as a gentleman. He thanked him for his hard work in carrying out the inspection and asked him to say a few kind words for their master. Maybe this ambassador was the prince's contact. Maybe through him the lad would be able to find some clues. As the two men walked past him, the ambassador spoke. He was suggesting the man not to worry. The master was well aware of his hard work and would not mistreat him. The man was so anxious to see these words for himself that he asked the old man to send the messenger away right away. The ambassador was a seventh-level mage. This was a level higher than his teacher Yisha. The elderly old man had a very good sense of smell. Stopping not far from the boy, he began to survey the surroundings. Something caught his attention, so he smiled slyly and turned towards where the young man was standing. The young lord realized that he had been discovered and froze in place. He was dousing himself with sweat of fear the moment the magical power scanned the area he was in. The seventh-level mage used his fire hammer magic and struck straight into the wall near where the guy was standing. This blow was so crushing that the wall broke into small stones and frightened the man who was accompanying the ambassador. No man could withstand such a blow. Was Lin still alive? The ambassador spoke directly to the wall. He called Lin Lannister a little bug. Did he really think that the ambassador wouldn't be able to see the boy after using the invisibility potion? The man who was standing to the side was very much frightened by this behavior. He thought the elderly old man was crazy because he was talking to the wall. But after the fire hammer struck, the outline of the young lord began to appear where he was standing. The wall where the blow was struck was burning as if it had been heated with fire for a long time. The impact of the hammer created a magic circle that helped the surrounding people see the shadow of the man. Lin knew very well that he couldn't compare to a seventh-level mage. A multitude of fireballs flew towards the direction the young lord was fleeing. The ambassador was shouting about how the guy wouldn't be able to escape. Everyone already knew that very well. The man was too sure of himself. The lad knew that he would be caught by one of the fire spells sooner or later. So while the invisibility potion was still in effect, he put up a shield in front of him, trying to protect himself from the highly skilled mage. The heat of these fire spells was so great that it could match the fire of a dragon. The power possessed by the seventh level, mage was great and shattered his shield. Lynn Lannister flew off to the other side from this blow, smashing a stone slab with it. The difference in magic power was too great. It was useless to resist or fight a seventh-level mage. The young lord knelt down and tried to catch his breath so that he would have the strength to at least run away. Meanwhile, the elderly ambassador began to recite his spell. He summoned the spirit of fire in heaven and earth and asked them to gather and form an invincible fire warrior to defeat his enemies. Above the little old man towered a huge fire knight ready to slay with his sword anyone who stood in his way. The spell took shape so quickly that Lynn Lannister could not even notice that the knight was already coming at him with a sword of fire. It was urgent to find ways to retreat. The fire knight had incredible strength, but he was also moving quite fast. Literally, in a second, he was in front of the young lord and struck a staggering blow. By some miracle, Lannister was able to dodge and jump away from the huge monster. The ambassador, who could see his opponent perfectly well, laughed at him. He wanted to see how much strength the boy had to run away from him. 
The elderly man could calmly control his strong magic and not exert a huge amount of effort. Lynn Lannister was running away, but the knight's fiery sword kept catching up with him. Each time he was getting closer, another millimeter and the clothes on the guy would be burnt. The fire knight was too strong and the student didn't know what to do next or where to run to. The young lord thought about the fact that he couldn't defeat a level 7 mage, but it would also be unworthy for him to suffer a defeat because of it. Therefore, he used all his agility to dodge the blows that the fire monster dealt. Its jumping skills were so great that it could climb much higher than the knight's height. While the fire knight searched with his eyes to see where his opponent had gone, the young lord was already at his back. Using his dragon magic, he put the claws on his arm and began his attack, swinging the weapon over the knight's head. Putting all his power into the spell, Lynn Lannister pierced the fire knight through, causing him to drop his sword and die. This was Split Stone, a new one of his abilities, gained by increasing his dragon's magic level. The ambassador and the man accompanying him stood and watched intently as the seventh-level mage's spell fell from the invisible blow. The fire knight crumbled into small pieces, and the wall near where they were fighting opened up a waterway that hid at the bottom of the academy. The invisibility spell was still reaching and Lin was hidden from the men's eyes. The young lord was pleased with himself. Stashed in his pocket were several magical potions that he and his girlfriend Dia had created for the Mason Chamber of Commerce. He directed them at his opponents, telling them that he was grateful for opening an escape route for him. Taking the hourglass bottle, he shook it and decided to use it right there. The professor and the elderly ambassador knew exactly what the hourglass was in the hands of the invisible man. It was a powerful new generation explosive device that had recently entered the kingdom's trade market. They saw the bottles flying at them and started to dodge them using defense spells. There was a powerful explosion that could destroy not only this dungeon but the entire tower, and so it did. Of course, the ambassador was able to prevent the maximum level of destruction with his spells, but still the valuable data from their lab was destroyed. All the records and magical items they had used recently looked like shards of the past. The ambassador was enraged. He shouted that he would catch the bastard who had wreaked havoc on their lab. The old man's powerful voice echoed through the dungeon. Meanwhile, the young lord was dragging his feet with the help of the dragon. Fury was also embraced by the invisibility potion. Of course, they couldn't see now, but it clearly felt that a powerful magical source was following them and watching their movements. The dragon was happy to break free, and his fire mane emitted sparks that turned into ash and settled on the floor. The boy kept looking round to prevent being followed. Perhaps he could get rid of the seventh-level stalker and sense his father's magic circle. In any case, it needed more time and effort. When the young lord and his dragon reached his father's magic circle, they stopped. The dragon wondered curiously what it could be. It was the first time he had seen such a spell. The boy put his hand to the glowing magic circle wishing it would open, but nothing happened. The magic circle did not activate. Lin stood perplexed in front of the magic circle. Next to him stood his faithful dragon. Both of them were still under the effects of the invisibility potion. But for some reason, it was impossible to activate the magic circle. There was no time to think about it. The bright flash of a stalker appeared from around the corner. There was no time left and he would be caught. The forces were not equal, so it was necessary to act quickly. Otherwise, everything would go completely differently than expected. On the face of the young lord reflected horror. Despite his age, the old man was dexterous in the air. With great speed, he was getting closer and closer to Lin. His fire magic made the tip of his cloak glow. The elderly mage was approaching with determination, knowing that he was about to grab the intruder. He used a small amount of magic to move himself. Just when the old man thought he had already caught the boy, he suddenly disappeared. Lin was literally no longer in the place. 
the old man only lacked a few moments to grab him. The ambassador hung in the air, constantly looking around in hopes of unraveling the reason for the young lord's disappearance. At the failure, the mage became enraged. The boy had managed to escape using the teleportation tag. Now the old man will not be able to catch him because his magic trail was interrupted and where the boy is now will not be able to find out. Lin and his dragon were in a space. There were no walls, no floor, no ceiling, just one dark nothingness. The young lord couldn't understand what was going on or where they were. Had someone rescued them, or was it the old man who had managed to grab them and move them somewhere? Fury looked around warily. Only his fiery mane lit up the space they found themselves in. The young man noticed that the space around them was very similar to the one he had been in the first time he had discovered the Dragon Ranch. Why they were in this place now, he didn't understand. Could it be that the teleportation array had malfunctioned? In the pitch darkness, the dragon was able to hear some sort of call. Lin tried to listen, but nothing came out. Apparently, only the dragon could hear this signal. Fury said that the unknown people were making a noise and he could smell a very dangerous odor. What this could mean is not fully understood. After the dragon shared his sensations with Lin, the boy began to feel something himself. They didn't immediately notice, but there was something huge, dark, and ominous in front of them. The figure was so huge that it was the reason why it was so dark. The situation was unfolding ambiguously. There was no choice but to just accept everything and continue coping. Suddenly, golden eyes with vertical pupils shone in the darkness, and then the creature itself fully revealed itself. An enormous-sized dragon appeared in front of the young man in fury. It was black as night and flames blazed around its body. Its eyes glowed gold and its grin inspired fear. How could one think that this could happen and they would discover another dragon? The giant lizard furiously began spewing flames from its huge mouth. The inexhaustible streams of fire were accompanied by a strong dragon roar. The giant lizard directed the flames towards Lin and his dragon. It was too late to run and there was nowhere to go. The only thing left was to try to defend himself. The young master managed to put up a shield in front of him. Fury also put out his wing to cover his master. They managed to do so seconds before the flames caught up with them. Fury put his wings out like shields, protecting himself and his human. The attack covered them completely. With all their strength, they tried to hold off the onslaught of the enemy. Fury gritted his teeth and tried his best to cover his master with his body. Lin also held on with all his might maintaining his shield. The situation was unfolding ambiguously. One wondered what would happen in the next moment. Would they be able to get out of this dungeon alive? After a moment, Lin realized that the dragon's breath had no effect. The young man didn't feel anything from this attack. Streams of fire still flared around him and passed through his fingers like mist. The young master surmised that it might have been an illusion of fire magic. The flames gradually dissipated. A huge glowing magic circle appeared under Lin and Fury's feet. It was a magic spell. And then Lin heard the voice of the person he had been searching for so long. It was the voice of his father who greeted his son. Despite the long separation, Lin immediately recognized his voice. An indescribable happiness tickled inside. The joy of the long-awaited meeting was tearing the boy apart. He recognized that voice. He remembered that voice. It was definitely his father. So many questions accumulated inside and all of them started looking for a way out. The boy immediately started asking questions. Where his father was now what was really going on in the secret laboratory and whether he was really conducting experiments. All this he said while looking at the dragon, whom he had recently considered an enemy. It no longer looked so fierce and slowly dispersed into a tiny glowing particle. Lin admitted that she had been searching for her father for a long time. His father's voice informed him that they didn't have much time so he would be brief. It surprised the young man if his father wasn't even happy to see them. It had been so long since they had seen each other that he didn't even miss him. 
He understood everything, but each time it continued to upset him like the first time. A longing took hold of the boy. He realized that his father wouldn't answer his questions. Most likely what they heard was a pre-recording of the voice. The dragon looked at his master with regret. He understood his feelings. After all, he himself had experienced them every time the man left him. The fact that the young man was in this space meant that he had met a partner. Only now did Lin realize that the red light that came on was because of fury. It seemed that he was only able to enter this space because of him. The voice recording continued. His father asked if he liked the performance at the beginning. Apparently, the father set it up on purpose to play a joke on his son. Lin obviously didn't appreciate the joke and was genuinely frightened. The dragon was outraged. Is this man on the tape mocking them? Just a little more and the dragon would show its anger. The voice reported that some kind of recipes had been left in this space. These records were not to fall into the wrong hands and were to be used wisely. Time would pass and both the young lord and his dragon could become strong enough. The fire dragon became enthusiastic. He was clearly happy with the prospect of becoming as strong as the dragon from the illusion. A slab of stone appeared in front of them. There were notches in the boulder for a human palm and a dragon paw. After the young man obtained the recipes, this space would be automatically destroyed. There would also be an automatic transfer to the outside world afterwards. Fury and Lynn Lannister froze with a doubtful look at this monument. This was the end of the recording. The father said goodbye to his son and said that he would be waiting for him in the east of Rift Valley. Lynn wanted to stop it. He wanted so badly to listen to his father's voice so dear to him for longer. But the recording was over and there was nothing he could do. He just ran after the disappearing image of the dragon and the remains of Zoe Alfred's voice. The boy watched as the remains of the illusory dragon gently enveloped the space with golden streams and glittering flecks. There were so many questions in the young boy's mind. How he wanted to ask them to his father sooner rather than later. He almost forgot again that it was only a recording and his father would not hear him. A new wave of determination filled his body. Now he knew where his father was waiting for him, and he was even more motivated to continue his fight. Magical streams were sparking on his hand, and he looked at his own and thought about what his father had said. He resolutely clenched his fist. His father didn't have to worry. Lin would definitely become stronger, work hard, and get to the east to see him. Dragon Fury was already excitedly near the cooker and put his scaly paw in its place. He hurried his master on, for the prospect of becoming even stronger was very encouraging. There was only one thing left to do. Now the man would place his palm on the slab and they would receive new knowledge that would lead them to victory. Lynn Lannister also walked over to the cooker and placed his hand there. They will do their best and become as strong as the dragon that the boy's father created. Now the formulae for the dragon blood potions and the formula for the dragon's dragon awakening potion were available to the young boy. A scroll appeared in front of him. The young man wondered if it was the same information he was researching in the lab. Did his father used to develop these recipes as well? But what about the information he had discovered in the lab? It all contradicted each other and upset the little lord. Lin stared at the object in front of him in surprise. There was also an ancient dragon awakening potion in the world. It was a powerful potion, so it had to be used rationally to avoid the dragon becoming undead. Fury scrutinized the scroll. The information and power it contained could be dangerous. Strangely enough, it was as if they had been given a new quest. The young man was very interested in the new kinds of potions and would get busy making them as soon as possible once he got home. The dragon was also very enthusiastic and was looking forward to it. After all, it was there to tell him how he could become stronger. Fury was already anxious to get back as soon as possible and start preparing the potion. Not wanting to wait a second, he rushed into the deepest part of space. Lin managed to grab him by the tip of his tail, stopping him. The young man asked the dragon to wait, because he didn't know where the space would teleport him to, 
so the dragon should go back to the ranch. But the dragon didn't listen to him. He was mesmerized by the possibilities that the black dragon had opened up. Using the call, the boy sent the dragon back to the ranch and used the teleporter to leave the space. The young man was very fortunate to be teleported directly to the library. Luckily, the dragon managed to be moved to the ranch before the young man teleported. The first thing he wanted to do was go back to his bedroom and start learning new recipes. He was so enthusiastic that he was completely oblivious to his fatigue. A carriage pulled by two powerful horses stopped at the gate of the academy. The two knights guarding the entrance did not expect to see such an honorable guest. Prince Lister had come to the academy on an unofficial visit. One of the knights was about to announce the arrival of his highness and asked him to wait for a while. The prince stopped the knight with a good-natured smile. There was no need for such a hassle. Prince Lister told him that he had come to visit his friend, and there was no need to alarm the higher-ups. He didn't want those who didn't need to know of his arrival. Having agreed with the guards, his highness headed deep into the territory of the academy. As soon as the soldiers were behind him, the friendly smile slid off his face, and the guards admired his highness's friendliness with the common people. The men marveled that such an important personage had come in person to deliver an ordinary message, but Lister was annoyed by all this idle chatter. Earlier, the same old man who had been organizing the pursuit of Lin had arrived to report to the prince. He reported that no data from the laboratory had been stolen, but the infiltrator had managed to escape through the teleportation system. The old man fully admitted his guilt for missing the intruder and asked to be punished severely for it. The ambassador tried to show his fear of the high-ranking man, but it was only a mask. His Highness recognized that escaping the old man's pursuit was no easy task. Prince Lister needed to know if these were spies from the Holy Throne of Light. The old man was almost certain that they were, for they were the only ones with information about the laboratory, but they had no evidence to prove their involvement. How could they think that such a thing could happen? The old man also reported that the man had a lot of ice and flame potions, which had become very popular in the last few days in the kingdom's trade market. They had conducted checks and monitored Mason's Chamber of Commerce, but were unable to find anything. All that was known was that the potion makers were on Lin's side. His Highness was surprised by this. He didn't expect Lin to be involved in this. He couldn't even imagine that he could be related to the Holy Throne of Light. This information made it difficult for a man from the royal family to try to conduct business. The prince stood in front of the door that led to the boy's room. On the door was the room number and the names of the students who lived there. His Highness thought that it was better that it was a mistake and the boy had nothing to do with the Holy Sea of Light. Otherwise, such a sonorous talent would have to be taken out of the way. The man's face was unnaturally serious and his gaze was piercingly cold. Otherwise, the young man would be in big trouble and there was no way he could get out of it. Lister had the power and money to get rid of those who were in his way. The sudden appearance of the lad startled Prince Lister. The man had not yet had time to knock on closed doors. He was so deep in thought that he didn't notice Lin approaching him from the side. The boy was surprised at the sudden appearance of royalty on the academy grounds. The man tried to return his face and voice to one of friendliness and ease. He hoped that the boy didn't see the expression he stood in front of his door. Prince Lister had said he was going to drop in for a visit and hadn't expected to meet Lin outside. A lot of empty words to divert attention from his complicated thoughts. The kid acted just as friendly. He admired the prince's kindness and inquired about the purpose of the prince's visit. In his heart, the lad was troubled. The man had arrived very quickly. Did he really have suspicions about him? Lin also tried to make an innocent face, as if he hadn't just recently hidden himself from His Majesty's ambassador. The keen gaze of his turquoise eyes scrutinized the young man. Lin's appearance attracted attention and looked suspicious. His Highness asked a question regarding his clothes. The boy was startled to notice that he had forgotten to change his clothes. 
For a moment, he lost concentration and gave off an anxious look. Luckily for him, the invisibility potion had completely evaporated and his clothes were lent to him by President Alice, but his clothes might have completely ruined his conspiracy. Trying to regain his former friendliness, the guy revealed that he was wearing a protective suit. It was a gift from the president of the Magical Association. He explained wearing it by the fact that they were testing new potions that could explode if the technology of preparation was broken. The suit was for safety. There was nothing strange about it, but the prince didn't see it that way. Prince Lister smirked. He managed to see a glimmer of panic in the boy's eyes. This suit was on him for a reason. Lister had decided to visit the association at their academy. Since they have such tests and there are so many different potions, he just had to see what talents invent and prepare them. He said all this in a friendly manner, but there was a certain suspicion in his gaze. He just wanted to confirm all his hunches about the young lord. How scary it became when he realized that the prince was personally going to go to the Academy Association. Aren't there specially trained people for that? Moreover, it was so unexpected. Whether he wanted to or not, did anyone ask him? But there was still hope to the contrary. The prince noticed that he didn't seem to want him to come there. The expression on his face just now was too obvious. What was lurking in the man's mind that he had decided so now? No one was to interfere with his plan. After all, getting rejected by such a high-ranking person was definitely not something that could be refused. The young lord bowed and said that he didn't think so by any means. He was just a little flattered. His Highness the Prince had indeed condescended to visit their association. Such a thing had never happened to the other associations of the Academy. Why exactly did they have such a great honor that they would now be receiving guests from the kingdom itself? He is going to share some information with the association, so he respectfully asked the Prince himself to wait for him. After preparing, he would show the way to His Highness. The man said he would definitely wait. They should have reached the academy together so they would feel more comfortable. Prince Lister was surrounded everywhere by his retinue of knights who escorted them to the secret testing room. Except now he wanted to tear the hair on his head because he needed to make a decision faster. It seemed that the ambush was unavoidable. It was getting even scarier. The boy was smart, so there was no need to waste time on any nervous breakdowns. It was time to act. And in his head, an idea was born. The main thing was that his enemy did not notice the panic. At that time, the prince ordered his knights to surround the house and not to let anyone in. Of course, the subjects instantly started to follow the order of the head of state. No one wanted the little boy to be able to leave the premises. If an official wanted something, he would definitely get it by any means necessary. Had his highness decided to get rid of the young lord right here, Surrounding the secretly lab in which Lynn Lannister labored happened very quickly. Knights were under every tree, and some were at the top, surveying the area from above. A moment later he came out, apologizing to his highness for the wait. The prince smiled mysteriously. The boy found everything he needed and tried to get his head in order. He tried to do everything as quickly as possible so that he couldn't be suspected of anything. The prince wondered what the boy was holding in his hands. Was it really the information he needed for the new potion? That was exactly what it was, and he confirmed it. The prince was not noted for his manners only in words, but his actions were always one step ahead. The man immediately snatched all the papers from the young man's hands, while at the same time asking for permission to see what amazing materials he was researching. This was not what the boy wanted. Was there anyone who could stop a royal family member from doing something? No, so it was left to silently observe. He asked not to be so stingy, for he would not steal the results of his research. He needed to hurry up and show the way. He would like to believe that His Majesty was joking at this time. He would need to know what these mages were producing right now, so he could use it if necessary and be one step ahead. All this he said with such ease, as if he had absolutely no thought of revealing the true reasons for his connection with the young mage. 
It was written in the papers that the potion quickly forms miasmas, with effects such as paralysis, fainting, and the like. This could play a large role in setting traps and preventing persecution. The prince wanted to be told what the characteristics of the new potion he was currently researching were. They were currently trying to research a poisonous miasma potion using swamp double-breathed fish as the base ingredient. His majesty was sure that as long as his men were guarding the house outside, he couldn't share the information with the people from the association. He needed to deal with the contents of the research first, lest the boy fool him after meeting with the others. He tried to rule out all options where the material would become fake or just irrelevant. They had already reached the Academy Association, where the president was being introduced to his royal majesty the prince mentioned earlier, and President Dia himself. It was an unexpected meeting. They looked at each other and dared not say a word. This pause could have lasted forever, but it was necessary to sort things out further. The man and the girl had not at all expected to meet under such circumstances. They seemed to know each other. He hadn't expected Dia to turn out to be a master of magical potions. The girl posed a greater threat to him than the young lord joining the holy throne of the sword. Perhaps he should have thought sooner about those who might be a potential obstacle to his work in the future. A shadow lay over the man's face. They moved on to talk about how he hadn't seen her in a while, for she had grown so much taller. He was truly jealous of the man who had Lin under him. Dia decided that the prince was joking, for he and the boy were friends. The Lord himself was surprised that they were acquainted, but they talked to each other so calmly that it strained the atmosphere. Everyone understood perfectly well that, since the young man was asking such a question, it meant that he still did not know who Dia really was. The little girl herself was in a stupor from this turn of events. Everyone had their own secrets, so trust between the three was not to be expected. But what could be done? The Academy had to protect itself first and foremost, and every person in this society was only worried about their own lives. It was an interesting question how the girl had recruited Lynn Lannister back then if he was in complete ignorance. Now it would have to be sorted out while there was an opportunity. After all, this character was in league with the president and therefore should have understood how he risked his reputation and life in general. The man decided to defuse the situation and said that Dia was as talented as Lynn, so how could he not know her? He put his arm around their shoulders and told them to relax. His behavior was senile at least because of the status of the people. After all, he just wanted to visit the lab for geniuses. There was also something else to ask him. It was awkward to be in the same room next to royalty. It was time to kick him out of here. His estate outside of town had been attacked. Many things were stolen and several people were injured. And what this man used was exactly what they had developed, the ice and flame potion. Anger overwhelmed this head of state. But was it all so clear-cut? After all, there was no denying that he might have been understating things. Lister wanted to bring out the guy who was here. The young man was afraid that the manor he was talking about was a laboratory hidden underground, and that person was definitely Lin. This old fox really doubted him, although the prince added that this matter shouldn't have anything to do with them. Such hints were clearly not ambiguous. Therefore, there was no malice to deny on his part. He just wanted to inquire about potion testing among the buyers to see if they could get any clues. It was a pity to upset His Highness that the potion they had developed was causing him trouble. He was obviously very eager to help, but he also had to know the rules of their academy. It was impossible for them to take a big risk and sell to anyone but the Mason Chamber of Commerce. Dia was starting to get angry now. She couldn't believe that Lynn dared to tell a man about their sale of research results. This was supposed to be their great secret. How could anyone give out information that jeopardized their further research, much less being in the Academy itself? She just didn't know it was a ploy by Lannister, and the prince would not benefit from spreading these rumors. She pounced on the boy and grabbed him by the collar. How could anyone even say such a thing? 
Now they might all be expelled. But the young man didn't want to say that. His majesty was simply too wise. The man himself knew the right way to approach things, and his connections could tell what was going on even in a place over which he had no power. Lynn Lannister was frightened by this girl's behavior. She was behaving in ways he could not imagine. Was Dia really such an evil person if she was reacting so violently? There was no way of knowing for sure which of them could be trusted with anything at all. Something the girl was clearly hiding. Whether she was siding with the little lord or plotting something against the others. That was the real mystery. So that so-called research on the new potion had to be fake. It seemed that this prince was beginning to realize everything. This was a real spectacle. Had he been tricked this time too, it just shouldn't have happened. It was worth going through with it this time. He looked back at the door, which, thanks to him, no one could enter. In the end, Prince Lister decided that he didn't want to offend anyone. He also felt that the rules and regulations of the academy were too harsh. If they needed research funds next time, they could even ask him for help. Would he be able to refuse such genius's support? Of course, if they would help him in return. Such an offer surprised Dia greatly, and she looked back at the man. For example, for the new potion they were researching right now. He clearly wanted to get his hands on all their workings ostensibly out of good intentions, though it caused some difficulty. He wanted to cloud their minds and befriend them as soon as possible to get his hands on the coveted information. A shadow of cunning like a mask lay over the man's eyes. A team of mages tried to stop his majesty. They couldn't give them this new potion right now no matter how much he wanted them to. The prince was assertive and was moving forward. No matter how much they shouted, there was basically nothing they could do. The only thing left to do was just watch it happen. He wished that he had been allowed to visit their experimental room. Of course, he opened the door before he waited for a response. This made everyone stand there with their mouths open. It seemed like the man was only asking for politeness. The answer didn't bother him much. After all, he would do as he wished anyway. And the prince entered the study with the doors wide open, not looking at the frightened faces of the children. A pile of notes caught his attention. Were they really researching a poison miasma potion? His gaze tried to latch on to the information he needed. What other secrets did this room hold? It was worth looking elsewhere. Could it be the fish that was on the board? The man who was not good at these things wanted to understand what and what had what to do with what. The fish was covered in mud, but still quite alive. So was the new potion actually true? The fish didn't want to talk about anything, so it just flew into his highness's face to tell him not to walk around here. Fear enveloped everyone. Even his hair had mud running down it after colliding with the fish. The students were terrified. Would they really be executed now because of this incident? They kept apologizing for really not being able to give him this potion. They had given the roar of ice and flame to the Mason Chamber of Commerce, and they needed to develop a new potion as soon as possible to fill the gap in the Academy's research results. It was simply a matter of creating more materials for research. The prince, who still had the stinking liquid from the rotten fish on his face, was disappointed. This man could no longer tolerate being treated like this. Every word that was spoken against him hurt every cell of pride inside. Did they dare to resist when such a high-ranking person came to them? It was beyond brazen. He carefully took out a handkerchief from his pocket and wiped the liquid humiliation from his face. These guys seemed to be working very hard. At this point, the prince decided that he wouldn't bother them anymore. If they had any problems later, they could contact him directly. The mages gratefully took those words. Would their torment end here? Lister turned around and headed for the exit. The door behind his highness closed with a rumble. Lynn hoped that everything had gone well. At least the young lord hoped so. The man had finally left their lab and they could exhale. Had the showdown with him already passed? What remained now was to discuss the consequences between each other.
Lynn Lannister thanked his community president, Potion Brewing Potion, for actually helping him. It was a necessary and very valuable help from the girl. Their career together depended on this result. It wasn't like they had worked on potion making for so long for nothing. But Dia seemed to have a lot of questions, and she was very angry. And now the kid had to explain what was going on here. While he was dealing with one problem, suddenly another was already brewing. The girl wanted to shout at the top of her voice to be heard. How dare he make such a spectacle? Anger spilled blackly across the room. She pointed at the guy's double, who had appeared here completely out of nowhere and was hiding while the prince was in the study. It became frightening to have to explain all his actions, which were quite reasonable, but only on his part. Was it possible to take such a risk? One could easily see that there was something wrong with this clone, except she didn't want to hear that it was the cloning potion, because the potion couldn't make his clone grow a tail. Things got even more confusing in this room. There was clearly something else involved, and this boy was going to have to tell everything right here and now. A white, long tail dangled from the fake boy's back. Lannister himself was surprised that he had a tail. Was such a thing even possible? Something had definitely gone wrong in his plans today. He needed to use someone to create a clone, but the tail was clearly not an addition to this huge plan. He would have to figure out for himself what was going on here. But that was when the message came in that Uso's sleeping dragon was already awake. Everything came upon the poor boy all at once. There was an urgent need to deal with it. No opportunity was to be missed to keep an eye on his wards so as not to overlook anything. Since USO sleeps most of the time, he specifically asked to be reminded when USO wakes up to greet him. After this period of growth, USO reached the second level. The dragon was gaining more and more new and powerful skills with his new master after the death of his mother. The situation was urgent, and he couldn't just let USO imitate himself and use the ranch to teleport him to the association. He had sent him to tell Dia to make preparations, but this wonderful plan didn't seem to have taken into account all the possible dangers that he had to face. So he didn't expect this guy to reveal his secret. It was more than confusing, but he didn't have much choice. He had to act. He had to choose the least evil. Unfortunately for him, that wasn't all the adventures for the evening. Lin had to know how much the president trusted him, whether it was about the ice and flame potion or about his majesty in general. It pained her to talk about it. She wanted to show with all her appearance that he could be honest with her because they had already become family. After all, she felt that he didn't trust her as much as she trusted him. He was sorry, but humans considered dragons to be mortal enemies and either killed or exploited them. Despite the cute appearance of these creatures, the attitude towards them was quite beastly. That's why, to protect USO and the others, he couldn't reveal that he had dragons just yet. But it seemed like someone was about to sleep, which meant the magic was running out. All the potion's effects were dissolving into thin air. Now the big secret would be revealed. This wasn't supposed to happen. But alas, USO became a dragon again and laid down right on the floor. Everyone turned that way and stared in silence at such a surprise. The little dragon was sleeping like a real child, but did anyone care here? Naturally, the girl was frightened. She cried out in fright and tried to get far away because she didn't like it all very much. People did not want to realize that these creatures could be quite kind and peaceful. It was a good thing that only the young lord and Dia were here. If the prince was still here, disaster would not have been avoided. Now, Lannister did not know what he should do about it. He would have to tell everything so that his dragons could stay in the same position beside him, rather than go to certain death. Yes, the boy was going to have a difficult conversation, but he needed to bring his president to his senses first, even though at first glance it seemed simply impossible. He himself was ready to lose his senses. The girl gently lifted the furry creature from the floor. 
This baby slowly opened its eyes, but did not resist the fact that its sleep was disturbed. Was it really a real dragon? the girl asked. Daya brought that tender lump up to her face. Such tenderness made her cheeks blush. Baby USO was so cute. She believed that dragons were really different from the rumors people spread. The baby dragon seemed to like this cute girl and scrutinized the new human. The young lord, on the other hand, was scared of what was going on here. Shouldn't she be afraid of dragons? All humans are afraid of dragons. Why was she cradling this little one so gently in her arms, while the girl and the dragon were cuddling with each other? The time to regain consciousness came for the young lord. But the president of the magic potions community sadly averted her gaze. She gently scratched that dragon's head and said that she loved the creature that people were afraid of. Little USO liked this man's touch. He raised his head, asking for more affection, and smiled. A creature that people consider an enemy, and to most people it looks that way. A fearsome creature, but not to her. After all, the person the girl especially respected didn't think so. It was her first teacher, a traveling scholar who had spent her life studying true knowledge. She had taught her everything she believed in since she was a child. Even when Dia was just a baby, this woman was kind to all living things and taught love to this little girl. When the teacher was investigating in the east of the Rift Valley, she accidentally fell off a cliff and met a wounded white dragon. At first, just to get more information, she tried to get close to the dragon to heal it. The white creature was lying like snow on one of the rocks. It was in pain and whimpering, but the animal let the woman close to it. Suddenly, a subtle friendship was established between them. The girl constantly fed the white dragon, and he trustingly ate from her hand. The white dragon with golden horns and kind face was like an extension of the woman's soul. But this did not last long until other mages came and killed the white dragon to save the teacher who did not need their help. The white dragon was completely stained with his own blood. Its beautiful golden horns were broken. And the woman sat on her knees and wept at the loss of such a beautiful creature, at the loss of a living and bright soul. Were dragons really a disaster that would destroy the world? To get to the truth, the girl's teacher began to travel the world and study legends and historical materials about dragons. She traveled to many different places. The great teacher visited many uncharted territories to fill all the materials to study the introduction to the rest of the people. But just a day before this woman was about to announce the results of her research, her body was discovered in her own room. The maid who entered and saw it in front of her screamed loudly in fear. In the library of the Eternal City, the girl's teacher had mystically died. People said that it was a natural punishment the teacher received for trying to offend the dragons. Dragons are a disaster that destroys the world, and we must destroy them, so said everyone around. No one wanted to believe any other information. Seeing this little dragon made the girl even more convinced that the teacher's death was a conspiracy. Someone wanted to hide the real truth from them. She held in front of her this small, delicate creature that was literally a little bigger than her palm. They looked at each other with their violet eyes and a thin, invisible thread of connection was being established between them. After all, right now he was in her hands completely innocent. People try to hide the truth about dragons, and if Lynn Lannister is hiding everything because of this little dragon, then he may not worry. His mate won't do anything to harm this dragon. The girl was putting the USO dragon in the boyfriend's hands to continue to protect it. Now, after the guy learnt the whole truth and the girl would he now be able to trust her even more, he stared at the little sleeping dragon in his arms and stroked it like the most precious creature in the world. And now it was. After all, it was a direct descendant of the father of dragons. The young lord really did not expect that there were people in this world who loved dragons, and indeed he had hidden a lot from Dia. Now standing in front of her, hearing this truth from her, he was ashamed and he asked for the girl's forgiveness. And Lynn Lannister decided to tell her everything about Prince Lister and the dragon USO. 
and he began his detailed narrative. He began with their incident on the fifth floor of the Tower of Trials. The young lord told where he had found USO and how he had saved him and everyone else from the Nightmare Troll, and how he had explored the underground laboratory where research was being done on dragon blood, everything about the Dragon Ranch. Of course, he had left out some details that he thought it was too early to reveal. The young men sat in their secret laboratory for a very long time. It was already dark outside the window and they lit candles. They were still discussing new details about each other, and little USO all this peacefully slept in his new bed, which the girl carefully made from his soft pillow. Finishing his story, the young lord asked Dia if she agreed with his opinion. Did the girl now suspect the prince of being the perpetrator of the tragedy in the Tower of Trials? A heavy silence hung. These confessions and secrets revealed too much and could be deadly. The president of the Magic Potion community covered her mouth with her hand. It seemed to be a possibility, but she didn't want to admit it herself. It seemed too scary to admit it. The girl tried to speak more quietly. She looked around as if someone might hear them and still covering her mouth with her hand, she spoke in a whisper. The prince, the king's brother, they have such a good relationship. How could he do something he couldn't to the empire's detriment? But if it was true, so many outstanding students had died during the incident, how could it be that the prince was in charge of everything? It seemed like something supernatural. Although the young lord couldn't provide all the evidence, but the modified scavenger dungeon lab with the black scales of an ancient dragon and the special potions he prepared for sale. All of this, evidence pointed to the fact that the conspirator and leader of this entire gang was the prince. Nervously, the girl began to rub her hands together. Was it really true what the young lord had told her? It wouldn't be good if it turned out to be a lie. It had been a great strain on the relationship between the brothers. Dia was hesitant to make the right decision. What did she need to do next? What the girl knew about the royal family had a huge impact on her opinion of the situation. The young lord understood that she didn't want to believe that maybe she had some special relationship with the prince. This thought worried Lynn Lannister very much. How did their acquaintance with Lister come about and what was their connection? One had to find out this information and investigate. The situation was unfolding in an ambiguous manner. It was interesting to watch it. Suddenly, some thought came into the girl's head. She opened her eyes wide and realized that something about it was not right. Thoughts were spinning rapidly in her head, and she tried to tie them together. Standing up and leaning into the table, the girl began to scream about how this was all wrong. If one thought hard about what he had said, there were many contradictions. She looked at the young man insistently. She wanted him to realize it, too how much more there was to learn in this story. One of the main contradictions in them was the little sleeping dragon, USO, a baby that in its sweet sleep had already fallen off the pillow prepared by the girl's caring hands. Not even the shout of the community president disturbed the dragon's sleepy realm, although her voice echoed off the walls of the study. Lynn was startled by such a statement. Yes, the young lord was talking about the dragon being sealed in the troll's body, but according to the information he himself had seen in the archival records, there were no real dragons in the underground labs at all. Wouldn't it be a contradiction if it was the prince who was behind this incident? USO slept belly up sweetly slumbering. His muzzle was hanging down and he looked completely unconcerned. Lynn Lannister pondered for a moment. Right while he was focused on finding the owner of the lab. The guy hadn't even noticed this contradiction. How good it was that he was able to share with someone else and his mind could clear. When you share your knowledge with someone who thinks soberly in this regard, things immediately fall into place. Well then, how can the students explain that transformation study done in the underground lab, almost as much as what happened to the troll? It very much connected the prince to what happened. In any case, this fact could not be ruled out. It couldn't be ruled out completely. It was too serious. The young men thought again about their theories. Could there be some details that the young lord had overlooked? 
Dia and Lynn Lannister began to carefully contemplate the words they had spoken and the clues they had found. Deeply immersed in their thoughts, they stared silently at the floor. A rather long time passed like this. The boy lowered his head and exhaled heavily. Lynn thought that this was all his fault. He hadn't been able to find more information last time. Well, after he had infiltrated the underground laboratory, the prince would definitely be more vigilant about this dungeon, and now the young lord is afraid that it will be difficult to discover any information. It's also a pity that he was discovered by that old ambassador. It was as if the young lord was electrocuted by the memory of the aftermath. That level seven mage was a very important figure in this matter, and this man would help them get closer to the one everyone was so eager to catch. The old man must know many of his secrets and the young master was determined to catch him. The girl sat back down in the chair opposite her companion. In her opinion, they wouldn't be able to fight a level seven mage. It was beyond their reach. Dia watched carefully as the strength of the guy across from her increased and he had an idea for victory. But Lynn Lannister was not lacking in determination. The guy asked the girl not to worry. They would surely have another chance. Until then, as long as the Mason Chamber of Commerce still supplied the lab with medicinal materials, even if they moved from their original location, the young students would find them anyway since they would need the materials and could only get them from Lannister's allies. The girl took the young man's confidence he was right. They still had a good chance of success. They had to find out, and if the culprit was indeed the prince and his accomplices, they had to report it to the king as soon as possible to prevent further incidents. In the meantime, the ambassador was in Prince Lister's office, standing in a huge office, in front of an important man who was much younger than him. The old man was trying to find out from him what was going on at the young lord's home. The seventh-level mage knew very well that the troublemaker in the underground laboratory was this guy. Prince Lister was disappointed that he had completely little information, although it was obvious what the guy was hiding a lot of information from them. The man bowed his head and exhaled tiredly. He hadn't realized that the boy was not only a brilliant mage, but also an excellent strategist. Right now, he was good at hiding his true actions and intentions. Therefore, the prince almost didn't have the information he so desperately needed. A level seven mage had asked his highness if it was related to the Holy Throne, but Lister was certain that it was impossible. It was quite gloomy in the large office, and only the light from the desk lamps allowed him to see the faces of his interlocutors. After all, the person next to him was this girl, Dia, and as long as she was near the young lord, the union of Prince Lister and Lynn Lannister was impossible. But the prince was still a bit uncomfortable with this strange situation. Something was bothering him about the young lord's behavior. He couldn't understand why even being around Dia in such a close relationship, this guy didn't know anything about the various kingdom alliances the people around him were in. The older man said that Lynn Lannister is a super genius who appears out of nowhere and probably hides some secrets. There are some things you can't do, but the Dark Order can. Here the ambassador reveals information that many were unaware of, a secret order of the kingdom that hid behind dark magic and people with the same souls. Prince Lister grinned. Had the cunning old fox remembered his old friends? It appeared that His Majesty was perfectly familiar with the Dark Order in question. He liked that mention from his servant's mouth. Now they were sure to get the information they needed. Their friends were the Dark Holy Throne, Lords of the Dark Empire. They were researching dragon blood potions. It was their great gift for their cooperation. A huge number of mages who had gone to the dark side hid behind long black robes, they all worshipped the one and only lord of black magic. It was the prince who had helped them gain immense power in the empire. And no one is better suited to do the secret work than them, especially when the deed had to be done cleanly. Lister was sure that all these people wouldn't mind him and wouldn't refuse to help with this little problem. His green eyes were once again embraced with cunning and a desire for power and control over everyone. 
He rested his chin on his folded fingers and contemplated how to pull off what he had in mind. Lynn Lannister sneezed loudly. He seemed to be perfectly healthy, but this contagion was completely unwilling to let him go. Could it be because of the potions he was inventing? The girl had a bandage over her face and was putting on gloves. Dia was preparing for their next experiment together. She noticed that Lynn was constantly sneezing. The guy was fine, it was just that lately he felt like someone was secretly watching him. It was this surveillance that was causing the sneezing that Lynn was experiencing. It was stressing and distracting the young man. After calming down, he similarly began preparing for the study. The rest of the time, the boy and the girl spent in the laboratory so that the prince would not suspect anything else they had to choose a somewhat disgusting potion as a new topic of study. The guy was studying a green slug that was in its own liquid. It gave off a horrible odor that made the students put on their bandages. They really needed to do some research for the academy quickly. Otherwise, there would be no funding. The two young men were both studying the poisonous slug. The girl disgustedly recoiled from it while the boyfriend cautiously examined it. Each had notepads in their hands for notes. Of course, the young lord was also trying to find time to prepare a dragon potion. The one from the dragon scroll obtained in the dungeon of his Otua. Only he didn't understand exactly what the mixture provided. The notes were difficult for him. Progress wasn't going as smoothly as expected. The clothes on the young man were constantly burning. Lynn Lannister didn't have time to read the preparation instructions and brew it at the same time. Something was coming out wrong. One of the ingredients in the ancient dragon potion recipe was a mixed potion. But in the potion book, the notes of the miscible potion were very contradictory, and there were no details about it in the scroll. Therefore, the guy needed to study the composition on his own, and for now, Lynn Lannister could only continue his attempts to find the very proportion. The dragon watched carefully at what the man was offering him. With each time, he hoped that the one brought him that most cherished potion to get the power of the black dragon from the dungeon. The dragon drank the vial of potion with joy and hope each time. Each time he thought, this is it. And the young lord watched carefully to see what would happen next. He too hoped that his abilities had reached a new level and that he had succeeded in surpassing himself. But what was happening was completely different from what the young lord had expected. After each vial he drank, strange things happened to the dragon. Fury bloated after the last potion, and his head was spinning. His eyes bulged outward from the changes going on inside him. He was feeling nauseous. Had the man been messing with him on purpose? Each time, Fury asked him the same question. What was happening to him? The new potion didn't work for Fury either, and other than the horrible effects of headache and nausea, nothing else happened to him. So the dragon belched it back up and scorched his man with fire. Fury thought he was deliberately using him as a guinea pig. Lynn Lannister steadfastly endured all the heat and anger of his pet. He endeavored for his good and accepted his every defeat. And with each arrival of the young master at the ranch, the dragon's enthusiasm grew less and less. And at this appearance of his man, he hid behind the volcano, and looked sadly at what this time Lin had brought. He no longer wished to become like the black dragon from the dungeon. He wanted all his torment to stop and be left alone. But the man kept coming to him. Lin Lannister had persuaded him every time, and now he was trying to placate his pet. He tried to persuade him to drink another vial. The dragon didn't want to believe him. Even though the rancher had studied many books again before coming here with this potion, Fury was scared. Tears were in his eyes. He wanted to trust his man, but he didn't want to be tormented anymore. Lynn Lannister stood in front of his dragon. He stretched out his palms on which lay a vial. In it was a golden-colored liquid. The young lord's appearance was confident. He knew for sure that this time it was the very potion they had been looking for so long. He asked his pet to drink it. 